The philosopher Thomas Nagel once wrote an essay called What is it like to be a bat? One of the arguments in that essay was that even if a human could try and imagine what it was like to be a bat by taking the bat's point of view, it is impossible to know what it is like for a bat to be a bat. If you wrote an essay called What is it like to be a woman? men would be in a similar situation our powers of empathy and imagination can only get us so far we are mostly blind to the many ways in which women have to adapt to live in a world designed by men for men and so much have we normalized this that even many women take it for granted what is it like to be a woman in a world where hotel rooms don't have latches on the inside where offices don't have enough women's toilets where workplaces don't account for periods of pregnancies where the men are all raja betas and the women Women are grocery list trapped in human bodies, as my guest today wrote. Where you aren't taken seriously, you are interrupted all the time, and Fufaji is a bigot. All these extra layers of life that men just don't have to deal with, they need to be documented. Someone needs to write about what it's like to be womaning in India. Well, somebody is. Welcome to the Seen and the Unseen. Our weekly podcast on economics, politics, and behavioral science. Please welcome your host, Amit Varma. Welcome to the Seen and the Unseen. My guest today is Maima Vashisht, a former civil servant who runs a phenomenal newsletter, Womaning in India. Maima did my writing course a couple of years ago. And at the end of the course, asked for my advice on writing. We did a Zoom call and she told me about an idea she had for a book to write about those aspects of women's lives that men had no clue about. I suggested that the best way to get the ball rolling was not to write a book straight away, for that can be a daunting project, but to start a weekly newsletter. So she did and Womaning in India has now gathered a cult following. She's built a tremendous body of work documenting what women go through in the workplace, in public spaces, in their homes and in their own heads. She's spoken to countless women across this country, gathered their stories and illuminated a world that many men, even well-meaning men, would have been clueless about. So I figured I'd get her on the show to talk about her life, her work and Womaning in India. But first, let's go to a unique kind of commercial break. Capital Gyan by Deepak Shinoy. This is like a show within a commercial from the kind sponsors of this episode, Capital Mind. When my father passed away, he left my mother shares of over 30 different companies. When I look at them now, 23 of these companies are dead or defunct. Only 7 have given us a positive return. But these 7 have returned 40 times in the entire investment. That's a yearly return of 20% plus over 20 years from just one-fourth of the stocks. Peter Lynch has said that booking profits on your winners to add to your losers is like pulling out the flowers and watering the weeds. Letting your winners run and not regretting your losers is one of the hallmarks of great investment returns. I'm Deepak Shinoy, CEO at Capital Mind. In our portfolio management service, we use both quantitative and qualitative measures to manage our portfolios, which gives us the confidence to hold on to our winners. Learn more about us at cm.social slash seen unseen. Worry less about your money and make it work for you. cm.social slash seen unseen. Hey, I want to repeat that URL, cm.social slash seen unseen. Deepak has been a guest on my podcast and he handles my money as well. My actions are the best endorsement. Mahima, welcome to The Scene and the Unseen. Thanks, Amit. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you on and so glad you agreed. I spent last night and today morning kind of going through your newsletter also. And while in the past I've expressed my admiration ki bhai, great discipline, you know, I admire it so much that week after week you can just have the discipline to sit down and put it out, especially because it's not just you sitting and writing, you're talking to people and you're constructing those. And I really love that. But while I was aware that it's very consistent, hai, it was only when I reread all the posts and I was taking notes that I thought more, more, that this is really a formidable body of work. So you should be so proud. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's, uh, let's sort of start by uh, 
talking about you by now you know the template of the show so <laughs> let's let's start by talking about sort of your uh, personal journey yeah. which is uh, you know a really unconventional uh, sort of route that you've taken to to where you are where you've done your engineering you've done your mba you joined the civil services and now while uh, you are of course um, uh, you know working with the swachh bharat program and all of that but at the same time this newsletter is outstanding it's just great so you're part of the creator economy in a sense our podcast we kar rahe ho but uh, take me back to where were you born where did you grow up how was that like yeah i've listened to a lot of episodes of your podcast and always wondered that how how are people's lives so interesting like people are reading books in in uh, be- beside rivers flowing behind their homes and all and i'm I always felt like my upbringing was very very average by those standards but but we'll go there anyway so i am basically from a partition uh, refugee family uh, my paternal grandparents were children or young adults when partition happened and uh, so both of my dada and dadi have we they've told us stories about how they went through it uh, my grandfather was in xavier's mumbai when uh, partition happened and he was studying engineering there and uh, so his family was stuck beside beyond the border and he was here in india and so there was all of that anxiety in those days with no communication channel whether your loved ones are even okay whether they're even alive uh, my grandmother had this very very matlab that how in hindi you say dil dehla dene wali story of how uh, they were she was one of 14 siblings they were all children they had a house in lahore and uh, there was a warehouse like go down under their house and wahan pe they used to store uh, bade bade bartanon mein wheat and rice and things like that so how they as children hid inside those huge uh, containers because the houses were being homes were being raided and uh, there were riots in the streets of course and hindus were not safe there muslims were not safe here and uh, so they hid in those gigantic containers for we- a week 10 days and they lived on eating those raw grains of wheat and rice that's how they survived it and then you know suddenly news would come ki ek train ja rahi hai chalo and aadhi raat ko some children are going in one batch some are going in the other and again you don't know whether you're being separated from your siblings you don't know whether you'll even see them again so so very very shocking disturbing stories from there then they came to delhi and they settled here in a in a refugee colony uh, i believe my grandmother was elsewhere and later once she got married she moved in obviously with my grandfather and uh, my great grandmother uh, was the matriarch of the family at the time i remember <laughs> my my dad still tells me the story of how the, at that time you know these refugee colonies were being offered and unko koi i don't know defense colony ya kahin kalka ji kahin pe they, she was getting a house and at that time delhi mein it was like she she literally refused that house saying wahan jungle mein jaake kaun rahega <laughs> and today my dad is like if she had said yes that time our lives would have been very different right now but anyway uh, uh, so then she so then she came uh, moved here with my grandfather who had one sibling my grandmother who had 13 siblings and then um, they got married they had four sons one of third one was my father my mother side again four siblings third one was my mother my mom side uh, is another interesting uh, story of great struggle i think So my mom's mother was again one of just two siblings because my mom's grandfather passed away very soon after his marriage to my great grandmother on that side my great nani on that side and uh, um, I think it was a spanish flu or something at that time which took a lot of lives and many uh, young adults passed away suddenly and so many families were left with no parents or single parents and uh, so my great nani was suddenly widowed at a very young age she had two children and uh, she uh, self educated herself and became actually a school principal which at that time did not take like a huge amount of education but even with basic education you could become uh, that and so she was a self made woman in th- that era uh, a woman who was in a job earning and raising a family on her own which was very very admirable and then my nani had actually had nine children which i found out much later in life that my mom had had five siblings who never made it beyond the first year of their life 
so i mean when i think about it i can't imagine how a parent a mother says especially goes on after losing five children and then going on to have more children but that was i guess the way of those times you know it's just it was just a fact of life that some children will not make it small matlab very common diseases like diarrhea and all which today utterly preventable up ors peel up theek ho jaoge at that time children would actually lose lives and parents would lose children to that anyway so then after somehow luckily after number 6 she had four children who made it and then my mom was the third of those four so i much later in life found out that my mom was actually number but nine, not eight. nine seven uh, eight yes <laughs> we'll have to edit this so much later in life i found out my mom was not the third child she was actually the eighth child in that family so yeah then uh, my parents uh, my dad i think had his initial years of his education in kanpur and then they moved to moved back to delhi uh, because my dada ji was an engineer and he used to work in these uh, repair of uh, theater equipment so there was a lot of traveling because at that time in india there were only so many the single screen hota tha obviously and there were very few of those so he used to travel a lot be on tour a lot and uh, so uh, my dadi used to stay in delhi at home with her with the four boys i think both my parents had very humble beginnings that way government school mein padhe hain dono and uh, hindi medium uh, they tell me stories of you know sitting on the floor in a broken tent or wahan pe padhai chal rahi hai and uh, teachers are obviously not interested and very few who would actually have a stake in teaching at all mostly just going through the motions but then they were both of them had this very strong work ethic and this strong desire to um love for education so they kind of again were self taught in a way my father ended up doing an ma in english having come from a hindi medium school almost overnight taught himself english by reading the dictionary like that's how he would tell me that he would read a sentence and then come across four new words in that sentence and then go back to the dictionary and look up their meaning and then read the next sentence so that's a intense amount of work to put into learning a language but that's how that's how he did it and he went on to do an ma in english my mom also did a masters uh, later in life and was a ba in the when they got married they got married in 1985 and that's the year later that year i was born and then two years later i had a younger brother i don't remember much from my early years but uh, i mostly grew up in delhi and uh, my parents were like i said you know great love for education and despite humble beginnings and both of them were bankers for most of my life they were in public sector banks and uh, again transferable jobs so we used to change schools a lot even within delhi so in my life in the 12 years of schooling i've changed 10 schools so that's a significant amount of nomadic lifestyle to have but uh, that was i think it was good in hindsight and it was a little tough at that time maybe but it was it was good i mean it made me very comfortable and adjustable i would make friends easily i would settle in new circumstances easily and they used to i mean we went to the best of the schools my brother and i uh, my parents again like i said love for education so that was very important to them it was a very important ethic that they built into us also that you know uh, one is a love for education and the other thing that they probably didn't teach us consciously but we picked up was value for money because somehow i don't they never said it to us but at least for me i imbibed it quite early in life that they are not it's not easy for them to send me to the school they are making sacrifices and uh, the least i can do is study well so i used to be like class topper all through school and everything the very very boring typical <laughs> delhi type story and and we used to have all these holidays ke time pe these classes so also became a bit of jack of all trades thoda sa dancing seekh liya thoda bharat natyam thoda kathak thoda singing thoda painting thoda thoda sa aisa karke like we would be shunted out of the house during summer ke jao niklo yahan se wo seekh kya wo class join kar lo so kind of picked up a lot of things alongside education alongside academics um, early in life and then um, i think the big I mean must have been skipping a lot of things here but I think the next big milestone happened in our lives when I was in 10th standard I mean Delhi mein it starts ke 9th ke baad niche khelne jana band dost wost kam karo 
अब पढ़ाई पे ध्यान दो बोर्ड एग्जाम का साल आ रहा है सो नाइन्थ में टेंथ की तैयारी करो टेंथ में बोर्ड लिखो फिर इलेवंथ में ट्वेल्थ की तैयारी करो फिर ट्वेल्थ में बोर्ड लिखो सो दैट इज बेसिकली एंड द स्टोरी यूर्स ओल्ड वॉज कि बेटा ये दो साल पढ़ लिया ना तो फिर लाइफ सेट है ऑफकोर्स दैट स्टोरी कैरीज ये एजुकेशन ये एंट्रेंस कर लिया तो लाइफ सेट है फिर वो एग्जाम लिख लिया तो लाइफ सेट है वो चलता रहता है बट उस समय ऑब्वियसली यू आर चिल्ड्रेन एंड यू फॉल फॉर दिस फॉल फॉर दिस पिच सो वी सो आई वॉज लाइक वेरी हार्ड कोर टेंथ इज लाइक भैया यही है लाइफ का डू और डाई ईयर एंड इन दैट ईयर माई मॉम्स बैंक में सम लीडरशिप चेंज हैपन एंड अंटिल दैट टाइम दे हैड अ पॉलिसी ऑफ नॉट ट्रांसफरिंग वेमेन बिकॉज दे वर लाइक ए वर्किंग मदर्स हैबिट टफ इन अफ एज इट इज लेट्स नॉट मेक लाइफ वर्स फॉर दैम ऑलरेडी द हजबेंड आर मूविंग अराउंड एंड दे हैव टू एडजस्ट विद दैट अ लॉट ऑफ ईयर्स आई ग्रू अप विद माई डैड लिविंग इन सम विलेज इन यू पी एंड देन कम्यूटिंग एवरी वीक टू कम सी एस ऐसा होता था बहुत सो माई मॉम वॉज लाइक द वन फिक्सचर के ठीक है शी इज गॉन्ट टू बी इन डेली शी इज गॉन्ट टू बी इन दिस हाउस सो वी डोंट हैव टू चेंज स्कूल एज ऑफन बट देन दैट ईयर वेन आई वॉज इन टेंथ देर वॉज अ लीडरशिप चेंज इन हर ऑर्गनाइजेशन एंड द मैन हु केम इन वॉज वॉज फॉर सम रीजन हैड अ बोन टू पिक विद वेमेन एंड ही सेट के ट्रांसफर ऑल द वेमेन बहुत हो गया बैठी हुई हैं कब एक ही जगह पे सो so, उसने उठा के सबको एंड एंड नॉट इवन लाइक ट्रांसफर देम लोकली टू फ्रॉम वन डेली ऑफिस टू अनदर और विद इन डिपार्टमेंट्स नो ट्रांसफर देम टू अदर सिटीज वेयर देव नेवर बीन एंड डोंट वॉन्ट टू गो सो माई मॉम वॉज ट्रांसफर टू अहमदाबाद सो सडनली लाइक आई सेड हमारा पूरा प्लान था ना कि नाइन टू ट्वेल्थ घर में केबल टी वी कट जाएगा <laughs> बैठ के पढ़ाई करनी है एंड देन द प्लान गॉट डिसरप्टेड इन द मोस्ट क्रूशल ईयर सो माई डैड टू हिज क्रेडिट एट द टाइम सेट दैट you know uh, this is a crucial year for mahima's education and we need to keep the family together because earlier we went by ourselves and it was a huge struggle for my mother to manage the new house new culture bachcho ke new school her, her own new office her own office ka dynamics and politics it was just too much for her to do by herself and she would every day tell him ke when are you coming here and so to his huge credit he took vrs in a year that he was like quite early in his career at that time so people would tell him ke oh you are making the biggest mistake of your life and he was like nahi my family needs me and he prioritized that again a very 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 modern take for a decision for a man to take at that time that i will quit my job and my wife will continue to earn because she doesn't have the option of vrs right now so she would have to resign and just sit at home with no pay i will at least get a pension so theek hai and i'll do something of my own so he did that which was massive a huge sacrifice for which i'm indebted forever because again something that could have changed the direction of our lives completely so he came and joined us in ahmedabad and uh, i suffered a lot in terms of academics and as to the extent that a 10th standard child can suffer basically huge uh, culture shift children in my school suddenly speaking gujarati and telling me i have a punjabi accent which until that time no one had pointed out because well i guess all of us had punjabi <laughs> accent so no one points it out so, but then when i go there they say oh the way you say this thing uh, this is very punjabi this is very delhi type so i would be very conscious about the way i speak i was the new kid in a class in a school where 10th standard was the last class तो वो बच्चे केजी से साथ में पढ़ते हुए आ रहे थे एंड आई एम सडनली मिडिल ऑफ द ईयर एयर ड्रॉप्ड इनटू दिस क्लासरूम वेयर नो बडी नोज मी एंड नो बडी केयर्स एट दिस स्टेज ऑफ देयर लाइफ फॉर टू मेक न्यू फ्रेंड्स सो वेरी डिफिकल्ट एडजस्टमेंट एंड आई वाज दिस कॉकी क्लास टॉपर टीचर्स पेट इन 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 डेली स्कूल तो डेली में इन माई स्कूल सो फार सो आई वॉज लाइक कम्प्लीटली आउट ऑफ माई कम्फर्ट जोन माई मार्क्स प्लमटेड एंड इन लाइक आई सेड अगेन द मोस्ट लाइफ डिफाइनिंग क्रूशल डू और डाई ईयर ऑफ माई लाइफ एंड माई ब्रदर वॉज हैविंग हिज ओन सेट ऑफ इशूज यूर गेटिंग बुलीड बाय द बॉयज इन हिज क्लास एंड सो वी हैड अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट एडजस्टमेंट दैट ईयर दैट ईयर ऑल्सो देर वॉज फ्लड्स इन गुजरात इन इन अहमदाबाद एंड आर स्कूल वॉज इन अ लो लैंग एरिया सो आई रिमेंबर स्कूल का पूरा ग्राउंड फ्लोर तक पानी भर गया वी वर ऑल मूव टू द फर्स्ट फ्लोर एंड देन फर्स्ट फ्लोर में पानी भरने लग गया सो देन सम आर्मी पीपल के मैंड हमको उठा वहाँ से रस्सी बांध के निकाल के लेके गए एंड वी वर इवैक्यूएटेड सो दैट वॉज माई फर्स्ट ब्रश विद with natural disasters so anyway lot of stuff happened and and by uh, by god's grace or uh, hard work parents blessings everything i actually ended up topping west india that year 
फ्रॉम गोइंग फ्रॉम लाइक सिक्सटी एट परसेंट मार्क्स हो गए थे मेरे आई वॉज दिस ऑलवेज नाइन्टी फाइव से ऊपर रहना चाहिए नाइन्टी भी नहीं नाइन्टी फाइव से ऊपर आना चाहिए एक मैथ्स में ट्वेंटी फाइव में से ट्वेंटी फोर एंड हाफ क्यों आए हाफ मार्क कहाँ कटा दैट वॉज द बिग बिग पेन पॉइंट्स ऑफ माई लाइफ फॉर दोज अंटिल दैट ईयर एंड दैट ईयर आई केम डाउन टू लाइक अकेडमिक्स में कहीं नहीं ऑल एवरी थिंग चेंज सडनली एंड विच वॉज अगेन इन हाइंड सेट आई थिंक इट वॉज अ चेंज दैट आई नीडेड इट वॉज अ रियालिटी चेक दैट आई नीडेड लाइक आई सेट आई वॉज गेटिंग रादर कम्फर्टेबल एंड कॉकी इन डेली तो टेंथ हुआ फिर देन इलेवेंथ में चेंज इन टू स्टेट बोर्ड गुजरात बोर्ड वेंट देर फॉर टेन डेज एंड डिसाइडेड कि ये तो भाई दीज टेक्सट बुक्स आर लाइक हंड्रेड पेजेस एंड आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू दिस इज नॉट ओके आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू फिट इन हियर सो देन आई गॉट टू केम बैक इन टू सेंट्रल बोर्ड केंद्रीय विद्यालय देन ट्वेल्थ में एक और स्कूल बदला डिड बिट ऑफ आई आई टी प्रेप ओवर देयर विच अगेन अहमदाबाद हैड नो कोचिंग क्लासेज और एनी थिंग एट दैट टाइम सो दे वॉज दिस वन क्लास एंड आई रिमेंबर आई वेंट आई जॉइन देयर वो नई नई खुली थी एंड आई वेंट देयर फर्स्ट डे आई सैट नेक्स्ट टू अ बॉय एंड आई वॉज लाइक यू नो लुकिंग फॉर वैलिडेशन हैव आई कम टू द राइट प्लेस इवन सो आई आज दिस गाई दैट यू नो वॉट यू नो अबाउट दिस क्लास वाई डिड यू चूज इट दिस एंड देन ही वॉज लाइक दिस इज द बेस्ट क्लास इन अहमदाबाद I said, why? He said, don't you know, Mahima Vashist comes to this class. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Because I had topped West India, na. Agbar wager mein naam chup gaya tha mera. and then somehow word travel that i joined this class amazing and then i realized that people are here because i am here i don't know why i am here so we are all in one boat sink or swim <laughs> and basically we sank that boat sank because i didn't clear iit like i cleared and i got some like 6000 rank or something which at that time would have given you mining engineering in one uh bahut dur ka koi college and so that was not it and then i i, I also gave ai triple e i also gave medical because i had bio also lot of har jagah hath pair mara and finally i got into ai triple e ek exam usi saal start hua tha the all india engineering entrance examination and until then that year you had to apply separately to every college you wanted to go into so if you there are 50 colleges big big league colleges you have to fill 50 application forms and write 50 exams so thankfully from my year only it had started and i wrote that exam and i got into an nit national institute of technology kurukshetra usse upar rank mein the us samay bhi and nit surat was local for us gujarat mein and uh, nit alabad i remember was one of the highest ranked and i i could have with my marks and rank i could have gotten into it and i remember my parents we went to that counseling center jahan pe ye diya jata hai aapko ye branch aur ye nit mil raha hai and wahan ja ke we had applied and the counseling center guy told us ke dekho एन आई टी अलाहाबाद इज गुड बट लड़कियों के लिए ठीक नहीं है वहाँ पे पत्थर चलते हैं वहाँ पे बच्चे एग्जाम हॉल में छुरी लेके आ जाते हैं तो दैट वॉज इनफ फॉर माई पेरेंट्स ओके गुड करियर बट थैंक्स नो थैंक्स सो दे वुड मी इन द नेक्स्ट बेस्ट एट द टाइम विच वॉज एन आई टी कुरुक्षेत्र सो देन आई वेंट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम लेफ्ट माई होम एंड लॉट ऑफ रोना धोना इन द ट्रेन आई रिमेंबर टू कुरुक्षेत्र एंड देन माई लाइट डैड टुक मी देर ड्रॉप मी ऑफ गॉट मी अ हॉस्टल रूम एंड एवरी थिंग एंड देन फोर ईयर्स ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग हैपन देयर वेर इट वॉज इट वॉज नाइस इट वॉज वेरी नाइस एट दैट टाइम एट लीस्ट बिकॉज एकेडमिकली आई वॉज गुड आई वॉज सॉर्टेड बिकॉज आई हैड हैड ऑल दिस रिगरस बैकग्राउंड ऑफ स्टडिंग एंड आई वॉज गुड एट क्रैकिंग एग्जाम्स सो आ जाते थे अच्छे नंबर आई यूज टू बी अगेन टॉप और वॉपर इन ऑल सेमेस्टर्स बट मोर देन दैट वॉट आई रियली लाइक अबाउट दैट एक्सपीरियंस वॉज द काइंड ऑफ ग्रूमिंग दैट इट वॉज फॉर माई पर्सनैलिटी आई जॉइंड अ लॉट ऑफ आई वॉज द चीफ एडिटर ऑफ द कॉलेज मैगजीन टेक्निकल सोसाइटी में एग्जीक्यूटिव मेम्बर मतलब ऐसा एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर बहुत कुछ आई यूज टू प्ले स्पोर्ट्स आई यूज टू बी कल्चरल इवेंट्स कुछ ना कुछ सो आई वॉज ऑलवेज बिजी आई वॉज ऑलवेज अप टू समथिंग एंड इट वॉज अगेन एट दैट टाइम वेरी अनकेरेक्टरिस्टिक फॉर अ गर्ल टू बी दिस एक्टिव इन दीज थिंग्स बिकॉज इट वॉज यू नो क्विजिंग इज बॉयज़ का एरिया लिटरेचर एंड डिबेट क्लब इज बॉयज़ का एरिया मैगजीन लिखना इज बॉयज़ का एरिया एंड सो आई वॉज दिस आउटसाइडर हु वॉज दे वुड सेलेक्ट गर्ल्स इन दीज क्लब्स बट मोस्टली इट वॉज सीन एज आई कैंडी कि चलो थोड़ी लड़कियाँ भी लेके आते हैं क्लब में एंड देन बाय द टाइम ऑफ बाय द सीनियर ईयर्स मोस्ट गर्ल्स वुड पीटर आउट इन पार्टिसिपेशन बिकॉज देर वॉज नो रियली नो सपोर्ट फ्रॉम द ऑर्गनाइजेशन फ्रॉम द इंस्टीट्यूशन और फ्रॉम द कल्चर विद इन द स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो इज नॉट वेरी फ्रेंडली फॉर गर्ल्स सो आई रिमेंबर देर वॉज वी यूज टू हैव गर्ल्स हॉस्टल एंड उसमें गर्ल्स टाइमिंग वॉज लाइक फोर थर्टी को लेक्चर्स खत्म हुए फाइव थर्टी तक आपको अंदर होना है सो बेसिकली यू एट वन आवर टू गो ईट अ समोसा इन द कैंटीन एंड 
एंजॉय कैंपस लाइफ एज इट वर एंड फॉर बॉयज ऑब्वियसली पूरी रात कैंपस में यहाँ पे दारू लेके पी के पड़े हुए हैं एंड दे आर लाइक लिविंग इट अप देर इज नॉट दैट दारू इज द मेजर ऑफ लिविंग इट अप बट द एक्सेस टू दैट पब्लिक स्पेस आफ्टर आवर्स टू गो सिट आउट साइड कॉलेज लाइब्रेरी एंड यू नो हैव ऑल दोज मेमरीज बिल्ड दोज मेमरीज विच पीपल लुक बैक ऑन वी गॉट नो सच चांसेस बिकॉज वी वर शीप कैटल हर्डेड इन टू द हॉस्टल एट सन डाउन सो समर्स के टाइम थोड़ा ज्यादा टाइम मिलता था विंटर्स में तो बस क्लास खत्म हुई एक घंटे के अंदर सनसेट हो जाएगा आप चलो भागो दैट आई फेल्ट इट वॉज वेरी वेरी रिस्ट्रिक्टिव एंड इन हाइंड साइट इट वॉज क्वाइट मिसॉजनिस्टिक बिकॉज द द वार्डन्स एंड देर एटीट्यूड वॉज कि ये जगह सेफ नहीं है लड़कियों के लिए हरियाणा है यहाँ पे लड़कियाँ छेड़ देते हैं यहाँ पे लड़कियों को उठा के ले जाते हैं हम आपको नहीं जाने दे सकते बाहर आपकी बेटियाँ हमारी जिम्मेदारी हैं एंड आप मैं देव टेल आर पेरेंट्स कि आप सोचो मैं इनके पेरेंट की तरह सोच रही हूँ अगर मेरी बेटी होती तो मैं ये करती एज लाइक वेल वी आर लिविंग ऑन कैंपस दिस इज योर एरिया इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू प्रोटेक्ट अ स्टूडेंट इन दिस एरिया दैट्स ऑन यू दैट्स नॉट ऑन द स्टूडेंट यू कैन नॉट पीनलाइज द स्टूडेंट बिकॉज शी हैपन्स टू बी अ गर्ल बट एनी वे एंड एट दैट टाइम वी डेंट हैव सच वॉइस एंड खुद ही अपने अंदर इतनी इंटरनलाइज मिसॉज नहीं थी कि हम एक्सेप्ट भी कर लेते कि हाँ भाई यही सही है ऐसी लाइफ है सो आई रिमेंबर फॉर कॉलेज मैगजीन प्रिंटिंग वगैरह कराने के लिए आई यूज टू गो आधी रात को प्रिंटर की शॉप पे एंड टेल यहाँ पे कि करनाल में मेरी मासी है वो बीमार है मुझे उनको देखने जाना है ऐसे करके आई यूज टू राइट दीज एप्लीकेशन गेट इट साइन बाई अ फ्रेंड एज माई आंट और लोकल गार्जन और समथिंग एंड देन गिव इट टू द वार्डन एंड द वार्डन ऑल्सो ऑफन वुड सी थ्रू इट शीट बिल्कुल हाँ मुझे पता है ये कौन सी मासी है करनाल में जो बार बार बीमार आप मतलब लिटरली आई वॉज अ स्टूडेंट गोइंग आउट टू पार्टिसिपेट इन एन एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर कॉलेज कैंपस एक्टिविटी विच वॉज बेनिफिटिंग मी बेनिफिटिंग द कैंपस इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द काइंड ऑफ ऑल राउंड डेवलपमेंट दैट यू शुड बी ऑफरिंग योर स्टूडेंट्स यू शुड बी एनकरेजिंग इन योर स्टूडेंट्स बट इंस्टेड यू आर पीनलाइजिंग दैम यू आर स्लट शेमिंग दैम यू आर टेलिंग दैम कि आधी रात को लड़कियाँ अंधेरे में जाके क्या करती हैं लड़कों के साथ हमें पता है दिस इज लिटरली अ लाइन दैट द चीफ वार्डन हैज टोल्ड मी दीज वॉज द दैट वॉज द काइंड ऑफ एटमोसफियर वेयर यू हैड टू रियली दिस इज ऑल्सो द रीजन वाई मोस्ट गर्ल्स वुड पीटर आउट ऑफ क्लब्स एंड सोसाइटीज एंड ऑल राइट फॉर मी इट वॉज जस्ट अ पैशन एंड आई वॉज आई हैव फाउंड अ लॉट ऑफ मीनिंग एंड जॉय इन दैट सो आई यूज टू I used to find my ways around it. So that all that happened four years of college went out that way. In hindsight, again, much more misogyny that I see there now than I saw at that time, which was probably good for my mental health that I didn't see it that time. Otherwise, क्रांति कारी बन जाते हैं चार साल तक मैं मोर चाय निकालती रहती. The atmosphere in Guru Chetra was also very. I mean, it had all sorts of other issues also. There's a lot of toxic masculinity also. Uh, literally, the, there were boys in our college who would go out in the evening on. बाइक्स एंड मतलब लड़की जा रही है पीछे से उसके बाल खींच के चले गए पेन छीन लिया नॉक ऑफ हर बुक्स और समथिंग यू नो जस्ट लाइक इट वॉज हार्मलेस वर्ड्स लाइक इव टीजिंग आर यूज फॉर इट इट इज सेक्शुअल हेरसमेंट एंड दैट वॉज वेरी कॉमन ऑन कैंपस मोर फ्रॉम द बॉयज वुड कम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड दैन द बॉयज फ्रॉम विद इन कैंपस बट एवरी वन हैड एक्सेस एंड एवरी वन कुरुक्षेत्र यूनिवर्सिटी इज लाइक अ थाउजेंड एकर कैंपस इन विच थ्री हंड्रेड एकर्स इज एन आई टी कुरुक्षेत्र विद इन द कैंपस सो कुरुक्षेत्र यूनिवर्सिटी के यू बोलते थे के यू के लड़के अंदर आते थे के यू के लड़कों को हमारे नाम डिटेल्स फोन नंबर पता होते थे लाइक मैन वी नेवर मेट डोंट नो दैट दे एग्जिस्ट दे नो एवरी थिंग अबाउट आर लाइफ सो दैट वॉज द एक्सटेंट ऑफ स्क्रूटनी दैट गर्ल्स वुड बी अंडर इन दैट सराउंडिंग एंड देर वॉज लाइक आई सेट लॉट ऑफ टॉक्सिक मैस्किलिटी इन आर थर्ड ईयर आई थिंक आई वॉज इन थर्ड ईयर वैन देर वॉज अ इंसिडेंट ऑफ वायलेंस बिटवीन बॉयज सो देर वर गैंग्स ऑफ बॉयज देयर एंड वन गैंग बीट अप द अदर गैंग और दे समी ब्रॉट अ हॉकी स्टिक एंड समबडी ब्रॉट अ फावड़ा स्पेड एंड सो दिस वॉज बिकेम फेमस इज द फावड़ा इंसिडेंट ऑन कैंपस के एक लड़के ने दूसरे लड़के का सर खोल दिया फावड़ा मार के एंड बेसिकली दैट बॉय आई थिंक ही लेटर सर्वाइव्ड बट ही हैड सम लाइफ लॉन्ग पैरालिस और सम इशू ऑब्वियसली लाइक लिटरली हिज हिज हैड वॉज क्रैक्ड ओपन बाय अन अदर स्टूडेंट सो दैट वॉज द एक्सटेंट ऑफ स्टफ दैट द बॉयज ऑन कैंपस वर डीलिंग सो क्रेडिट टू दैम ऑल्सो वेर इट बिलोंग्स एंड वी आई रिमेंबर देर वॉज अ 
लॉन्ग ब्रेक सडनली हमारी छुट्टियाँ कर दी गई वी वर सेंट होम एंड सम बॉयज वेंट अंडरग्राउंड एंड दे हैड पेरेंट्स हु वर हरियाणा का आई पी एस ऑफिसर उसका फादर है एंड देन सम हाउ ही वॉज बेल्ड आउट द गाई हु डिड दिस एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट वियर्ड पैरल यूनिवर्स ऑल्सो एग्जिस्टेड वाई लाई वॉज वर्किंग ऑन माई मैगजीन एंड क्लब्स एंड लिटल क्यूट लिटल थिंग्स दैट वॉज अ कॉन्टेक्सट एंड जनरल सीन इन विच कुरुक्षेत्र हैपन टूवर्ड्स दी एंड इन माई फाइनल ईयर आई गॉट प्लेसड इन टू कैंपस प्लेसमेंट्स आई गॉट टू जॉब्स बट देन आई ऑल्सो रोट कैट इन दैट ईयर एंड अगेन इट वॉज वेरी अनलाइकली दैट आई वुड हैव क्लियर इट बिकॉज नो नो कोचिंग क्लास अगेन इन कुरुक्षेत्र सो आई डिड दिस डिस्टेंस वाला मॉक टेस्ट थिंग टाइम का उस समय होता था एंड का लॉर्ड ऑफ माई बैचमेट्स यूज टू हैड जस्ट गिवन अप ऑन स्टडीज एंड एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर्स इन द फाइनल ईयर के रोज ट्रेन लेके वीकेंड पे डेली जाके करियर लॉन्चर की क्लास में पढ़ाई करके आएंगे एंड आई वॉज ईयर टिल द लास्ट डे रनिंग अराउंड ऑर्गेनाइजिंग फेस्ट एंड एवरी थिंग इन कॉलेज एज द फाइनल ईयर स्टूडेंट वॉज स्टिल नॉट गिवन दैट लेजिटिमेसी बिकॉज आई वॉज अ गर्ल वील कम बैक टू दैट लेटर बट देर वॉज in the final year yeah i used to go i i used to do this distance thing for mock tests and then i was uh, the surprise candidate who cleared cat and then to fir isliye didn't join join any job and i went on to i am bangalore after that right after campus i am bangalore was a whole other universe because like i said kurukshetra mein academically i was very very comfortable by the end of it i had a 9.9 cgp out of 10 which was log sunte hain to aankhe phat jati hain but for me i feel like ye to i was actually not that hard because like i said i had become quite good at cracking the indian education system to mujhe pata tha exam mein kaisa puchhenge how to do smart prep the night before the exam <laughs> and then and then the night after the exam i would press a reset button so today i cannot tell you what a microprocessor is with a gun to my head so that was i am an electronics engineer by the way so that's quite shameful to admit <laughs> i went into i am bangalore after that and wahan pe it was a whole other uh, academic comfort say coming there was a very different experience because wahan pe sare ek topper the wahan pe to ye tha ki bhai patthar pe ko topper ko lagega so it was everybody there was exceptional people uh, academically at least but probably not as diverse so we were a batch of 249 people out of which 227 were engineers so we all we different degrees of genius but <laughs> all thinking the same way sabka dimag train की तरह एक ही लाइन पे चलता है सो आई थिंक देवर लाइक लेस देन ट्वेंटी सो पीपल फ्रॉम आर्ट्स एंड ये सब बैकग्राउंड हुवर जस्ट ब्रॉट इन फॉर डाइवर्सिटी उस समय ये होता था कि इस चीज़ के मार्क्स ज़्यादा मिलते हैं कि अगर आपने कैट कर लिया और आपका आर्ट्स बैकग्राउंड है तो वो आपको ज़्यादा मार्क्स देंगे इंटरव्यूअर क्योंकि दे वॉन्ट दैट डाइवर्सिटी ऑन कैंपस बट ऑब्वियसली वी आर नॉट डूइंग अ गुड इनफ जॉब ऑफ डाइवर्सिटी बिकॉज यू आर स्टिल वेरी वेरी इंजीनियरिंग डोमिनेटेड सो आई वुड एक्चुअली लव इंटरेक्टिंग विद दो स्टूडेंट्स हु केम फ्रॉम डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड बिकॉज दे ब्रॉट अ वेरी डिफरेंट वे ऑफ थिंकिंग टू थिंग्स and i was a fresher which what is called a fresher which is that no work experience directly engineering ke baad mba so um, also got a lot of different life perspectives from my batchmates who had work experience because they would have this attitude of ye sab se kuch fark nahi padta humne dekha hai real life mein whereas the freshers like us were like are marks are exam are ye are so i kind of uh, evolved beyond that because i surrounded myself with friends who didn't care as much about academics and about all of that so i very like, did decently well possibly okay in i am i was no no gold medalist there <laughs> I went on in student exchange while there in my there were two years me there are three trimesters so oh, sorry six trimesters so fifth trimester is a student exchange program which I did in Germany in a college a B school in Germany so for me that was the highlight of my MBA that I got to travel abroad and live in another country in a rented apartment with other students and हम लोग we were like the only 16 Indians in a 100 kilometer radius around there so hum log milke chole chawal bana rahe hain raat ko to get a taste of our food and learn how to cook learn how to manage a household to the extent a student does and there was and did a lot of traveling i traveled like to like some 11 countries so again academics was the last thing on our mind ke ye to ho hi jayega and i remember hamara jab exam hua tha wahan pe to indian students were leaving so fast because like we have been conditioned to game the education system so well that 
तो पूर जर्मन अगर तीन महीना पहले प्रोजेक्ट दिया तो वो लोग तीन महीने का एक वो बनाएंगे पूरा टाइमलाइन चार्ट के पहले हफ्ते हम ये करेंगे दूसरा हफ्ता वी विल विजुअलाइज तीसरा हफ्ता वी विल फाइंड डेटा चौथा हफ्ता विल डू प्राइमरी रिसर्च फिर एंड इंडियन आर लाइक के डेडलाइन कब है एक रात पहले बैठेंगे नाइट आउट मारेंगे हो जाएगा साउंड जस्ट लाइक मी आई टेल यू आई नो यू डिड दैट राइट लाइक लास्ट नाइट बैठ के वुमनिंग पढ़ा है पूरा सीधी सी बात है क्या करे तो हमारा कल्चर वो है तो वी काइंड ऑफ लाइक All of us were the worst project partners. It became like a racist thing almost ki Indians ko project partner mat bano. They'll turn up one night before the thing. Whereas those, I mean, German, French, even Chinese sincere students are there slogging for three months. Or hum ek raat pehle prakat hoke bolenge. Chalo, batao meri kitni slides hain. Anyway, so we were I, I, the 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 joke was that on that day when we were all writing the exam, the Indian students were leaving so fast that the examiner stopped one of us and was like, "Show me your wallet." And you have definitely cheated. How are you leaving so fast? And he was like, "I haven't. Like literally, I know the answers. Jutta, mujhe pata hai surface surface. Main likh diya hai, aur mujhe pata hai main pass ho jaunga itte mein." And pretty much that was the attitude of all of us there, satisfying to the worst level in the worst way possible. So yeah, the education and all was uh, second. entry there but the cross cultural experience was very very was very interesting and i think that contributed much more to our growth let's double click on a few things and then we'll uh, rejoin this uh, yes. journey yes so a uh, whole bunch of things to double click on i want to go back to when you were talking at the start about how you learned about um, uh, you know the, the experiences of your grandparents during yeah. partition and all of that and mm-hmm. how they came over and what they went through and i've also sort of been thinking for a long time and 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 it's a thought that came up again when i read uh, your post is that women always have this sort of extra layer of obstacles to overcome yeah. to get to whatever they are doing i, I remember i done this um, episode i really uh, enjoyed with kavita rao who written about the lady doctors of the 19th century and some of the stories there are stunning like the one that Uh, move me a lot and i keep going back to is that of um, hemabati sen who was born in this village somewhere in um, uh, what was then bangladesh in the 1840s or 1850s right she was married off to a middle aged widower at the age of 9 during the day she would play with his children during the night she would forget what happened but basically she would wake up naked and bleeding right this went on for a couple of years until her husband died his parents died her parents died so she is 11 years old and her family basically kicks her out on the street and she's got no money so parents are dead both sets of parents husband is dead you'd imagine life is over she's 11 years old no money village in bangladesh right 1850s she makes her way from there to be one of india's first lady doctors and she achieves positions of eminence in terms of the first woman head of a guild or whatever i forgot in the details mm. she writes a diary about her life Uh, and after she dies that diary is lost in a trunk which isn't opened for 85 years and then in the 1990s or the early 2000s somebody opens it and it's published as a memoirs of hemavati sen you can you know read it online and not just this story because one story can be an outlier but reading about the lady doctors of the 1900s what struck me was that to be a lady doctor at all forget how good a doctor forget what you achieved just to be a lady doctor you had to be ridiculously outstanding you had to have immense character immense strength you had to have overcome a lot while to be a male doctor you simply had to be born into privilege basically right time right place good things happen you kind of get there you could be mediocre similarly in your stories you know what you've written in your newsletter is that time and again you know i was reading stories of ordinary women who on the face of it seem ordinary mm-hmm. that their lives are ordinary nothing special about them you know normal job karte hai uh, ek do bacche hai ghar chalate hai whatever yeah. but then you go into one you go into the interior lives to, to a fair extent and two you make us realize that th- their existence isn't so ordinary that they have so many more odds to beat than a comparable male so just Uh, going uh, you know circling back to your grandparents for example yeah. and thinking aloud over the how did they cope and is it that the women coped differently or coped better or you know they could kind of uh, they carried that burden in a different way were there different kinds of denial that might have set in for the men or, or the women uh, because one common way that i can just think for men to deal with it is a certain kind of macho denial you know and and some of that could also you know involve just running away from what just happened or uh, you know 
uh, not facing up to that so so i'm i'm just sort of i see this uh, you know i'm applying this thread that i've seen go through and uh, you know so my question therefore is that now looking back in hindsight do you feel that the women coped with it differently do you feel that some of that toughness uh, also rubbed off on you because even a little thing like you know uh, inventing a masi in karnal to kind of get out yeah. is also a way of fighting back of saying ki nahi main nahi lungi mujhe jana hai mujhe karna hai hmm. right uh, did some of it rub off from uh, uh, there as well so so what are your sort of observations on that broad subject and how much of it you know w- could you see in this particular instance of your grandparents and your parents and what they kind of um, uh, you know go through to just to just live their lives like even your mother getting transferred like that obviously that boss in delhi would have been some toxic um as all so you know uh, so what are your observations now looking back two things one i obviously come from strong women which is now clear to me in hindsight which was not a, a recurring you know undercurrent of my life that every day i'm waking up and thinking wow what strong women around me but uh, i mean strong women was not even a thing that was even recognized or let alone celebrated in the time that we grew up in and f- i mean let alone the time before that hamare dada dadi nana nani ke time pe to it wasn't even a thing it was just a given that yes my dada ji will travel across the country going to all these theaters and uh, i imagine having a good circle of friends and uh, 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 to meet in every city and hang out with we, meanwhile my dadi is at home raising these four boys by herself and my dad tells me stories of how you know she would have to take uh, literally wo jo movie mein dikhate hain ke wo sahukar ke paas aurat jati hai ke anaj de do thoda sa aur wo bolta hai ke tumhara account settle karo pehle and then that filmy scenes that they show in the purane zamane ki movies that's what their life was like like she would by the time my dada ji would come back from tour and he's not in a salary job that every month money is coming into the account so by the time he would come back from tour that's when he would bring the money but by that time the stocks in the house were at zero ke ghar mein घी खत्म है तेल खत्म है चावल खत्म है धान खत्म है सब कुछ सो एंड एंड वी आर बेसिकली दे आर इन लिविंग इन डेट ऑफ ऑल द लोकल साहूकार्स एंड ऑल एंड सो माय ग्रैंड मदर वाज डीलिंग विद ऑल ऑफ दैट देन माय ग्रैंडफादर वुड कम एंड सेटल ऑल द डेट्स एंड देन सडनली दे वुड लिव अ वेरी हैप्पी लाइफ फॉर अंटिल द नेक्स्ट टूर बिगैन ऑब्वियसली अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग वुमन हु वॉज प्रैक्टिकली सिंगल पेरेंटिंग हर चिल्ड्रन वाइल द हजबेंड इज अवे अगेन लाइक आई सेड अबाउट टॉक्ड अबाउट माई नानी गिविंग बर्थ टू child after child losing despite losing children an immense amount of pain trauma grief i can't even imagine what all she went through my par nani who uh, lost her husband so young and then go, goes on to become a school principal and raise her children by herself not doesn't remarry and is a, a strong independent independent woman in that sense my uh, par dadi also Uh, was widowed early and uh, she also was like uh, she raised my dada and his sister herself for the most part these are all obviously i come from a stock of strength <laughs> of strong women my mother's life when i think about it i i i think i was a very thankless child when i was growing up uh, as most children are which is i guess understandable forgivable up to a certain age uh, but i was very thankless in hindsight and i didn't appreciate the life she led you know she would literally get up at 5 am bachcho ka khana husband ki ch- uh, husband ka khana uh, dabba office ka apna dabba office ka fir then my da- dad is waking up later and having his morning tea and then bachcho ko subah matlab i would to i would sleep on while brushing my teeth then i would sleep in the loo then i would sleep in the bathroom so she had to come and wake me up 20 times in the morning uh, within in the span of one hour so again in hindsight now i know what a thankless and useless liability of a child i was बट एट द टाइम इट फील्स लाइक नेचुरल कि हाँ ये तो मम्मी का काम है मम्मी कर रही हैं बट नाउ वैन यू थिंक अबाउट शी इज़ ऑल्सो अ वर्किंग वुमन शी इज़ ऑल्सो डूइंग हर जॉब गोइंग टू ऑफिस डीलिंग विद कॉलीग्स एंड एवरी थिंग एंड देन शाम को घर आ रही हैं अगेन रात को डिनर वगैरह बनाने में लगी हैं एंड रात को बारह बजे तक शी इज़ ऑन हर फीट इन द किचन हेल्पिंग दे वी हैड अ बिट ऑफ डोमेस्टिक हेल्प बट इट वॉज एंड आई मीन दे वर स्टिल दीज यू नो नोशन ऑफ विच इन माई पेरेंट्स हाउस इज स्टिल ट्रू के मम्मी के हाथ का खाना ही बनेगा 
तो हाँ ठीक है देर बी हेल्प बट अल्टीमेटली खाना तो मम्मी के हाथ का बनेगा रोटियाँ तो गरम गरम होनी चाहिए जो उतरती उतरती रोटी दो कॉन्सेप्ट आर स्टिल देर सो शी शी वॉज लिविंग इन दैट रियालिटी एंड आई मीन आई डोंट थिंक शी वॉज इवन लाइक यू नो फीलिंग ओपरेस दर एनी थिंग अगेन इन दैट एज इट दीज वर ऑल एक्सेप्टेड एज फैक्ट्स ऑफ लाइफ कि दिस इज हाउ लाइफ इज एंड सो हर जनरेशन पर्टिकुलरली आई फेल्ट वॉज वेरी सैंडविच बिकॉज अप अंटिल देन वेमेन वर मोस्टली हाउस वाइफ I mean, not to take credit away from stay-at-home mothers who have a incredibly challenging life of their own, but this was one generation where women said, "No, I also want to work," and society said, "Okay, go and work, but not at the cost of everything else you were already doing." So, in my generation, I am my work or my womaning or whatever I choose to do with my life is the primary thing, and then my house is still a lot of it is still on me, but I am not physically standing in the kitchen cooking rotis every day. so in our generation we have been offloaded some of that burden at least the physical part if the mental load is still large but the physical part of that labor is off our generation at least in our uh, social economic band so hamare uh, liye that that burden has been reduced and one generation above that burden of going to office was not there but this generation in the middle my mom's generation and my mother in law's generation and uh, all of our moms they had to do this double whammy कि बाहर जाओ काम करने बट यू हैव टू अर्न दैट राइट बैट बाय आल्सो नॉट लेटिंग एनीथिंग स्लिप एट होम सो यू आर डूइंग द जॉब ऑफ द लास्ट जनरेशन आल्सो एंड द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन आल्सो एंड टुगेदर एज वन पर्सन व्हिच इज टू मी इन ह्यूमन लाइक व्हेन आई थिंक अबाउट इट नाउ आई फील लाइक माय मॉम्स लाइफ आई कैन नेवर लिव दैट लाइफ इट वॉज सो हार्ड एंड वी वर थैंकलेस एट द टाइम अबाउट इट बट नाउ वेन आई थिंक अबाउट इट येस आई डू कम फ्रॉम स्ट्रॉन्ग वेमेन एंड एंड इट्स अ पिटी दैट वी डिड नॉट सेलिब्रेट दिस सूनर and did not recognize them and not just celebrate them but you know make their life a little easier than it was it was much harder than it needed to be so my next question again sort of goes back to something you said and in fact goes back to something i used to observe about my uh, father and it kind of made me amused and simultaneously ashamed at myself for being amused which is that uh, you know uh, and uh, he was of course uh, lived a privileged life in the sense ias officer all of that in his old age uh, i remember whenever he'd visit me in bombay i'd take him to the marriott for breakfast because he loved the buffet spread there and he would eat everything he would try every single thing mm-hmm. right if anybody is offering anything for free he wants it and i found it amusing and obviously at the same time the rational explanation for it yeah. is that our parents grew up in times of relative scarcity yeah. you know kuch bhi uh, aasan nahi tha you know there wasn't an abundance of anything so you valued whatever you got and you had this culture of never wasting anything you know that old cliche of people are starving in china so finish what you got yeah. right somalia I, yeah in our time Th- this is a lyric from a john lennon song also i forget which one was it working class hero whatever so um, it came from that sort of scarcity mindset whereas we can take all of that stuff for granted and if i'm not finishing my food i can you know i can get all rational and say are a sunk cost fallacy and this and that we yeah. can get into that uh, stuff right and you point out and this is something that many guests of mine have spoken about with regard to their parents and their grandparents that that hunger for education ki education karna hai you know both your parents were so educated you know they kind of instilled that in you as well mm-hmm. that it meant a big deal mm-hmm. ki class mein topper banna hai mm-hmm. 90 nahi chalega 95 chahiye right. mera aadha mark kahan gaya <laughs> right <laughs> and and you start caring about this stuff and and i'm again tying it in with another observation i made recently where i was at a conference organized by some investors who are in, investing in very unconventional ways in people around the country and uh, they brought together a whole bunch of entrepreneurs including people who were like 17 and 18 and my observation there was that number one these, these young people are mind blowing they're a different level but number two and and this is something i strongly believe is that real change in india in any field you know will come from the small towns it will come from hungry young people in small towns because they want it more they have a better work ethic and they have bigger dreams they're not constrained as much by conventional thinking and i'm just tying all of this together and wondering if it is therefore that background at class really plays a big part that if you grow up with a certain kind of scarcity you don't take it for granted we don't have a scarcity of information out there there's an abundance of it but we take it for granted by spending all our time on twitter and you know doing other matter gashti or whatever it is right we are not taking advantage of that if you gave the internet to our parents i think matlab 4 din mein to daddy pura internet pad lete 
you know because that hunger was uh, uh, there which came from scarcity so what are your sort of thoughts on this in the sense that you came from a background where you didn't take this stuff for granted yeah. right you had to work for it uh, you know even when you had one bad year in school you just you know got down to it topped uh, west zone or whatever you topped uh, <laughs> the next year you 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 kind of got it done so in your observation through your own life and perhaps even through doing this newsletter you met so many people of varied backgrounds and all of that how much would you say this matters that you know your background matters your class matters all of this really shapes who you are and what you are like if you were born in a really rich family and you were chilling and doing holidays in switzerland i i suspect you would have been a very different person yeah so so what are sort of your thoughts on this because you meet and talk to many many more people than i do of much, you know from much more diverse backgrounds i mean i don't know exactly how to answer that but my thoughts on generally background is that yeah we are all a product of our background our experiences to a very large extent yes there is free will and choice in there uh, but there's also a lot of like i said hamare when i was talking about our i am batch na ke 249 me se 27 engineers you could see that there is a way of thinking that all of these children have all of these students have as compared to the others so uh, even and you could say they we were all from different towns and different backgrounds and uh, economically socially every way but still there was a way that we were all conditioned in thinking by virtue of just those four years of our education so obviously when you talk about the your entire life and all the generations that came before you it is a um it has an undeniable effect on who you turn out to be as a person you know i i mean one of the things that uh, one of the reasons i was thinking that this might be the the most intellectually low <laughs> iq episode of seen and the unseen is because i am i am a bollywood fan right like i'm coming with that level of intellectual uh, <laughs> analysis so for uh, i'm sure you've had guests who would be able to quote research papers on this from international research Uh, white papers and and intelligent things like that but like mujhe mere dimag mein literally when you were talking was coming coffee with karan <laughs> cuz i was thinking of all of these you know uh, star kids and uh, jo the entire nepotism debate and the star kids that come on that show and and karan jor himself you see a very i mean i love the show i watch it <laughs> as soon as an episode drops but it's entertaining to me because also sometimes you see how Uh, out of touch with reality people can get when they are born into privilege and you know uh, there's also sometimes a lack of extreme lack of self awareness like if you read karan jor's book which will again be the <laughs> lowest iq show note ever on <laughs> cn and the unseen but if you read his book na you will see like there's so much contradiction of himself in within one paragraph there is like self awareness bahut kam so when you are born in that level of privilege and cushion it obviously doesn't push you to question yourself or your place in society or where you are headed beyond a point so now as a parent actually that's a real concern that my husband and i have about our child because we feel like this child is born in full privilege right like we had what you could still call a middle class upbringing now we are not middle class now we are maybe top 1% or even 0.1% of society with i am education and civil services and all that privileged background this child our child is born into privilege how do we give him a taste of reality and you know obviously you want comforts for your child but at the same time you don't want him to be so cushioned that he grows up in living in a fairy land that has no connection to reality he we want him to grow up to be a contributive citizen of society so you know i'm 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 going to as i tend to do double click on that as well mm. but uh, before i do i just want to point out that uh, you know you have written one of the great posts about imposter syndrome <laughs> on womaning in india aur abhi aap yahan aake khud keh rahe ho ki i am so this i'm so that and you know lo- b- b- lowering the iq and all that this is absolutely uh, uh, I-, i think ridiculous in fact this is one of those episodes i'm excited for people to listen to because they'll discover your wonderful newsletter through it and the other thing regarding 
regarding what you said about Mr. Johar's book, which will of course be in the show notes, <laughs> is that you know, having done my course, you will also recall how I tell uh, all the participants that there should be no hierarchy of books in your head. Yeah. That ye high literature hai or ye to bakwas hai and all of that. I'm I really feel strongly about that. I think anything that you enjoy reading, yeah. you should read. Yeah. You know, you should not be hard on yourself. Ki arey ye to intellectual log nahi padte hai and all of that. Mm-hmm. But apart from that, I'm fascinated by what you just said about like number one when you've through your newsletter you've also like one of the things we we've discussed about it in the past and one of the things i like about it is how you infused just the right amount of the personal in it yeah so but you know there there are your own stories there is your own life makes it so much more relatable and there is also that quality of self reflection which i really like and it's interesting that you're bringing this self reflection to your parenting by consciously asking ki as you just did that how can we make sure that our kid even though he's born to privilege doesn't pick up uh, you know the bad attitude that people born to privilege sometimes do have yeah. so how have you thought about this in concrete terms like how is your parenting going to be shaped by this so uh, there is a um it's a there's a lot of insulation that privileged kids grow up in right like so we live in a gated colony and uh, uh, there's a slum right behind that colony but it's hidden from view and the residents of the colony we like to pretend that it doesn't exist uh, there's hamara uh, like there's a whatsapp group of the colony rwa and often the topics being discussed there are ke are usne my cleaning lady is asking for 500 rupees more how dare they this is extortion and there's so much rage against uh, someone who's coming from a much more underprivileged background than you and for her 500 rupees means the world for you it's not even a coffee so i mean it's it, it's very disturbing to see that level of disconnection with reality and empathy so for me it's very important that my child has that empathy and is you know aware of what privilege is and is very very conscious of his own i mean already he's just 3 and i already have explained the word lucky to him that you know you are lucky because see i showed him the other day a lady on a wheelchair and i told him that see that lady she is on a chair with wheels so he said why i said because she can't walk see how lucky we are because we can so you know small things like that but but i feel even at this early age i'm to- talking to him about how lucky he is because he needs to be very conscious especially as a male child that to uh, uh and born to such privilege that he needs to be conscious at every step i i i one thing i really detest is when people give all of the credit for their achievements to themselves i am here because of my own hard work I mean for a privileged person to say that it's it's very tone deaf and and black self awareness because like for example even talking about myself I am here not today on this great show of you all not because of my hard work only but also because of all of these generations that came before me and my parents valued my education and uh, the kind of upbringing i had the kind of experiences i was privileged to have right so if you lose that perspective of the debt that you owe to so many people many of them you've never even seen many of them not didn't even live in the same time as you did but you this is all the history behind where you are today and that's important for him to realize that's one thing and the other is also more exposure to the real world like like uh, last week was his birthday and we celebrated in a uh, shelter for rescue animals so he loved feeding the goat and feeding the donkey and feeding the duck and uh, obviously little kids love animals and there's a beautiful um, shelter called barnyard in in delhi in uh, near saket and but 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 i chose to take him there instead of throwing him a lavish pool side party like many of his peers are already getting because i thought this keeps him more grounded and in touch with reality he'll be as happy he's a baby at least right now he doesn't have any notions of what a birthday party should look like but uh, these are experiences that i want him to have and obviously he's still a toddler so you still protect him from many of the harsher realities of life but as he grows up more and more of these realities need to be introduced to him in a way that makes him a more empathetic person so that's my take on parenting i also want to circle back to what you said about imposter syndrome so i want to tell you there is a 
just to increase the IQ of the show notes that I leave behind, there is a test by Professor Pauline Chance, who was the person who I who coined the term imposter syndrome. Obviously, a woman did it, and obviously she did it because she saw other women. That's how she even arrived at the realization that is there a problem with the way we are all seeing ourselves. <laughs> so she asked that question thankfully, and she came up with a test to diagnose imposter syndrome. And we can link to that test. And I would urge all your listeners, especially women, to take that test. It's a test on which you score from 0 to 100. And the higher your score, the higher is your imposter syndrome. And I love questions like, do you often think that you don't deserve to be where you are? Like, I am literally right now very, in all honesty, been thinking since you invited me that I don't deserve to be on the show. Why is he inviting me? What will I do here? What will I say that will add any value? This is, I know that maybe at, some intellectual level i know that it's not true but the the i'm programmed to think that it is the way that it is and i was uh, while writing this piece on imposter syndrome that you talked about uh, one of the women who i had interviewed for the piece i told her ke hey do me a favor just take this test because i took the test and i knew my score and i said tell me what is your score because i'm covering your story i want to know how much of imposter syndrome do you actually have and she said yaar i have like the test says I have like a significant amount of imposter syndrome. My score is 35 out of 100. And my score was 88. <laughs> oh, so you had much more of it. My score is 88 out of 100 on imposter syndrome. So that's how that's how badly I have ho- held myself back. So I am sorry for all of the self-deprecatory things I've said so far and I'm going to continue saying, but it's it's conditioning. It's a lot of unlearning that I consciously keep trying to do, but it still comes out at times like these. <laughs> I had a guest at home and I forget who it is, maybe Shruti Jagirdar because she's the last person I recorded with at home or maybe before that, but it was a woman. And that woman before the episode say, uh, b- pointed out something to me which was very true. She said that a lot of your great episodes are with women mm-hmm. and they always start by saying, Pata nahi mujhe kyu hai. Ah. You know, so the imposter syndrome is really Correct. like uh, a woman problem. And I'm going to now double click on the imposter syndrome. But before doing that, I'm very impressed by the awareness which you uh, bring to uh, your uh, parenting. And, and uh, I almost feel like I have a stake in this because I know both you and your husband very well. He's yeah. been my friend, uh, good friend for much longer but one of the great books of social science of the last century was this book called the nurture assumption by judith rich harris and it was very controversial because it showed with great data and all of that that the impression that people have that kids are shaped by their parents a lot is actually not true that the influence that parents have on what their kid turns out to be is minuscule and the far greater uh, influences or, or is of their peers hmm. you know so when you said that for you know your son's friends are already having pool parties thrown for them and all of that you, you know that kind of came to mind but oh, yeah. i hope in your case you guys are influential enough uh, to uh, protect him from that and there's a contradictory thought here and they're both true in their different domains and one is the role of luck like one of the things my time as a professional poker player taught me is that we underestimate the role of luck in our lives Hmm. like poker is of course a game of skill but the quantum of luck is very high so you need a huge sample size of events for your skill to express itself and similarly in life and i've written about this quite often We underestimate the role of luck to the extent that exactly what you said happens, that good things happen to people, they give credit for it to themselves and they allow themselves to get arrogant and bad things happen uh, to people and they allow it to affect their self-esteem and they get themselves down and they suffer from imposter syndrome and so on and so forth. And we should sort of watch out for that and sort of try to be equanimous i think this understanding of luck and probability almost takes you into a buddhist direction where you're kind of you know you leave your emotions out of it and you're equanimous which is i guess a sort of a good way to be and and i would imagine that these different directions you go in when you ignore luck there's a role of gender to it also it's a men who are more likely to look at the good that happens to them and get arrogant and it's a women who are more likely to have that confidence gap you know there was yeah. this great article in the atlantic called the confidence gap which also i link to which uh, uh, you know referenced a number of these studies showing that you know women will not apply for jobs that they absolutely uh, deserve you know you in, you in your piece on um, uh, on the imposter syndrome you quoted this lady called archana so i'll just quote that bit and these are her words because i think they're very 
uh, sort of uh, uh, they, they apply to a lot of people where uh, you know a global role was advertised in her company and she said quote even though the whole world was telling me to apply for it i wasn't sure i was ready it was my classic i'm getting it because i'm a woman logic i didn't want people to question why was i given this role so i ended up not applying for it at all when the position was finally filled i was shocked to discover that a man who had far less relevant experience than me had been selected for it the hr leader later told me in confidence that out of the pool of candidates who were considering for the position i was the only one who everybody unanimously thought could do the job and you've got sort of other uh, examples of this as well including people like maya angelou once uh, saying uh, quote uh, i have written 11 books but each time i think oh they're going to find out now i've run a game on everybody and they're going to find me out stop quote and einstein says a similar thing mm. and this is also known in psychology as a dunning kruger effect right that uh, i mean there are two sides to the dunning kruger effect one side is uh you know people tend to think they are better at something than they actually are like for example lake wobegon um, is is a famous example of that lake wobegon is a fictional town created by uh, the novelist garrison keeler where everybody thinks they are better than average <laughs> which can obviously not be the case right an so an island of men uh, yeah so <laughs> yeah it's it's a very man thing right and uh, uh, so there's a term for it called the lake wobegon effect <laughs> where everybody thinks they are better than average so every driver will tell you he's a better driver than average though obviously it's not true and in this case i'm using the male pronoun deliberately you know but the converse of that is that people who are experts will often downplay their expertise because it is so easy to them that they will think what is a big deal koi bhi kar lega mm. which in a sense i think you're also doing because what you've done with this newsletter writing 70 something posts week after week week after week it's a stunning act of discipline and uh, you know it's it's so consistent and it's so consistently good and you're completely underplaying that like it's easy <laughs> by hath ka khel hai which anyone can tell you it's not so you know you said your score was was 85 88 88 yeah which means very high yeah. imposter syndrome almost reached my 95 wala target <laughs> so har cheez mein marks high aane chahiye oh chahi. good lord <laughs> thank god 95 nahi tha i know so so uh, how do you uh, fight this in yourself because if you're saying it was 88 it was 88 after you knew that there is such a thing exactly you knew there was a trap but you still fell into it exactly so i was literally writing a piece on it i was researching it for my piece i was interviewing women and beating them ke tumne apne bare mein itna chota kyu socha hmm. why did you belittle your own accomplishments your achievements your capacity so much why do you think so little of yourself main ye baatein kar rahi thi phone pe baki aurton se and then i took the test myself in all consciousness ki ye test is designed to highlight this but then i tried to be as honest as i could and i thought back to actual decisions i've taken in my life and how i thought about myself my abilities potentials when i took those decisions how i felt when i was given an honor how i felt when i met with failure and i wrote it in all honesty and i was i thought ha acha high score aayega but this was like beyond my wildest imagination that it's, it's really bad has it changed you in the sense that do you now tell yourself to watch out for it do you stop holding yourself back from doing whatever you want to do i do um two things have changed one which is something i've written in the piece is about compliments when people tell me that you're like like you've been showering me with these kind compliments about the work i've done my earlier pre writing womaning my instinct was to deny and argue back and no no amit this is not true anyone can write it and see so many people write newsletters and substack ke numbers dekho kitne writers hain ye wo i would have argued back now i hold that argument it's still in my mind but i force myself to say thank you that's for me big i know it sounds very normal and what's the big deal in it but i suppose women and even men who suffer from severe crippling imposter syndrome will realize that that's a big step to just graciously accept a compliment that's one change that i have forced myself i've, I've consciously made uh, and succeeded in making happen and uh, the second second was about how after uh, you you said do you are you able to go for things that has happened a lot more after motherhood because i feel like motherhood kind of is is a transformative experience that's an understatement for sure but also it um, for me at least it gave me the perspective of you know how little things matter that we think so much about and when you you become you become responsible for another human life is when you 
feel that everything else I would worry about was so inconsequential. <laughs> like after becoming mother, when people would talk to me about, "Arey, mera boss, mera deadline, mera officer," be like, "Ki ye kya bekar chizo pe log tension le rahe?" <laughs> so I mean, my own uh, things that would hold me back, uh, which would seem like big things in the past, now I've become a a, a lot more, you know. Uh, pragmatic about it and you know universe is very large life is very long we are a speck in the universe it doesn't really matter whether i come on a podcast or not be in the larger scheme of things so let me accept if a friend is 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 inviting me and i know i might feel this uh, primal urge that i don't deserve to be here but forget it it's okay plenty of undeserving people get what they don't deserve maybe i do deserve it maybe i don't either way it doesn't matter in the larger scheme of things so that kind of attitude of doesn't really matter in the larger scheme of things and what really matters is i am responsible for a life for an individual and that is going to be probably my biggest contribution that kind of also gives you a lot more grounding and you tend to be more for me at least it has made me more adventurous in the decisions i take in your experience how important are circles of female solidarity and female friendship in all this because my assumption is that if people are chronically underconfident hmm. then it really helps if somebody tells you ki no you're so good you are the expert in this you deserve this you go for it and men don't tell women that yeah. right men take women in their lives for granted yeah. even for all the care work that women do for example men won't express it ki you know the food is great or you know thank you for this or whatever hmm. they, they kind of take it for granted hmm. um so it, it, it therefore at one level and this is something you know i did in recorded an episode yesterday with alice evans and she was also speaking about this you know, through countries that these networks then become really important networks of female solidarity and friendship yeah. and one way in which it strikes me that it certainly would is just in terms of giving each other courage and helping you beat this confidence gap yeah so that has been a learning over um decades for me because um like i said i was a full on misogynist when i was young as i mean love school mein i was like a proper tomboy uh, i've written about this also wo kuch kuch hota hai manjali ka dialogue na main un stupid ladkiyon jaisi nahi hu jinke sath tum hang out karte ho so that that was my ethos also and i was like a very common undercurrent of uh, एवरेज यंग साइकी इन दैट इन द नाइन्टीज के यू नो गर्ल्स आर स्टूपेड लड़कियाँ चीची करती हैं लड़कियाँ दे आर दे टॉक अबाउट फैशन एंड दे टॉक दे आर ऑलवेज गॉसिपिंग एंड आई एम अबव ऑल दैट आई एंड सो आई वॉज आई जेनरली हैड मोर मेल फ्रेंड्स इन स्कूल बिकॉज आई यूज टू लुक डाउन अपॉन women and friendships with women and i used to think that women are a lot there's a lot of politics there's backstabbing there's all this stuff happening which is too much to take men are simpler and boys have nothing going on in their brains <laughs> beyond what they are doing at that moment easier to deal with them and i used to re- genuinely feel that male friendships are better and stronger because i would see them lasting over years right like uh, our fathers would still be friends with their childhood मेल फ्रेंड्स बट आर मदर्स यू वुड नेवर हियर ऑफ कि मेरी स्कूल में वो फ्रेंड थी मेरी कॉलेज में वो फ्रेंड थी नाउ लेटर इन लाइफ आई रियलाइज दैट दैट वॉज ऑल्सो प्रिवलेज दैट मैन हैड राइट टू स्टे इन टच विद देयर पेयर्स एंड देयर फ्रेंड्स एंड वीमेन वर ऑफन मैरिड ऑफ इन टू सेपरेट फैमिलीज सर नेम चेंज ऑफ एन नेम ऑल्सो चेंज इन द एबसेंस ऑफ अ सोशल नेटवर्क हाउ विल दे इवन स्टे इन टच एंड दे आर सो बिजी विद एवरी डे लाइफ लाइक आई हैव टोल्ड यू माई मॉम्स डेली रूटीन वेयर इज द स्पेस इन दैट फॉर फ्रेंडशिप्स सो all of those were uh, things that i didn't see at that time and i had these notions about male friendships versus female friendships but over the years uh, i have realized that it's actually the other way around female friendships when with the right people who are uh, you know who who have that realization of how the world is designed to hold us back and we are on our own we have to build each other up when you have that kind of a positive female friendship it can be the best thing that that you do in your life just talking to that friend and like i told you you know i used to beat up other women ke tum kyu apne bare mein itna chota soch rahe ho and i would not say that to myself ever because i am thinking myself thinking less of myself so then then my friend will come and beat me on that ke yaar tum tum kyu apne bare mein aisa soch rahe ho so i mean the the standard trope is talk to yourself the way you would talk to your best friend but we are not able to do that because we are as you quoted from the post we are conditioned not to do that so um that that's why i think in that context female friendships especially with women who have that perspective of building each other up 
that sort of a female friendship can just be a huge huge boost and support in your life and you also have these shared experiences so that was the whole reason i started writing womaning when i realized that many things i was experiencing were not unique to me because up until then i thought ye mere sath hi ho raha hai jo ho raha hai and because i have this great unique trajectory in life that all of the things that i have done which so half of them we covered and there's my career to be start be new all of that which i've done that is the reason why i am having these experiences at work at with the family and everything but then when you start talking to other women you realize that a lot of these are shared experiences and a lot of them are not because i am who i am but because i'm a woman and when you see that undercurrent and that thread that's the whole reason i started writing womaning because i was like this thread needs to be made more obvious to men and women both because women need to realize that my challenges are not unique to me and they are not something that's happening to me because of something i did i don't deserve this this is a gender wide thing and men need to realize be more conscious of them for obvious reasons too yeah and when one point you kind of made here is worth underscoring which is about you know men staying in touch women not staying in touch but that's because women get so fundamentally uprooted in our country so often during marriage yeah. like one of the finest books i've read in the last decade is called india moving by chinme tumbe mm-hmm. and it's about the history of internal migration in india and the big til there is that most internal migration happens in india because a woman gets married yeah. and she's leaving a home and she's going somewhere else yeah. and it is a complete uprooting sometimes of course it's a different city different state but even if it is not it's a different milieu it's a different house is different expectations you've it's almost like you've gone from you know one oppressive environment to another no matter how much you sort and of your surname it. changes and many cases your name changes so you are just a whole different person the person who existed one week back uh, before your marriage doesn't exist anymore fatak your entire existence is wiped off so i mean how do you expect your friendships telling you khud ki identity nahi chal rahi hai Yeah, let, let let's go back to your childhood, and we'll do your full biography. Don't worry. We to you know. Not uh, worried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I was actually t- talking too much. So no, I don't no, want no to one, break records on <laughs> biography. No one can talk too much for the same reason that no one is boring. I mean, all lives are so fascinating. Earlier, you know, while talking about your childhood, you mentioned, and just now again, you mentioned that you weren't aware of these. अंडर करेंट सो मिसोजनी फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम डेट योर मदर वुड डू ऑल ऑफ दिस एंड यू वुड से हाँ ये तो माँ है इसको तो करना ही है शीज गॉट अ वेक मी अ फाइव टाइम्स यू नो इवन दो शी इज गॉट सो मच गोइंग ऑन एंड इक्वली इन कॉलेज यू सेट डेट अगेन यू वॉन्ट अवेयर ऑफ दिस टेल मी अबाउट दैट प्रोसेस ऑफ अवेयरनेस लाइक हाउ डिड यू स्टार्ट बिकमिंग अवेयर वन हाउ डिड यू स्टार्ट बिकमिंग अवेयर एंड टू हाउ डिड यू देन स्टार्ट पुटिंग अ फ्रेम टू इट यू नो कि this is the way the world is and you know figuring out how to think about it in terms of you know whether it's a, a certain kind of feminist thinker or writer who began to influence you first how, how did that evolution sort of um, happen in your own life yeah, this is a black box for me too i have thought about this a lot often ke when was that time is there any one moment in which i suddenly had a coin dropping moment ke oh this is how the world is and now i see everything from that lens like people close to me accuse me ke tum you are like you know with a person with a hammer to whom everything is a nail now <laughs> that's how you are with gender and maybe that's i am guilty of that to some extent but it is so overarching and every and just omnipresent this this lens but um, i don't know a particular moment i i think the explanation i have come to is that it was i was just a part of a larger cultural shift that happened at some point in the 2000s and early 2010s which is that we started recognizing some of these things that we had taken accepted at face value to be not the way the world necessarily should be and there is something wrong here so i think mrinal ji spoke about this uh, on during her uh, uh, her interview with you and she said that aisa lagta tha ke kuch galat ho raha hai par pata nahi tha kya hai so i had that feeling my entire childhood ke even though like i said i was a misogyn is myself and i was guilty of all of these tropes believing them following them propagating them but i also had this nagging feeling especially because i grew up with a brother right so i would see very stark differences in the way um, everybody and the world treated him not just my family but uh, uh, the institutions around us the society public spaces friends everything 
and this difference became much more uh, stark as we grew older because as kids you're still um, i mean at least uh, cre- credit to my parents they never did any uh, discrimination ki ladki hai to isko do roti kam di jayengi that didn't happen in my house at all it was the other way around but uh, i think i was quite pampered by my dad but it there was a difference ki ha tum iti zor se mat haso ऐसे लड़कियां नहीं हंसती हैं और यू नो आई रिमेंबर वन मेमोरी ऑफ हम कहीं बस में कहीं जा रहे थे एंड आई स्टूड अप एंड इमिजिएटली आई स्टोल के बैठ जाओ पीछे वाले सब देखेंगे लड़कियां ऐसे खड़ी नहीं होती हैं एंड इट फॉर मी इट वाज सच अ वियर्ड थिंग कि लड़कियां का क्या है इसमें खड़े होने में लाइक आई जस्ट नॉन्ट स्ट्रेच आई एम स्टैंडिंग बट देन सडनली इट इज देर इज अ न्यू लेंस दैट यू आर इंट्रोड्यूस टू दैट दिस इज द वे द वर्ल्ड इज गोइंग टू सी यू एंड सो यू बेटर not cross the line there so those faint lines started becoming more clear as i grew older when we went to college suddenly matlab like i said i always had more male friends than female friends all through school but suddenly there was a different lens with which my male friendships were seen when i once i entered college because there were a lot of romantic relationships happening in batchmates and all so my mom always used to call me koi hai kya kon hai kya hai and if i mention a boy's name in passing then suddenly she wants to double click on that as you say <laughs> <laughs> let's double click ladke ka naam <laughs> so i mean those things never happened with my brother so uh, um, uh, going out with friends something simple for him very uh, uh, a thing that he didn't have to think about twice i had to i had to think about the way i would formulate that application to my parents ke is tarah se bolenge sath mein ye ja rahi hai wo ja raha hai to is itne baje wapas aayenge ye mode of transport hai so i'm um, and even beyond that, like sometimes i wouldn't even bother because i would in my mind be like ye to is not outside the realm of possibility for me ek kurukshetra se shimla ki trip ban rahi hai friends ki bhul jao i'm sorry i'm out even before i ask anybody else i know this is not within my realm of possibilities so uh, there were things like this which uh, especially between me and my brother because that was one male figure that i i had seen my whole life and us being treated the same our whole life and then suddenly now us being treated differently so i think that niggling thing behind my mind of kuch galat hai started becoming more and more concrete with age kind kuch zyada hi galat hai <laughs> and then over time i think culturally also like i said our society the the f word feminism was introduced uh, uh, movies mein thoda dikhne laga ke ha wo ladkiyan jo piche show piece hoti thi aur ek wo bachao 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 victim hogi aur hero aake se bacha lega that's aur ek gaane mein dance kar degi so that's the extent of female representation we saw in pop culture that began to be questioned and there were movies that shifted the narrative so slowly i think culturally also the environment was conducive and that's how it was a very very gradual process so i cannot think of any one trigger that led to it and what was your conception of yourself through this period in the sense ki pehle to apne engineering kar liya after topping class uske baad mba kar liya but you know are you kind of going with the flow and because you're always excelling in academics you're just taking the most obvious next step that everybody takes kyunki 12th ke baad to engineering hi main option hoti hai uske baad mba is such a great option you got into iim bangalore and so on but you know was were you sort of going with that flow or was there a plan that or, or did you think about it and think about you know these are the things i'm interested in these are the things i want to do this is a kind of life i want to live so tell me about that sort of evolution in your thinking and your understanding of yourself yeah so um at least in the early stages there was zero thought the only thought i which i've mentioned before is the ethic of my parents have worked very hard to give me an education and so i have one job in life everything else is provided for for me i have one job which is to study so i'm going to do it well because this is the least i can do to uh, justify my parents efforts and sacrifices so that kind of sailed me through स्कूल एंड लाइक यू सेड उसके बाद डॉक्टर इंजीनियर दो ऑप्शन होती हैं बायो में मुझे पसंद नहीं आती थी तो <laughs> हो गया फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री मैथ्स चलो इंजीनियर और उसके बाद भी इट वॉज अगेन एम बी ए वॉज अ वेरी ऑब्वियस एंड एस्पिरेशनल रूट फॉर एवरी वन आई डिड गेट अ जॉब बट आई ऑल्सो गॉट एम बी ए सो नहीं होता तो जॉब कर लेते हो गया तो कर लिया अगेन इट वॉज अ वेरी गोइंग विद द फ्लो डिसीजन विच इज जस्ट पॉपुलर विजडम पेरेंट्स विजडम सब लोग ये कर रहे हैं अच्छी चीज़ है करो इवन द चॉइस ऑफ माई ब्रांच इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन आई हैड नो पर्टिकुलर लव फॉर दैट डायरेक्शन नॉट डू आई इवन टू टे बट सैडली बट 
बट दैट वॉज जस्ट अ वेरी नेचुरल डिसीजन कि बेस्ट होती है जी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स और कंप्यूटर साइंस दो बेस्ट हैं उनमें से एक ले लो तो जो मिल जाएगा अच्छे कॉलेज में ले लिया इट वॉज नॉट अ वेरी कॉन्शियस डिसीजन ऑन माई पार्ट आई थिंक द स्टेप वेयर आई स्टार्टेड थोड़ा सा टेकिंग कॉन्शियस डिसीजन वॉज अराउंड द एंड ऑफ एम बी ए वेन द काइंड ऑफ जॉब आई वेंट फॉर बट अंटिल दैट पॉइंट इट वॉज फॉलोइंग द फ्लो बट एंड दैट सेड टू दिस डे आई टेल पीपल बिकॉज वेन आई वेन यू लुक बैक एट माई सी वी इट लुक्स वेरी वाह क्या वॉट डिसाइजिव स्टेप्स हैव बीन टेकन एट वेरियस जंक्शर्स बट इट्स वेन पीपल आस्क मी फॉर गाइड आई एम लाइक दे गो फॉर मी आई डोंट इवन टूडे डोंट हैव अ प्लान फॉर दिस इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू डू विद माई लाइफ बट फॉर मी वॉट हैज ऑलवेज वर्क इज दैट द नेक्स्ट स्टेप हैज बीन सम हाउ क्लियर टू मी दैट इधर इट हैज बीन दिस इज वॉट आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू डू सो ये मुझे नहीं करना है तो देर फॉर दी अदर ऑल्टरनेटिव इज जो मुझे करना है और इट इज दैट दिस इज वन थिंग दैट आई रियली वॉन्ट लाइक वू मनिंग वॉज समथिंग दैट वॉज नॉट अ पुश फ्रॉम एनी वट वॉज अ पुल फ्रॉम इन साइड मीट वॉज लिटरली समथिंग दैट वॉज बर्स्टिंग टू कम आउट सो दैट वॉज अ डिसीजन मेड दैट वे बट इट वॉज ओनली द फर्स्ट स्टेप दैट वॉज क्लियर टू मी इवन दैट अंटिल योर कोर्स एज वील डिस्कस लेटर वेन वी वेन यू शिफ्टेड इट इन माई माइंड फ्रॉम अ बुक टू अ न्यूज लेटर अंटिल दैट टाइम इवन दैट वॉज अन क्लियर सो ऑलवेज इट्स बीन द फर्स्ट स्टेप और रादर द नेक्स्ट स्टेप दैट हैज बीन क्लियर टू मी बियॉन्ड दैट आई कैन सी द रोड वॉट वेर इट इज गोइंग but that much clarity and just the courage to take that step which often that itself is something denied to women and and to a person who comes from a certain comfort ki ab to i am bagaira sab ho gaya ab kaun chhod ke jata hai iti high paying job into government so things like that there are obstacles even in that taking one step so those those i have managed to overcome and th- those have been decisive step yeah during the writing course i like quoting the novelist real doctor o who when speaking of writing a book says it's okay to drive by the headlights hmm. you know you can make the whole journey that exactly. way and i think that's uh, sort of my uh, philosophy to life as well or at least my expressed philosophy because i don't actually live it myself <laughs> and i don't really lead by example but the, the the philosophy being have a bias for action you know don't try to plan everything out in your head ki pehle ye hoga fir wo hoga fir wo hoga just have a bias for action just go out there do something uh, you know just just keep at it just keep doing stuff and i think that's uh, uh, what you've sort of done so well so when you sent me a note about the kind of things you could talk about i noticed these two were really interesting bullet points sir which are life lessons from engineering in the haryana hinterlands and life lessons from iim bangalore so yeah. we've kind of spoken about both of these places in general yeah. uh, but um, uh, i'm intrigued by uh, the term you use life lessons like uh, how would you kind of sum it up in terms of what were your life lessons from these two places and perhaps your lessons about yourself yeah so i think both of these places shaped me i mean rather than a uh, taking away a lesson outside of me it was things that change inside me so like i said academically coming from a very strong background i was very um, um, uh, confident about those aspects but i think my personality as a whole had not developed and to some extent it is also because 9 se 12 tak cable tv band aur khelna band aur baith ke padhai karo right so that makes your personality a bit unidimensional of course so uh, that i think i really came into my own and i blossomed in kurukshetra despite all the forces that impeded a woman from doing that on that campus but i did i i kind of developed a lot more confidence in my abilities in organizational abilities managerial abilities the leadership abilities things that uh, i could pull together um, juniors of college inspire them and motivate them to achieve a goal organize a festival or whatever it was publish a magazine so i think for Kur- me kurukshetra the biggest thing i learned from my engineering was not engineering but it was this stuff so for me it was a personality development course plus plus that was my engineering so that was the not a lesson but the way it changed me and then i think in i am there was a lot of humility that came with it because like i said patthar feko topper pe ko lagega so that is the environment you are in and uh, i remember in ahmedabad we used to actually live behind iim ahmedabad campus and wahan uh, pe we were like young students aur aise afwa hoti thi ki pata hai iim ke bacche raat ko 2 ghanta sote hain pata hai wo kitna padhai karte hain and then suddenly i am on that side and i'm like mere ko to neend aati hai mai kaise karu so so and and then you genuinely see these people who are way above average like they are another breed the amount of discipline they have the kind of academic uh, drive in them 
and then you realize that oh i've always thought of myself as an academically accomplished person but i actually don't share this drive so um, there were things that to be inspired from there were also a lot of lessons of what not to do with life so there's lot of um, um, and i'm sure my i am peers who might be listening will agree with some parts of this there's a lot of uh, cutthroat competition materialism a lot of uh, the life as a zero sum game that's a huge thing that's kind of drilled into you by the i am culture that you know, there is a my um, campus mein bolte the something called rg giri so there's a rg is relative grading so that's a system where you and i write one exam you score higher than me that effectively lowers my score so it's not just that you got 10 on 10 and i got 9 on 10 it's also that my 9 becomes 8.5 because you got 10 it's like that so i mean suppose you so so the higher you score as my peer the worse it is for me that feels like such a toxic system because right? then you're not trying to become good you're trying to be better than others which yeah. is yeah. just sounds so ugly to me exactly and it also it also um, uh, initiates this crab mentality right like your welfare is worse for me so our incentives are aligned so that i want you to do worse in life i want to pull you down if i see you succeeding i want to put hurdles in your path so it it also kind of conditions you in a very toxic kind of mindset i was luckily never able to learn any of those tricks but i did see a lot of that like it was it was sometimes tragic to the extent that people had imbibed these values and were able to live them like um i don't know if this will be worth airing but uh, there was a, a story that comes to mind which is there was this group of topper guys okay there there would be class projects and jesse bolte the project group of 5 there would be these guys who will मेक आई कॉन्टैक्ट अक्रॉस द क्लास रूम एंड वो अगले मतलब हाफ अ सेकेंड में ग्रुप बन चुका होता था उनका कि हम टॉपर्स हैं वी आर गोन टू स्टिक टूगेदर बिकॉज आर ग्रुप विल डू द बेस्ट एंड देन देर फॉर आर जी गिरी दर्स विल डू वर्स ऑफ एंड वील बी द बेस्ट फाइन टू मेक ग्रुप्स विद योर फ्रेंड्स बट देर वॉज अ लेंस टू इट इट वॉज नॉट अ लेंस ऑफ कंपेटेबिलिटी और फ्रेंडशिप इट वॉज अ लेंस ऑफ सक्सेस हु इज गोन टू हेल्प मी सक्सीड द मोस्ट एंड देन देर वर दीज स्टूडेंट्स हु वुड इनएविटेबली ऑलवेज बी लेफ्ट बिहाइंड एट द एंड and who would not be accepted in any of the groups and it was often very heartbreaking they would send emails later on the class group ke koi group mein jagah hai kya i am still looking and it was always the same kids so same students i remember there was one classmate batchmate he was uh, uh, differently able and he was always one of the last to be picked and then i remember one course we had was business law and in which it was all about legal stuff and i used to doze off the second that professor would start talking but um usme yahi hua group bana the professor said groups of x mm-hmm. and immediately this i was sitting right behind one of the topper kids jo jinka eye contact mein group ban jata tha and that guy turns to his fellow uh, uh, topper guy and he says ki is group mein usko lete hain the the student who was always left behind because wo barrister tha pehle तो इसमें हमें उसके होने से एडवांटेज होगा एंड आई जस्ट आई जस्ट फेल सो ई यू एट दैट टाइम आई लाइक कि यार दिस इज वन गाय यू सिस्टमिकली ऑलवेज लीव बिहाइंड इवन आई एम गिल्टी ऑफ इट टू सम एक्सटेंट बिकॉज आई एम मेकिंग फ्रेंड्स विद माय ग्रुप्स विद माय फ्रेंड्स एंड दिस गाय इज बीइंग लेफ्ट बिहाइंड बाय ऑल ऑफ अस एज अ ग्रुप एवरी टाइम ईयर आफ्टर ईयर सब्जेक्ट आफ्टर सब्जेक्ट क्लास आफ्टर क्लास एंड दिस वन टाइम बिकॉज ही इज यूजफुल टू यू यू इमिजिएटली वॉन्ट टू गो गेट हिम फर्स्ट बिकॉज you know that you are all you all are iitians and you don't have that legal background so for me it was very these were lessons of what not to do with life also i mean i and, and i remember uh, a few years later i met a batchmate who was a good friend on campus and and many of my batchmates have gone on to do extremely well for themselves and a lot of well deserved success many are entrepreneurs of unicorn startups today and people have a uh, bungalows with indoor heated pools i'm told <laughs> to which i'm never invited but matlab people have done really well for themselves i i've i've consulted a therapist myself and one of the things my therapist has also told me is that because i live in gurgaon she said that lot of people who consult me in gurgaon are from these very high net worth backgrounds and and many of them are deeply depressed today because they find no purpose in what they are doing because they've spent so many years of their life chasing material wealth and money so nothing against people who who do want money i think it's a very uh, yeah, you can do a lot of good for the world when you have a lot of money but also one of the things that i am taught me about what not to do is that chase i i, I saw it very early and i figured out very early that that's not the path for me 
so that way it kind of strongly molded the person i am yeah the zero sum mentality is 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 weird to me because the real world is a positive something right exactly. so you would imagine ki mba sikha rahe hai to wo mentality sikhayenge incentives alag honge exactly. but if if th- this sounds like incredibly uh, toxic to me and on the point of money and happiness uh, and again if i misremember please for, uh, forgive me but i think arthur brooks said uh, once uh, written an essay on this where he pointed out that uh, when people surveyed the happiness of the usa he was talking about the, uh, he was talking about america when people surveyed the happiness of the usa and i think it was of men in usa if i remember correctly but it certainly applies uh, in my mind uh, best there what they found was that you have this curve where you go gradually downwards in terms of happiness until your mid 40s or late 40s and then you suddenly start becoming much happier and his explanation for this is that that is around the time you realize that all your life you felt you behaved as if your happiness is contingent on money hmm. and by that time mid 40s late 40s you've made all the money in the world and you haven't been happy yeah. and then you realize this is not where happiness lies hmm. and it lies wherever then is for uh, people to define it for themselves where happiness lies but at least they know what not to do as you said hmm. and then they turn elsewhere and then true happiness uh, kind of c- comes and i am of course in my late 40s but i've never really made much money ye heated indoor swimming pool mere paas hota to main garibon pe baat deta main kya karunga heated indoor <laughs> swimming pool ka but uh, b- but yeah i mean so that's that's um, again the fact that there's no correlation between money and happiness to yeah. po to pata hi hai wo to but it, it, it's kind of sad if these sort of mindsets are uh, being uh, propagated there. so after you finished your mba yeah to w- you know you eventually landed up in the civil services hmm. but take me through that journey of your deciding ki kya karna hai aur wahan pe kyu gaye like did you decide while doing your mba that uh, you know you, you want to go for the civil services or was the civil services always an attractive option you know uh, like when i was growing up it was always you know doctor medical to hai hi but uh, ias ka exam though that is a you know the biggest prestige and obviously hmm. i grew up in the 70s and 80s where you know the state was all powerful so even more so there yeah. private sector to zyada tha hi nahi and me being a rebel and my father already being uh, in the ias i was like mujhe nahi karna main to writer banunga main attic mein staff karunga hmm. and uh, th- then i will uh, make a lot of money and have an indoor swimming pool when my <laughs> books do well none of that happened but so what was your uh, sort of uh, uh, journey like in that regard या सो यू पी एस सी करना है वॉज नेवर टारगेट इन लाइफ के ये तो करना ही है और इवन दैट अर्ली प्रेस्टीज दैट यू स्पोक अबाउट हैड काइंड ऑफ आई थिंक ड्विंडल डब इट बाय द टू थाउजेंड लेट टू थाउजेंड इज वेन आई फिनिश माई एम बी ए एंड एट दैट टाइम द टू डन थिंग वॉज गोल्डमैन सैक्स मे किन जी बी सी जी इन मे जाओ डे जीरो प्लेसमेंट दैट वॉज अ थिंग इन आई एम के दे वॉज अ प्लेसमेंट सीजन एंड डे जीरो इज वेन द बेस्ट फॉर्म विद द बेस्ट मनी एंड द इंटरनेशनल पोस्टिंग विल कम देन डे वन में थोड़ा सा देसी फॉर्म विल कम देन डे टू थ्री पे आयो तो यू आर द leftovers that was the it was a very strong hierarchy like that and if there was a summer placement at the end of one one year uh, first semester actually at the end of the first trimester itself there was a summer placement for the uh, end of one year wala summer break mein jaake aap do mahina internship karte ho to wo internship mein where you got placed kind of seals your fate in terms of where your life will head is at least that was a popular notion and also that also seals how your peers see you so your peers are also all trained to see you as ye day zero person hai ye day one person hai ye day two person hai and that's the caste system in which we will also make our friendships now like i said you know wo jo i contact groups ban raha wo day zero ke ladkon ke beech mein ban raha hai aap kaun si thi this was interesting because of my 9.9 cgp you know i got an interview call from pretty much every company that was coming on day 0 so i must have given 20 interviews in one day it is a crazy process like there are these people with headsets walking all around ke mahima vashishth is out of the mckinsey interview now she is next heading towards first floor goldman sachs ke room mein and like you are being shunted from room to room and for me it was all very blinding and i was very thrown by it i was very uh, i mean i was totally in, out of out of place so i was one of those people who was seen as the biggest promising candidates at the beginning of that day and by the end of that day i had failed all the interviews like 20 interviews in a row i had failed i mean you can imagine self esteem ka niche patal log mein jaake girti hai insaan ki ke like at the beginning people are seeing you as the rising star of tomorrow and at the end they are like iski taraf dekho mat zyada they didn't deserve you <laughs> 
but <laughs> no so uh, so by the time i was i was like hey, do, i mean don't you look at her she is a very <laughs> panati is ki taraf dekhoge tumhare marks kam ho jayenge tumhare chances kam ho jayenge so i got placed on what was called day 0.5 they came up with a new thing which was ki, like the second day ki subah subah there were some leftover indian firms but were offering international posting so i got into icici in london so icici was a very tame compared to all the formidable brands that came the day before but uh, but it was a posting in london so it was so i often would say that i am the poorest intern living in london because i literally had to mouth existence given the uh, daily uh, allowance i was getting from them but uh, my peers who were all other in 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 the fancy firms of london were all living it up while i was like ye sandwich khaya jaye ke na khaya jaye 2 pound ka hai always converting to rupees in my head but yeah so it was like a semi respectable post uh, uh, internship that i got and again uh, at that time it was heartbreaking and and shattered your self esteem like i said it was very very depressing that experience but again in hindsight i think like you said you know your life would be so different if you were born in privilege i think my life would also have been very different if on that day i had cracked an interview so that that extreme string of many many failures was actually i think good in the long run because it gave me some distance from the the whole craziness that was going on in that system and and then that also kind of shaped the friends i made later and hum sab day one wale chote log apne apne friendships banate the so we would uh, and and that kind of gave me a lot more reality check of this is what real people are like there are normal people also on this campus not everyone is success crazy like, uh, and uh, so so that was uh, good so we were talking about upsc i'm sorry ha so then uh, uske baad uh, by the time the final placements ka time aaya it so happened that we were also the recession year so the subprime crisis hit in 2009 and 2008ish and 2009 was the year of my final placements so basically it was like कैंपस पे सन्नाटा डे जीरो पे चार फर्म्स आई हैं क्योंकि बाकी तो मतलब लोगों को लीमन ब्रदर्स से प्री पी पी ओ बोलते थे प्री प्लेसमेंट ऑफर कि आपने समर इंटर्नशिप इतनी अच्छी करी कि वी आर गिविंग यू अ जॉब राइट नाउ सो लोगों को लीमन ब्रदर्स से पी पी ओ आया उन्होंने पार्टियाँ दी सारा साल ऐश <laughs> किया और दैट डे दे आर रियलाइजिंग इट डजेंट एग्जिस्ट एनी मोर सो इट वॉज अ ह्यूज शॉक फॉर आर कैंपस एंड फॉर लाइक ऑल द आई एम्स वर स्ट्रगलिंग एंड प्लेसमेंट्स वर डाउन फॉर एवरीबडी and uh, for me it was uh, i i i thought theek anyway apna to hona nahi tha badi forms mein to kya hi fark padta hai but uh, for me by that time i had kind of made up my mind that i want to join a smaller firm where uh, first of all like like we said na headlight fallacy ke itna hi dikh raha hai to kya nahi karna ye dikh raha hai to finance nahi karna tha ye dikh raha tha cuz like people from investment banks would come in their placement talks and tell us with with great pride about how i used to work 22 hours a day and i slept on a couch in my office on the 36th floor in on in new york on so and so avenue and i'd be like good for you man i don't want that life for myself so finance nahi karna hai uh, itna clear tha so i was like thoda the other option is consulting jaise doctor or engineer hota hai na waise wahan pe finance or consulting hota hai so then i thought theek hai consulting mein kahin try karenge maybe in a smaller firm because like i said bade wale mein to utna chance hi nahi hai so then i was uh, i i got into this small firm which was i mean they were i think they had 13 employees at that time and they it was the first time they were hiring from iims and uh, we were brought in seven of us were hired from i am ahmedabad and bangalore by the sixth month of joining that company six of them had left seven me se and i was the only one left i think there was a lot also to do with the culture because many of my peers had prior work experience so they came with an expectation of what a company should be like how it should be run whereas this was a very small firm and it was very uh, individual driven so the founder his thoughts his philosophies were how the company operated so uh, and everyone had to basically accept that he's his way is the right way and the other way is exit so by 6th month i realized everybody else had left and they had also the firm had decided that i am people ka culture is not for us ye log bahut they have they had their own rational for why people quit and the people who quit are still friends they had their own rational for why they quit anyway i i persevered because i somehow found a middle ground where i was not accepting complete devotion either but also not 
so uncomfortable that I had to move out. Uh, it also helped being a fresher because I had no prior experience. So there was no baseline with which to compare what a working culture in a professional organization should be. So three years I stayed in that firm. And uh, my client was State Bank of India. I can say that was now made public. Uh, so there was a uh, project we were doing there called Citizen SBI, which was how do you, there, were, there are I think two lakh employees in State Bank of India and how do you make them all feel like citizens of State Bank of India? How do you make them think like contributors, you know, not just like people clocking in and clocking out, but find purpose in their work and therefore help communities around them. So um, great idea. And I did, a, I was in what they call the business modeling team, which meant I used to travel across the country and take pilot projects in various communities with the SBI branch at the center. So I traveled to uh, some tapioca farmers in Salem, uh, some petni sari weavers in Nasik, some uh, stone carvers in Konark in Odisha. So across the country, I would travel to these communities, talk to these people, figure out what is their value chain, where is the gap, can it be filled with finance or can it be filled with skill development. So like stone carvers, for example, their big problem is that all the men have migrated to Rajasthan for uh, carving and all the women or unskilled people are left behind and they have to manage somehow and there's a lot of problems, migration, poverty. Yes, sir. So there was a skill development initiative needed there. So SBI did a partnership with Nabard and Bula and Koti, okay, we'll do this here. And, and I mean, there were different inputs that were given, but State Bank kind of was for the first time thinking from the perspective of the community. So it was not a sales, typical sales methodology of the calls we get, na, madam card lelo, madam loan lelo. So it wasn't like that. So, I mean, I got to see a glimpse of real India, right, for the first time. So far, I've only seen this IIT, IIM ka posh world and their own first world problems. So for the first time, I'm seeing what real India looks like, what the problems of real people of India are. And I realized that just a financial institution has this immense pro uh, potential to change their lives. And I would see that there's like legitimate uh, tangible transformation happening in their lives and their quality of living in their income because of small, small initiatives that we made like a training program. Zarasa. To us, it's nothing. And to them, it's the difference between two very different standards of living. And so my mom had and dad had mentioned UPSC before after MBA or around that time. But uh, I had kind of dismissed it at that time as, you know, like you said, old world thinking, that in your time, the government is And the joke was that somebody from our campus got placed in McKenzie and uh, he told his father and father said, what was Punjab National Bank hire nahi kar raha tha. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that was a joke that our parents' generation doesn't understand what uh, our aspirations are. So, so we were kind of all trained to ignore it. So UPSC, ka, they had put it on the table, but I had never given it much thought until I saw this experience. I had this experience. And then I realized that my dad would tell me that he was also a public sector banker and how the collector would hold meetings of 20 bankers, 20 banks in front of him or her and tell them that you will do this you will do that you will give community a loan and you will help in this thing. If there is a disaster, you will do funding in relief. So like, then I realized that, oh my God, there is an organization behind these financial institutions which has even more of a transformative power. So for me, that was the point where I suddenly realized that, you know, this is something worth trying at least. I was told when I started applying that, Bahut lamma process hota. It is, UPSC is a very long, one year long exam and uh, very few people clear it. And I was working already. Like people sit at home for years and years and prepare for it and go to coaching classes and live away from home in coaching centers. But and I here I'm like doing a full time job traveling around the place and also thinking that UPSC kar lenge. So reality check shuru se tha. Many people have told me that bahut kam chance hai. But try kar lo kya harz hai. Ek baar try kar lena nahi hoga. Agle saal achche se de dena. So that was the attitude going in. And so the format of UPSC for those who don't know, I'll just explain is one there is a, a multiple choice screening test which happens in my time it used to happen somewhere around June-ish. Then around uh, August, September, mein uska result aega. October, November, mein there'll be a mains exam. Mains exam is nine written papers of three hours each. I don't want to go into details of what all, but general studies, sele uh, selective subjects, language subjects, kar kar ke, now paper, 27 ke exams over a week or two weeks. 
एंड वो क्लियर हुआ तो स्क्रीनिंग क्लियर हुआ तो मेंस और मेंस क्लियर हुआ तो नेक्स्ट ईयर अराउंड द सेम टाइम मार्च वगैरह में आपका इंटरव्यू कॉल और फिर वो भी क्लियर हुआ तो यू आर इन अदरवाइज अगले जून में फिर से स्क्रीनिंग लिखो सो दैट्स द साइकिल विच मैनी पीपल आर इन एंड ऑफ एन एस्पिरेंट्स एंड ऑफ स्पेंडिंग फाइव सिक्स सेवन ईयर्स इन दैट साइकिल सो फॉर मी इट वॉज अ वेरी क्लियर थिंग कि आई डेंट वॉन्ट टू राइट इट अगेन एंड अगेन आई फेल्ड लाइक यार दीज आर माई फॉर्मेटिव यूथ ईयर्स आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू स्पेंड दैम प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर सम एग्जाम दैट नो बडी गेट्स थ्रू आई गोट टू गिव इट वन शॉट हुआ तो हुआ नहीं हुआ तो थैंक यू बाय बाय सो लकीली फॉर मी मैंने कुछ प्रिपेयर नहीं किया था बट उस साल देर वॉज अ थिंग इंट्रोड्यूस कॉल सी सैट विच इज सिविल सर्विसेज एप्टीट्यूड टेस्ट विच इज अ कैट का बच्चा टेस्ट सो बिकॉज मैंने कैट किया हुआ था सो दैट एग्जाम वॉज वेरी ईजी फॉर मी एंड आई सेल्ड थ्रू एंड लेटर इफ यू लुक बैक अराउंड दैट टाइम टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व देर लॉड ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट दैट दिस सी सैट गिवज एन एडवांटेज टू पीपल लाइक मी एसेंशली पीपल हु हैव हैड द प्रिवलेज ऑफ कोचिंग इन कैट एंड एम बी ए एंड ऑल दैट एंड इंजीनियर्स बिकॉज most of indian students don't have that and for them cracking a la- logical aptitude data reasoning exam is is much harder and so anyway there was a whole protest about that but i was in that lucky year which skimmed through because of that so wo ho gaya and then i got a call for uh, my mains that was around august and i was like yeah do mahine mein exam hai and these are these 27 hours of paper that i have to write with i have zero knowledge right now i mean you have no need to know things like public administration constitution of india freedom struggle of india wo sab was the farthest things from my mind i was living a very different life so i th- thought ke do mahina i'll just take sabbatical and again thankfully small company very personalized culture so i told my boss that aisa aisa hua i have gotten through this exam i want to give it one serious attempt nahi hua to i'm coming back to you can i take two months off so they were kind enough to say ha theek hai jao ji lo apni zindagi so i came to delhi and i, uh, I so i used to work in bombay by the way all this three years uh, so i came to delhi and ghar pe baith ke padhai badhai shuru kari thoda bahut pata kiya coaching centers and people are like this was in 2011 एंड पीपल आर लाइक अच्छा आपको टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन की प्रिपरेशन कर दिया है ना आई आई ये एनरोलमेंट नहीं मुझे दो महीने बाद लेवेंथ के एग्जाम की लाइक हो ही नहीं सकता मैडम लाइक पीपल वर जस्ट ऑन माई फेस टोल मी कि आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू स्टील योर मनी एंड देन गिव यू फॉल्स होप नहीं हो सकता एंड देन सम पीपल डिड मेक एफर्ट्स टू स्टील माई मनी एंड सेड एक लाख रुपया दे दो कर देंगे सो इधर वे कुछ नहीं चल रहा था देन दे आई फाउंड आउट देर वॉज दिस group circle of fellow aspirants all of them studying together and doing group study somewhere in noida so i started roz apna scooty utha ke subah ghar se wahan gaye do teen ghanta suna baith ke ki kya baatein chal rahi hain acha mahatma gandhi champaran satyagraha bhi ye baatein chal rahi hain chalo thoda bahut sun liya and then i mean get so take borrow notes from people and someone gave a photocopy of some coaching class ka notes and wo sab pad liya uh, the two subjects i had to take i chose public administration and sociology which was a very idealistic move on my part because i thought ki uh, i i ideally could have taken an engineering or logical reasoning subject which would have given me an edge but i was like ke dekho hona to hai nahi to why waste reading time reading stuff that i already know let me learn something new about the country this is a good opportunity to do that i'll go back to my job with some value added so uh, that's why i took these two subjects and then i took one either udhar se photocopy notes police act of 1861 mein kya hua tha usme ye uske flaws kya hain aur future mein kya reforms are necessary so and so committee is saal mein baith ke unke ye recommendations the over 200 years all the recommendations that have been given and ignored <laughs> by government of india sab pada things like that are very very hardcore stuff which uh, normal people engineers mbas don't know this stuff right like i didn't so wo sab i got uh, very familiarized with all that i think my writing really helped because i my writing skills are decent and i'm able to express complicated thoughts process them into simpler words and churn out a very understandable uh, comprehensible for uh, presentation of it so that really helped i think with me that was my biggest strength so somehow i cleared mains and that was very shocking to everyone including myself ki iska kaise ho gaya ye to abhi to aayi thi <laughs> and then uh, i i remember i had had a minor surgery on my leg and i was like uh, wo wo kharke i was bedridden and 
व्हील चेयर चल रही थी एक हफ्ते तक एंड आई वॉज तब खबर आई दैट यू हैव क्लियर्ड एंड आई वॉज लाइक के डेज देन आई सेड अच्छा एंड देन आई पास डाउट अगेन बिकॉज आई वॉज अंडर लॉड ऑफ पेन मेडिकेशन एंड देन आई वो कब बना आई लाइक आई हैड दिस वियर ड्रीम एंड माई पेरेंट्स आर लाइक नहीं सही में हुआ है ड्रीम अच्छा सो देन विद इन अ मंथ आई हैड दैट इंटरव्यू सो आई टुक थोड़ा एक्सटेंशन ऑफ दैट लीव फॉर माई सर्जरी एंड gave the interview and uh, it was a very i mean luckily i had heard all these horror stories about stress interviews and all wo bahut interview aur utke beech mein chala jata hai tum pe chillane lagta hai ye sab aisa kuch nahi hua they were very civil and nice and we had a good conversation about my academics my iim experience going to germany ye sab baatein baatein hui thoda bahut aaj ke newspaper se ye padha wo cheez ka reform batao uske bare mein tumhara some textbook questions that are there for the most part i did well i thought and actually i did quite well because ultimately i cleared it and when they the mark sheet came i realized that i had only just made it through the mains exam with a very small margin but my interview went really exceedingly well which is why i finally made it to the cut off so interview mein i might have might have been among the toppers in the country but because mains was <laughs> very bare minimum passable marks so my rank was i think some 601 or something and there's only 1000 Uh, civil servant selected in a year out of by the way 6 lakh applicants in my year so i was selected and i got into this animal called the indian information service which i had never heard about nobody's heard about it let's be honest i'll be, give one toffee to any listener of seen and the unseen who writes back saying maine mujhe pata tha is service ke bare mein aap kitne toffee doge mere listeners ko kafi kuch pata hai <laughs> especially those who've done my course and rewritten that press release i used to give you guys to rewrite oh, from yeah. the indian information services oh, itself i'm so grateful it wasn't one of my press releases that you were giving as an example of bad writing was well, really so bad no i mean just for the benefit of my listeners uh, to g- give an example of what a bad sentence is and what a bad paragraph is i take ex- uh, uh, you know in my course i take examples from a particular press release written by the ministry of information and broadcasting and it so happens that you also worked there and wrote yeah. press releases for them <laughs> i did i did and when you gave us that assignment i was like लिंक खोलो जल्दी से मेरी तो नहीं है कहीं प्रेस रिलीज विच इज बिंग शेयर्ड एज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ बैड राइटिंग एंड पीपल आर गोइंग टू री राइट इट एंड लकीली इट वॉज एंड इट वॉज अ वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ बैड राइटिंग आई हैव टू से सो हाँ सो आई गॉड इन टू दिस सर्विस एंड देन इट वॉज के आर हुआ तो है नहीं आई एस क्या फ़र्क पड़ता है रहने देते हैं जाने देते हैं एंड देन पीपल एडवाइस किए नहीं देखो ट्राई तो कर लो एक बार ज्वाइन तो कर लो लेट सी नहीं हुआ तो छोड़ देना एंड हो गया इफ यू इफ यू फाइंड इट गुड इट कैन बी life changing which it obviously is and the i i did a little bit little bit of digging into it and found out what what the service does in the first place ye hota kya hai and i thought that if basically it's a service that handles all the um, media of the government which is doordarshan news all india radio davp which was which is an organization now called i think boc which is now an organization which does all this chapoing of government ads which you see all over a bit of community radio or was of grassroots communication also and press releases of course pib so press information bureau is the uh, pr agency of government of india in a way uh, and that's the agency which organizes press conferences with ministers and uh, you write press releases for your ministry and that's how the media gets to know what your ministry or what the government is doing so i was like a ek potential one thing that really attracted me for this service was that uh, you know making people aware of their rights the grassroots communication which was a very small part of it was the one that attracted me the most because i felt like as an as an indian i don't know what are the schemes that the government has and of course i'm privileged enough to not need many of those benefits also but even people who do need those benefits genuinely are often not aware that these are the things that are our rights and we can demand these rights from the government ke hame ghar mein शौचालय चाहिए होना चाहिए वी नीड इट वी वॉन्ट इट इट इज़ आर राइट समथिंग लाइक दिस पीपल डोंट हैव दी अवेयरनेस टू इवन लेट अलोन डिमांड द एजेंसी टू डिमांड द राइट नॉट इवन द अवेयरनेस टू नो द राइट सो आई फॉर मी दैट वॉज द बिग हुक एंड अट्रैक्शन ऑफ दिस सर्विस दैट आई कैन जनरेट पब्लिक अवेयरनेस अबाउट राइट्स ऑफ सिटीजन्स एंड सो आई थॉट ठीक है कर लेते हैं ज्वाइन एंड दैट्स हाउ आई गॉट इन द लॉन्ग आंसर टू योर शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन अबाउट हाउ यू पी एस सी हैपन 
I mean, I wouldn't call it a long answer because it's 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 a long journey. I mean, the journey is like that. What do you do? So, how was it in the civil services? Like, once you're actually in yeah. uh, the machinery, you know, did you feel frustrated that it's not making as much of a difference as it can, or did you feel proud of the difference that you were making? And what is it that then prompted you to kind of look elsewhere and eventually kind of uh, quit the civil services? Ha! Huh, so this is another very long story. So basically, I get in um, September of two thousand twelve is when the training started. So first, you have to do a three month foundational course training, which every service has to do. And after that, depending on what service you are, you do a specialized training. So there's IAS, IFS, IPS. Un sab ki apni apni academy hai, apni apni training ho rahi hai. But shuru me everyone congregates in one academy. Used to congregate in one academy, which was the Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy in Masuri. Now, as the batch that was when the batch sizes were two hundred, three hundred people, your dad's time maybe. Now, as the batch sizes have grown, they are not able to fit everyone in Masuri. IAS, IPS, IFS, वहाँ जाएंगे पहाड़ में पढ़ने, बाकी लोग जहाँ जहाँ गिरेंगे वहाँ गिरेंगे. तो I fell in Nagpur. There is a academy called National Academy of Direct Taxes, which is the specialized academy for IRS. Uh, income tax uh, service and वहाँ uh, पे they used to do foundation course for some other leftover services which included mine uh, and lot of my batchmates were from forest service which was very interesting because they have they are the only service which has a different exam all the rest of us came from one exam UPSC का um, so forest service people uh, were a lot of batchmates were from the northeast and it was a good experience that way three months we spent together and they it's very intensive you they will take you on a trek to the himalayas and then they to one bharat darshan when i travel to andaman and leh ladakh everything in one happening in one month you are traveling here to there so it was very uh, very intensive and very interesting and then uh, but yeah there was one thing that was disillusioning right from the beginning which is when i came in and i i came in with these you know naive idealistic uh, notions of the why would be the same for everyone that why is why do you join civil service to serve your country to do better for society for me that was the most obvious answer when i come in i realize that i am a very small minority the people who've come in with that perspective so a lot of people have come in for power a lot of people have come in for prestige some people have come for corruption so some people have come just for aaj ab hum unko dikhayenge jinhone hame oppress kiya and i mean at the outset obviously there is this judgmental lens which i'm already bringing in right that my way was better than their way but when you talk to people and you hear their life stories you realize that you asked me earlier about how our upbringing shapes us you know so, and that's this is a very stark example of it and i think we've discussed this before offline which is like one of my batchmates told me that he's from what is called the backward caste and wo bolta hamare gaon mein we were always treated as treated as untouchables हमारी माँ को खाना नहीं मिलता था हमको इतनी मुश्किल से बड़ा किया एंड ये कास्ट वाले लोग हमको दबाते थे और अब हम उनको दिखाएंगे अब हम उनको दबाएंगे अब मैं गांव जाऊंगा लाल बत्ती की गाड़ी में और मैं उनको दिखाऊंगा सो आई मीन लाइक आई एम सेइंग यू नो फ्रॉम अ वेरी अर्बन एंड दिस आइडियलिस्टिक माइंड सेट ऑफ ऑल इज़ गुड विद द वर्ल्ड इट सीम्स वेरी शेडी कि अरे आप यहाँ पे पावर और दबाने एक दूसरे को आए हो ये पेटी पॉलिटिक्स करने आए हो देश की सेवा करो बट वैन यू गेट टू नो देर स्टोरीज यू रियलाइज दैट well if you were born in that place you might also have grown up thinking like this so it's all logical but it's also unfortunate so there was a lot of this thing about are ias ko lal batti ki gaadi milti hame kyun nahi milti hai hum is service mein hai hame hum bhi to ye kar rahe hain hum itne senior officer hain hamara jab hum office aayenge to hamara dabba uthane ke liye ek peon aana chahiye niche hame gaadi ka darwaza koi aur kholega hum kyun kholenge hum hum desh ke civil servant hain so i mean there's a lot of that which uh, which is the overwhelming majority is it literally at that kind of comical level that i want someone to pick up my tiffin box i want someone to open the door of my car it is it is yeah those are like real very tangible um, not just benefits but reasons why people come in that i don't want a job where hoga mckenzie bahut bada karodpati par wo to khud apna darwaza kholta hai gaadi ka mera darwaza koi aur kholega aake chahe i am earning 10% over that person wow, but so so, so 
yeah but for a majority of india that is the aspiration still and uh, uh, even dowry for example is a big motivator ke dowry ka rate card hota hai aadmiyon ka aapko shayad pata hoga even in i am my ba- male batchmates would discuss it ke itn ho gaye ek crore dowry ho gayi ab i am bhi kar liye ab do crore dowry ho gayi ab iske upar civil service kar lo to soch lo kya ho jayega hai na aur fir politician ki beti se shaadi kar lo fir wahan pahunch jao baad mein mantri ban jaoge to fir life to take off kar gayi ekdam so all of these are life plans that people come in with and genuine serious life plans it's not comical to them it's very serious people live these lives and people see real value in it and uh, again from their perspective it makes a bit of sense also as unfortunate as it is for the country so yeah that's that's also where i met salil my husband because he was in income tax doing his specialized training there two years senior to me and i think uh, i was talking to him last night about what i'll tell you about how we met and i said that you know what <laughs> whether we like it or not we bonded a lot over this uh, solitude that we both felt you know that we are we are like these uh, i don't want to make it sound too dramatic but we are these people few hand picked people who you can count them on fingertips who have genuinely come here with that perspective who want to learn jo class mein sunna chahte hain ki main aage ja ke apni service mein kaise contribute karu who are not here ki chalo bhai class bunk maro ab to ho gaya so you know that clearing of upsc the big difference is there is a small group of people who see it as the beginning of their journey but there's an overwhelming majority who sees that as the culmination अब हो गई है लाइफ सेट अब हमें कुछ पढ़ने लिखने की जरूरत नहीं है कुछ मेहनत की जरूरत नहीं है दिस इज वॉट वी वर एमिंग फॉर दिस वाई वी स्लॉग्ड फॉर फाइव ईयर सेवन ईयर्स एट होम एंड फाइनली वीव मेड इट इन लाइफ एंड दिस इज इट फुल स्टॉप हो गया लाइफ का अब अब हमें आगे ऐश करनी है एन्जॉय करना है सो एज आई एम एम सॉरी आई एम श्योर आई साउंड वेरी अनग्रेटफुल टू फ्रेम ऑफ लुकिंग एट इट यू नो की for some people it's a start for some people it's the end or you could say for some people it's a means to an end you hmm. know you wanted it because you want to make india better while for some people it's an end in themselves they wanted ki gari ka darwaza bhi koi kholega correct so exactly so uh, um, uh, you know mr uh, uh, i think you interviewed mr jay prakash narayan yeah yeah so the only function where i was invited as a for felicitation because i was in bombay and there was a और कॉलेज इन पुणे फॉर गवर्नेंस का कुछ कॉलेज था एंड दे सेड कि जो बॉम्बे पुणे एरिया से जिन लोगों ने किया है उनको बुलाएंगे आई मीन बाय द वे इन रियल इंडिया लोगों के पैर दूध से धोते हैं और उनकी पूजा करते हैं उनकी आरती उतारते हैं बड़ी बड़ी रैलियां निकलती हैं कि हमारे लड़के ने क्रैक कर लिया यू पी आई वॉज ऑब्वियसली वेरी अर्बन लॉस्ट इन क्रोर्स ऑफ पीपल इन मुंबई वन ऑफ दैम सो आई वॉज सरप्राइज दैट समबडी इवन न्यू दैट आई लिव इन बॉम्बे एंड इन्वाइटेड मी टू दिस थिंग एंड ही वॉज देयर टू काइंड ऑफ वेलकम द youngsters joining the service and he gave an address there which to this day i remember he said there are three things that you need as a civil servant one is integrity which is basic he's like this is hygiene so don't go out being very proud about mai bahut imandar officer hu ye aapke liye bare minimum hai and he's like i know plenty of imandar officers jo apna dabba leke office jate hain khana khate hain aur ghar aa jate hain to kuch kaam nahi kiya to imandari ka kya ab your your gadoing of you jhanda of it of course many people don't even meet that criteria but that is for you it should be a hygiene it should not be something to feel pride in second is competence which is often very badly lacking and i want to circle back to that which is the point i sent to you about problem with upsc and therefore the country anyway second is competence that you should be able to do your job or or be willing to pick up the skills needed to do it and third was the willingness to contribute so you can be very competent and honest but still not make an effort because like i said this job is incentivized to be a culmination because you you'll meet 60 year old 65 year old 70 year old men who still remember ke 35 saal pehle maine public administration ka exam likha tha usme mere itne number aaye the agar iski jagah do mark zyada aaye hote to mera rank ye hota aur mujhe ye service mili hoti aur usme ye cadder mila hota it's insane to me that you that i have met 60 65 year old men who remember their scores from upsc i have forgotten my score but people remember and वो भी मतलब सेक्शनल एक सब्जेक्ट के वो वाले पेपर में ये मार्क आए होते तो लाइफ में ये इम्पैक्ट बिकॉज काउंटर फैक्चुअल इज सो बिग नो कि कोई बंदा मतलब कि गॉट आई यू नो इज राइटिंग प्रेस रिलीज बट ही यू नो लिटिल डिफरेंस ही इन दी आई एफ एस इन लंडन करेक्ट 
तो यही मैं बोल रही हूँ इंसेंटिव इज सो दिस इज नॉट द फॉल्ट ऑफ द पीपल इन द सिस्टम इन द फॉल्ट ऑफ द सिस्टम राइट सो यू आर बेसिकली दो मार्क्स इन दैट वन एग्जाम बेसिकली सील योर फेट टिल रिटायरमेंट सो अनलेस यू डू समथिंग टू चेंज योर ट्रेजेक्ट्री लाइक फुलिश पीपल लाइक मे डू बट अदर इफ यू डोंट डू दैट योर ट्रेजेक्ट्री इज प्रिटी मच डिसाइडेड नाउ फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ इवन योर रिटायरमेंट एज एट वॉट पोजिशन यूल रिटायर वॉट मनी यूल बी मेकिंग एट दैट एज यू कैन ऑल प्रिडिक्ट एवरीथिंग on day 1 in the academy when you are in your training so because all of that is figured out and there is there's going to be time bound promotions unless you murder somebody you might not be you will not be fired unless you are too honest <laughs> you might be fired but unless you get caught them. murdering somebody <laughs> murder someone to theek hai na isme kya hai ye to good point very good important clarification unless you get caught there was a guy who sexually harassed the girl in my batch and uh, uh, people saw it also like she was sleeping we were on a way to the trek and he came and he grabbed her from behind while she was sleeping and uh, it was sexual harassment there are eye witnesses his own batchmates know it the girl felt it woke up caught him red handed no action was taken why because kon karega itna paper work agle 20 saal tak hum log ko yahan bulaya jayega nagpur mein gawaiyan dene Even the girl is like, यार मेरा तो पूरा करियर यही बन जाएगा इसी के बारे में गवाही देना सो नाउ दैट पर्सन इज अ सिविल सर्वेंट इन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया गेटिंग इज डब्बा पिक्ड बाई समबडी सो आई मीन दैट्स द दैट्स द वे वे द सिस्टम इज डिजाइंड इट इज डिजाइंड टू फॉर फॉर यू टू बी कॉम्प्लेसेंट एंड नॉट वॉन्ट टू ग्रो नॉट वॉन्ट टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट सो दैट दैट वॉज वॉट मिस्टर जयप्रकाश नारायण हेड सेट दो थ्री थिंग्स विच आई still remember to this day that model of his and i often look at people from that lens also and i find that one of the three or sometimes many more than one of the three are lacking in many many officers sadly me yeah, jp is one of the wisest people i met i did a great episode with him yeah. episode 149 and just one of the wisest people but the question i'd therefore throw it you and i i don't remember if i've asked him this but perhaps i will next time but the question i'd throw it you then is that okay agreed that these are basic things that mm. you need integrity you need to build the ability and the skill and you need to have the willingness but all of these in my view depend on incentives if mm. the if the system is designed well Correct. if it is structurally what it should be then all three of these will flow automatically into every single person because you'll be incentivized to do uh, to be that way yeah. and right now it clearly isn't like a there is too much power which you know your incentives are therefore for rent seeking for corruption for using that power for your own benefit there is too little accountability to kind of stop that and these are just very broad observations i'm making from the outside but having actually been an insider within the system and thought about it the way you have you know what would you say are the fundamental structural things that are wrong with the system the way it is and uh, you know what are the what are the key things you would change in it if you could Yeah, so I didn't stay long enough in the system to do uh, an analysis beyond what I have so far. But I'll tell you what I have so far. First step itself is the exam is wrong. One exam for a uh, twenty-three or something services, right? So you are all writing the same exam. All of you have the same dream, which is I S. I S. Collector बनना है लाल बत्ती गांव में जाके माई बाप बनेंगे लोग हमारे पैर पकड़ेंगे हम उनको रिलीफ देंगे और एंड फॉर वेरियस अदर थिंग समबडी वॉन्ट्स टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट एज अ कलेक्टर समबडी वॉन्ट्स टू हैव द डब्बा पिक एज अ कलेक्टर डोर्स ओपन बट फॉर वेरियस रीजन एवरी वन वॉन्ट्स आई एस राइट और सम पीपल वॉन्ट आई एफ एस विच इज फॉर लंडन में वाइन पियेंगे तो अगेन नॉट टू बी लिटल पीपल्स ड्राइवर्स दे आर genuine very good civil servants i know who have great reasons for wanting these things i was one of them i wanted is for that reason contribution but you have these 25 other services which nobody else is thinking about which all of these people who want one service are going to fall into one of those buckets so shuru mein hi us job mein ek insaan aa raha hai jise wo job chahiye hi nahi thi for whom that job was never a dream it was never a priority second because it was never a dream then not something that they wanted they are often also not suited for that job so you will have all sorts of people randomly falling in all different buckets and it's a lot 
of uh, chance right on that day like i know a senior of mine who likes to say ke us din examiner ghar pe jhagda karke aaya tha aur uski gobi kacchi bani thi aur uski upar fan nahi chal raha isliye tumhare marks kam aa gaye kyunki wo gusse mein usne check kiya tumhara paper aur tumhare dusre peer ka tum usne kisi tumhare peer ne ganda paper likha but uska exam paper went to an evaluator who was in a great mood sitting in air conditioned room eating a pizza so he is happy and he gave good marks so it's a very very luck based system right which is fair theek hai it's a large scale exam there will be an element of luck like you said in every thing in life there is but you have this luck based system say people randomly falling in random buckets right and so now an accountant falls in the bucket of police officer where a person who didn't want that job is not is not designed for that job physically mentally uh, and is just not geared up for the requirements of being a police officer is randomly put in that role now uh, there were people in my service who didn't know what email is and they are now supposed to communicate for government of india like i used to literally after hours teach extra classes to my peers ke chalo bhaiyon behno thodi baith jao ek email sikha deti hu aapko ek cheez hoti hai kyunki you are going to go and and handle communication for this country as my contribution in this at this stage i can't do much but at least i can educate my peers about this something so these are people who never wanted to write who have no interest to this day in writing in communicating but i was luckily someone who had a communication mindset who fell accidentally in this bucket but plenty of people who had no inclination or desire to do this with their lives have fallen into this bucket so th- that's why i said the forest service peers were a great uh, experience for me because they were people who wanted forest service you know they were zoology biology graduates they were people from the northeast who had grown up in forests and knew that economy of a forest how that value chain works how those communities function what is the importance of protecting wildlife what is a difference between a sandalwood tree and a neem tree which person like me has no idea but i will never accidentally fall in the forest bucket because i didn't write that exam they have fallen into that bucket because they consciously chose to write that exam so the first thing that i think this country needs to change big time is have separate exams for each as service if you are a person who wants to do asset liability taxation you should write the irs exam if you're an english graduate then don't write that irs exam you're not suited for it you don't even want to do it you won't be happy doing it and you'll do a bad job so that's the th- that's number 1 to me biggest flaw, flaw is this one gateway for multiple entries and which is why people other than ias usme bhi log dukhi hain but other than ias zyada tar log are spending their life in grief and what ifs what if i had got two more marks more in geography paper then i would be there not here and it's it's unfair to that office that a person who has no inclination of being there who doesn't take pride in that office and who doesn't take the potential of that office and the responsibilities of that office seriously is sitting in that office for the next 30 years mind you with no way of moving away skipping forward to the reason i quit was also this because i would see seniors who were 30 years 35 years senior to me and still talking about marks there was a, i remember ek inb secretary ka farewell tha this is the other thing ke secretary ias banenge so uh, uh, an iis person who has spent their life in the inb ministry will never rise to the secretary of that ministry the secretary will be someone who's come from rural development agriculture ministry so generalist over specialist always correct so it's not even about that's not the lens the lens is is over everything right so that supremacy that lobby has been very tightly controlled and will probably not change in our lifetimes even i have low hopes but that needs to change you need to have people who are specialists working in those roles and rising to the top in those roles so that they know the issues at the bottom anyway so this inb secretary who was an is was retiring and i was one of the officers in in the ministry so i was called for the farewell to so farewell lunch wagera hua and then sir was asked to make a speech and in his speech he was basically like who well, starts with those words of inspiration the random stuff but a uh, usual stuff but then ultimately after a while i realized this is a consolation speech he is giving us <laughs> because he is telling us ke you should have pride in what you do you should not take it to heart that you didn't make it and i was like make it where for a second and then i realized he is talking still about oh tumhare wahan pe marks nahi aaye the acche to isliye abhi sadmi ko apne retirement ke din pe bhi wahi marks yaad aa rahe hain and even as an is he is giving us 
consolation and i see my seniors with their heads hanging taking that consolation and thinking ha hamare sath hua to bahut bura but you are right maybe we should take heart in this so i mean the people who are living with such deep regret should not be in these offices they are doing an injustice a disservice to the office and so i would see that i mean i tried to tried a lot to make change happen tried a lot to reform things but then reform would happen when it would come from the top like 2014 modi government comes and says social media karna hai to suddenly sabko karna hai usse pehle i was putting proposal by proposal that we should have a more active presence on social media nothing no change ye tum bachcho ka kuch khel hai we are not interested you young youngsters only know we don't know what this is and fair point you don't know but that doesn't that's not a good enough reason to not do something that is useful for the service for the country so but then when it came from the top it happened and with the overnight everyone was on twitter so that's when i realized ki yaar i'm just spending a lot of my uh, productive years and energy and effort and passion into just pushing up against a wall that's not going to move because of my push so the job i was also in um, after my training ended i was uh, around that time was may 2014 and uh, during my training itself i had done these on the job training rotations and in dd news i had uh, launched the campaign on sustainable urban transport like from scratch i read up on the subject i uh, went and interviewed experts and i would take a camera team with me to shoot their interviews and then i got funding from uh, allocated from dd news to ke ye karenge char hafte ka campaign i personally got like rahul bose ko फोन कर को आके उसका कहीं से मैनेजर का नंबर ढूंढ के गॉट हेम एज आर होस्ट फॉर द शो गॉट ऑल दीज एक्सपर्ट्स फ्रॉम वेरियस फील्ड्स टॉकिंग अबाउट नॉन मोटराइज ट्रांसपोर्ट नीड फॉर बाइसिकल ट्रैक्स ऑन आर रोड्स नीड फॉर मोर बसेज इंस्टेड ऑफ मोर मेट्रोज हाउ हाईवेज आर नॉट गोइंग टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ ट्रैफिक जैम्स बिकॉज दैट इज लाइक ट्राइंग टू पुट आउट अ फायर विद पेट्रोल सो ऑल ऑफ दीज कॉन्सेप्ट विच आर नॉट ऑब्वियस to most of us i educated myself on them and then i worked on designing a campaign and that caught the eye of one of my seniors who was once the new government came in into 2014 he was posted in the pmo so he said that i want these two three young officers in my team so i was one of those people hand picked for this thing and then i got uh, posted in pib in prime minister's office so uh, basically handling pmo's publicity for pib so those press releases i would write would be श्री नरेंद्र मोदी वेंट टुडे टू मेडिसन स्क्वायर गार्डन एंड डिलीवर्ड एन एड्रेस एंड ये वो तो इट वॉज अ ऑब्वियसली वेरी वेरी प्रेस्टिजियस जॉब एंड आर्ग्यूबली द बेस्ट जॉब यू कैन हैव एक्चुअली द बेस्ट जॉब यू कैन हैव एट दैट एज एंड स्टेज ऑफ योर करियर इन दैट सर्विस वॉज वॉट आई गॉट राइट आउट ऑफ अकेडमी एक्चुअली आई वॉज इन अलाउड टू फिनिश अकेडमी दिस एड वी आर पिकिंग यू आउट ऑफ द प्रोसेस करने तो बाकी ट्रेनिंग पूरी तुम आ जाओ बाहर तो आई वॉज पुल्ड आउट ऑफ द अकेडमी मिडल ऑफ माई ट्रेनिंग एंड picked up for this was a huge honor obviously very very prestigious and but over time what started happening was that i we we used to have this very hectic lifestyle you know get up at 4 am 3 am kyunki 4 am tak office pahunchna hota hai and then you make a media report for the prime minister ke subah jab wo uthenge to wo kitni akhbar ek insaan padhega unke paas time nahi hai so i would read 20 newspapers hindi english vernacular put together news that is being written about the government about the prime minister about so and so ministry about yesterday's event that happened what people are saying about his speech things like that like make a full digest that goes to the pm and with their morning chai the prime minister re- reads this so this has been happening forever it's not new to this government but i was like in that, no, uh, so that it's, a, it's a physical digest of everything no it's a, like a it's a word document you write like uh-huh, 20 and pages and then they print it out ha huh, and then they print it out and serve it to him with his morning oh, so you got to be there at 4 in the morning do it doing this yeah yeah so if by the time he wakes up it has to be ready so that was like a very and and shift based system so yeah, there is that morning shift then there's a day shift and then there's a evening shift and then with this pm he did a lot of international travel so sometimes you're up at 2 am tweeting about something because he's talking in madison square garden right did you write his tweets not his tweets pib pib tweets Haan, so p and pib underscore india jo handle hai mm-hmm. us par se i was not in the pm i was in pib handling pm of publicity right, so right, right. some distance was there <laughs> for better or for worse i had that job and so that job i the the uh, analogy i use is like uh, you know uh, if you had a nuclear power button nuclear bomb ka button and you had to pick a person to be in charge of that button you would pick probably the best person you can think of the most competent person but think about now their life what is their job description it is very high stress 
there is no scope to make a mistake there has to be immediate action to any issues that come up but ultimately they're just sitting and looking at a button right so <laughs> their their life is going to be boring no i would love that job because i would decide mentally andar se ki i'm never pressing the button ha to no, better off hai matlab but like ki, it's like you know sometimes dekho. the button get pressed then you have to quickly unpress it some something like like there is quick mm-hmm. action required on multiple fronts mm-hmm. so it's it's a busy job it's not a vela job ke baith ke kitab pad rahe ho it is a job which is hectic but it has the ultimate nuance of it is that you are in charge of not letting disaster happen here right so speed and accuracy were two things that were needed in that job so obviously they picked the best people they could think of for that job but at the end of the day the job for me was very वेरी पैसिव लाइक हो गई एक स्पीच देखी लिख दिया क्या बोला उस स्पीच में डाल दिया ट्वीट डाल दिया प्रेस रिलीज इशू कर दी एक दो बार के सीनियर्स से वेटिंग करा के दे इज अ प्रोसेस टू बी फॉलोड कर दिया सो आफ्टर पॉइंट इट बिकम्स अ जॉब दैट यू कैन प्रिटी मच डू ऑन ऑटो पायलट सो ओवर टाइम आई फेल लाइक आई एम नॉट रियली दर इज नो चैलेंज टू इट बियॉन्ड अ पॉइंट माई ब्रेन इज नॉट डेवलपिंग आई एम नॉट लर्निंग एनी थिंग न्यू इट्स द सेम थिंग दैट आई हैव टू डू ओवर एंड ओवर अगेन देर इज जीरो स्कोप फॉर मिस्टेक्स इट्स ऑलवेज अर्जेंट बिकॉज ऑलवेज राइट नो पी एम इज मेकिंग अ स्टेटमेंट एट एट पी एम चलो लग जाओ so it's very high stress it is any hour of day or night 24/7 he's working so you're working and then ultimately you are not really learning anything new beyond a point so i mean i would get highs are there that sometimes a call would come from pmo ke pm ne aapki report padhi aur special tareef kar rahe the ki ye bahut acha likha hai ye aisa likhna chahiye officers ko so then you get a high ke are wah modi ji ne tareef kar di meri personally mere hath i wrote something that was in his hands How, did read, you ever meet him I I was in the same room as him often because of events and all, but not one to one. Never met him. But events or whatever, he would every event that he did in Delhi, we would have to attend and immediately again write press releases and do man media management and all. But uh, anyway, so it was a very very like I said prestigious and honor to be given that job. But uh, ultimately, I felt like I was mentally decaying. and uh, also in, in parallel was this thing happening of me trying to keep my brain alive by pushing for these reforms in the system right which i said were going nowhere because i saw that itna self esteem is so low of the service itself and that's true of many services which are not is <laughs> i mean some people have like thoda sa i think irs it has a little police obviously has pride but beyond the point other services often feel like we are the word that is used is allied service that hum is nahi bol sakte to hum is allied bolenge apne aap ko so that's that itself shows a little bit of you know low self esteem it's like people who live in juhu versus wa link road which is actually uh, andheri they'll say we live in upper juhu हाँ तो इट्स लाइक अलाइट जू यू कुड से करेक्ट एग्जैक्टली सो आई मीन दैट सो दैट दैट इट सेल्फ शोज दैट देर इज लैक ऑफ प्राइड इन वॉट यू आर वेर यू आर एंड एंड दैट शोज इन ऑल योर वर्क ऑल्सो सो अल्टीमेटली देर वॉज लाइक अ कॉरिडोर इन शास्त्री भवन एंड आई गुड सी माई फ्यूचर फॉर द नेक्स्ट थर्टी ईयर्स के पहले मैं इस रूम में हूँ फिर मैं अगले रूम में जाऊँगी फिर अगले रूम में फिर एंड ऑफ द कॉरिडोर महल है सबसे सीनियर बॉस का वहाँ पे एंड होगी मेरी लाइफ सो इट वॉज लाइक वेरी वेरी डिप्रेसिंग इंटर्न विल कम टू यू से रिफॉर्म द सर्विस like this and you will be like agar mujhe geography mein do marks zyada aate to main is room mein nahi hoti aur us bewakoof insaan ke bare mein nahi sun rahi thi jo bolta hai ki tweet karke duniya badlenge to anyway so yeah i mean all of those factors kind of combined and i felt like it was not the best place for me anymore and the interesting thing is that when i decided to quit most of my seniors were very supportive of it they were even enthusiastic of it some of them would even message me to this day some of them message me that you took such a courageous step that we could never take and i wish it at your age i had done this and then i had of course an exit interview with our mos who was mr rajwadar singh rathod and then the minister mr arun jetli he signs off finally on your resignation and then uske baad bye bye there were some people also who got very offended by my decision and again i felt like that showed a bit of low self esteem when you are offended by somebody else's life decision about themselves that you know it's like if i say that i uh, amit i started a podcast now i'm ending it and you feel offended aise kaise tum podcast end kar doge what does that say about me are you saying that my life choice is wrong you know that's the sort of <laughs> place that this comes from so i have had also seniors who would make me sit in their room and not sign my file because i used to physically go with the file ke mujhe nikalna hai because i have another job lined up to join and please ye sign kar do i used to physically go from office to office from with my resignation file so i used to get these two extreme opposite reactions one was 
सो मच प्राइड फुल सपोर्ट आई विश आई हेड डन दिस एंड द अदर वॉज हाउ डेयर यू तुम्हारी हिम्मत कैसे हुई वॉट डू यू थिंक ऑफ योर सेल्फ एंड यू नो लाइक रियली पर्सनल स्टफ लग रहा है लाइक सर द साइन द फाइल आई एव नेवर मेट यू बिफोर आई डोंट इंटेंड टू मीट यू अगेन वाई डू आई मैटर टू योर लाइफ सो मच आई एम अ मक्खी जस्ट हाथ मारो निकालो कमरे से बाहर एक कैसे लोग हैं कभी कभी मुझे लगता है कि मतलब इनके दिमाग में क्या चलता होगा वॉट वॉट आर दर्ट ऑफ नैरेटिव ब्रूइंग इन दर माइंड एट दे कैन रिएक्ट द वे दे डू ग्रेट सो वी सर्ट ऑफ रीच यू नो अ क्रिटिकल टर्निंग पॉइंट इन योर लाइफ वे यू टर्न योर बैक ऑन द इविल इंडियन स्टेट अरे इविल मत बोलो यार आई नो आई आई प्रॉब्लली कम अक्रॉस इज रियली अनग्रेटफुल एंड देयर प्रॉब्लली सिविल सर्वेंट्स लिसनिंग टू दिस हु आर फीलिंग लाइक कि क्या व्हाट इज दिस अनग्रेटफुल मैं बोल रहा हूं थैंक्स गर्ल एक तो ये मैं बोल रहा हूँ और दूसरा मैं क्या बोल रहा हूँ कि वट एवर माई जजमेंट ऑन द स्टेट इज आई नेवर एक्सटेंड एट जजमेंट टू द पीपल वर्किंग विद इन इट आई आई स्टिल हैव मेनी गुड फ्रेंड्स सलील इंक्लूडेड हु आर पार्ट ऑफ द इंडियन स्टेट एंड दे आर वंडरफुल पीपल बट द स्टेट इज वॉट इट इज बट यू नो इस बात पे एक छोटी सी ब्रेक लेते हैं और ब्रेक के बाद वील टॉक अबाउट राइटिंग एंड वुमनिंग द टू बिग डब्ल्यूज Have you always wanted to be a writer but never quite got in down to it? Well, I'd love to help you. Since April 2020, I've taught 20 cohorts of my online course, The Art of Clear Writing. An online community has now sprung up of all my past students. We have workshops, a newsletter to showcase the work of students, and vibrant community interaction. In the course itself, through four webinars spread over four weekends, I share all I know about the craft and practice of clear writing. There are many exercises, much interaction, a lovely and lively community at the end of it. The course costs rupees 10,000 per. GST or about one fifty dollars, and is a monthly thing. So if you are interested, head on over to register at IndiaUncut dot com slash clear writing. That's IndiaUncut dot com slash clear writing. Being a good writer doesn't require God given talent, just the willingness to work hard and a clear idea of what you need to do to refine your skills. I can help you. Welcome back to the scene in the unseen. I'm chatting with the famous Mahima Vashisht. Once upon a time, you'll remember people joined coaching classes because Mahima Vashisht yahan aati hai. So you know, abhi log scene unseen sunenge. Mahima Vashisht yahan aati hai. So you know, you uh, sort of left government uh, mm. for the reasons you sort of described yeah. uh, with great eloquence. Uh, but after that, before you kind of came to where you are, you spent a few years. uh working with swachh bharat as well yeah. so tell me about how you kind of got into that what that journey was like and so on and so forth so like i said i had joined the government with a certain contributive aim in mind and i was somehow feeling that it was not getting fulfilled so at least the results were not proportionate to the efforts and and it seemed at some point that my efforts were actually meaningless in the larger scheme of things the country was going where it would go it's not like the civil services were going to lose out on a big thing if i'm avashesh was there or not uh, so with that again the same aim in mind of having an impact i decided that maybe you know i'll try my luck in the development sector and um, i fortunately uh, around the time when i was st- contemplating and going through that inner turmoil of to stay or not to stay i also i started talking to friends and peers about the development sector and i found out that tata trusts was um, had just been rebranded as tata trusts so earlier there were these jamshedji trust jrd trust very like some 20 25 trusts uh, left by various uh, people in the tata lineage and mr ratan tata was had now recently co-branded them as one uh, umbrella tata trusts as the brand and every everything is under it so there was a lot of reorganization happening because each trust had its own mandate its own leadership and people were brought together a lot of change management happening inside and they they wanted to bring some young blood also so they were looking for people to hire and uh, coming from a government background also gave me a certain edge so i was offered a position in that team so i literally just i, I think i my resignation got accepted on 30th november and 1st december i joined tata trust so wahan pe for a few months i was still figuring out my place uh, um i was working with some dual leadership one boss in delhi one boss in bombay it was working not working kuch kuch then one day uh, the ceo of uh, trusts called me and he said that uh, there is a new leadership in the ministry of drinking water and sanitation and they work on swachh bharat mission and uh, they are looking for uh, the se- essentially there was a new secretary and he's been brought as a lateral hire he's not an not come up the is ladder although he was xis he left went out and world, worked in the world bank 
in the US for and various other countries and now he's been brought in laterally to lead the swachh bharat mission and he because for him coming back to the government is a change he wants people to come manage his office and uh, help him set things up so jao zara ek do hafta unki help kar do because you are familiar with the government system and then you can come back and resume what you're doing here so i was like theek hai i went uh, 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 three of us were asked to go and he said he had said i want some youngsters and one was a very young colleague some another was a fresh uh, i am graduate and third was i was the senior most in that team and the three of us went and we sent our cv and everything to him and i was very impressed that this is a secretary who replies to email first of all <laughs> literally a secretary who checks his own email is a very rare species in government of india and i i remember i emailed him at night and within half an hour i got a response from him and he had clearly like got it on his phone which is an accomplishment again email on their phone not have a ps jo kamre ke bahar baithe ho aur monday ko print out lekar aaye sir ye email nahi hai <laughs> not that so i was very impressed and then um, so i we, we went in and uh, so he was a career sanitation person because he had worked in the world bank as in the sanitation sector and then he was clearly very knowledgeable about the sector and he had very clear ideas on where he wanted to take things and basically swachh bharat mission was as we know launched on 2nd october 2014 and this is happening in march 2016 and by this time if you look at the data the coverage hasn't moved much so the sanitation coverage of india at the time of independence was like 1% so 1% of indians used the toilet and uh, had access to a toilet even then over the years still various sanitation programs happened in the country uh, nirmal bharat abhiyan usse pehle total sanitation campaign usse pehle kuch aur kuch aur and over the years uh, uh, coverage had come up only to 38% when as of swachh bharat launch so now the mandate given by the prime minister is 5 saal mein odf india which is open defecation free india and they had set themselves a very high bar of 100% coverage so i mean in some countries odf open defecation free is also defined when you achieve 70% coverage that okay not enough people are any more going out in the open to cause serious uh, risk of diseases and infectious diseases so this is the some threshold they decide everybody agrees on ki ha yahan tak pahunch gaye to we'll call it odf india mein they went full ke हम देख लेंगे सौ परसेंट तो क्या एक सौ दस परसेंट करेंगे सौ दस करेंगे हाँ तो पॉलिसी लिखते टाइम ना हम लोग बहुत एम्बिशियस हो जाते हैं मिशन लॉन्च होगा विल कॉल इट अ मिशन नॉट अ स्कीम राइट सो दीज थिंग्स एंड उस समय हम फुल जोश में आके हंड्रेड परसेंट बोल दिए और अब हम थर्टी एट से अभी तक फिफ्टी में भी नहीं पहुँच पाए दो साल निकल गए हैं तो तो दैट वॉज द कंडीशन इन विच ही आर टेकन ओवर एंड Mr Parmeshan Ayer by the way his name I should have taken before so he was uh, so he was very clear that I am going to meet this target and the uh, career bureaucrats before me have not taken this seriously because they've been like they could first of all sanitation is a state subject to hum baithe hain yahan delhi mein states ko jab karna hoga kar lenge jab funding ka request aayega hum sign kar denge file to ho gaya hamara kaam so that was the attitude before him which is why we were very we poor <laughs> so his thing was ke nahi i I have I have been brought in for on a contract. This is my aim. Even if my contract gets extended, मुझे 2019 नाइनटीन सेकेंड अक्टूबर को ओ डी एफ इंडिया चाहिए ही चाहिए करना ही करना है सो देन एंड ही वॉन्टेड हिज टीम टू हैव द सेम एंथोजियाजम विच इज वाई ही ब्रॉट इन फ्रेश ब्लड फ्रॉम आउट साइड बिकॉज ही वॉज लाइक द करेंट सेटअप इज ऑफ दैट मेंटेलिटी एंड सो ही डिड अ लॉट ऑफ ट्रांसफर्स एंड ब्रॉट इन न्यू पीपल एंड इन द गवर्नमेंट सर्विस ऑल्सो एंड so over the years then he was very, we were quite aggressive and like we would call up collectors and be like ye percent pe kyun ho ye percent is percent se aage wo percent hona chahiye and um, i was working a lot more on the communication side of things because i had that background of government communication so i worked a lot on uh, campaigns for swachh bharat mission so you might have seen darwaza band amitabh bachchan ka campaign which is about ke toilet ka darwaza band karo essentially um and there was a bit of uh, gender that i had brought in in that lens that i had brought in there also so uh, there was there is this instance that i want to highlight to kind of like give an example of the kind of work i was trying to do um, so nirmal bharat mein there were these ads right ek vidya balan ka ad hota tha 
बाय द वे फुल लव आई एम बिग फैन ऑफ विद्या बालन बट वो जो ऐड था दैट हैड सम इशूज तो वो एड में शी वॉज अ मतलब स्कूल टीचर टाइप चश्मे वाली लेडी हु गोज इन टू अ विलेज टिपिकल गवर्नमेंट एड के गाँव वाले बेवकूफ़ होते हैं और शहर वाले आके उनको समझाते हैं कि जीवन ऐसे जीना चाहिए तुम्हें राइट वी विल इम्पार्ट आर अर्बन विजडम एंड टीच दम हाउ टू लिव देयर लाइफ सो दैट वॉज द टिपिकल मॉडल विच ऑल गवर्नमेंट एड्स है फॉलोड उसमें भी यही था एंड देन दिस एड इज कॉल्ड दुल्हन की विदाई ऐसा कुछ नाम है इसका सो एड में क्या है कि एक शादी हो रही है और दूल्हा दुल्हन बैठे हुए हैं मंडप में सास बैठी है साइड में लड़के की माँ एंड लड़की बोलती है मुझे पानी पीना है तो कोई पानी का ग्लास लाता है और वो घूंघट पहना हुआ है उसने लंबा तो घूंघट उठा के पानी पीती है एंड देन द सास इज इमिजिएटली लाइक इशारा करती कि नीचे करो घूंघट नीचे तो and then so vidya balan notices this with the critical eye and then uh, later uh, she says ke bahu ko shaucharya jana hai to uh, saas bolti ke shaucharya kahan hamare yahan to hum aise hi bahar jate hain to wo bolti ke bahu fir to tum ghungat bhi khol do kyunki ek taraf to inko tumhara pani peene ke liye ghungat uthana bhi gawara nahi hai dusri taraf ye chahte hain ki tum bahar ja ke khule mein shauch karo to uh, I mean that ad is supposed to say use a toilet obviously but it's also in a way saying that aurto ka ghungat pehna is fair as long as there's a toilet at home rakho ne ghungat bandi bana ke right so it's it's not thinking that but it is unintentionally saying that so for me a big part of it was also that there is this entire narrative about women being victims ke the victimhood of women hamari mataon aur behnon ko टॉयलेट नहीं मिलता है बेचारी सुबह तक रोक के रखती हैं बहुत पीड़ा होती है बहुत दुख मिलता है उन्हें उनकी इज्जत हमें बचानी है तो ये दिस माताओं बहनों और नैरेटिव रियली इरीटेट्स मी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिकॉज यू शुड रिस्पेक्ट पीपल बिकॉज देर पीपल नॉट बिकॉज यू हैव रिलेटिव ऑफ देयर जेंडर राइट नो बडी सेज के इस आदमी का मर्डर होने से रखो क्योंकि हमारे भाइयों और बापों की रक्षा करनी है नो वन से बट और तो यार मेज ऑलवेज देर माताओं बहनों नैरेटिव सो दैट वॉज वन थिंग दैट आई डेंट लाइक एंड ऑल्सो द वॉज पेंटिंग ऑफ वेमेन एज दीज पैसिव विक्टिम्स हु आर सिटिंग एट होम वेटिंग टू बी रेस्क्यूड बाई द मैन सो आई मीन माई सेंस वॉज दैट रूरल वेमेन हैव फार मोर एजेंसी एंड दे आर एबल टू इवन लीड दिस मूवमेंट बिकॉज देयर इंसेंटिव आर अलाइंड दिट इज इन देयर इंटरेस्ट दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू गो आउट एंड गेट असोल्टेड बाय मैन इन द डार्क इन द फील्ड्स बिकॉज दे वेंट आउट साइड एंड देर ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ थिंग्स दे इज एनिमल अटैक्स देर इज चिल्ड्रन बींग किडनेप्ड आई थिंक देर वॉज दैट रेप इन वन यू पी का डिस्ट्रिक्ट वेर वेर दीज गर्ल्स हैड गॉन आउट बेसिकली फॉर ओपन डेफिकेशन इट बिकेम अ वेरी देर वर दीज वेरी वायलेंट इमेजेस दैट केम आउट ऑल्सो लेटर अबाउट देयर बॉडीज और हंग from the from a tree or something Sonia Fulero wrote a book about it called The Good Girls and I had an episode with her on this as well Hmm so so yeah absolutely right so so obviously it is in the interest of women in greater interest of women because they stand much more to lose their suffering much more but that doesn't mean that they are going to be passive victims sitting at home waiting to be rescued by their men they can also lead this movement mostly because also they are mothers and they know that when their children fall ill how it affects their children and at this point as a mother you have this a drive this agency to protect your child and if nothing else not to protect themselves at least to protect their children they will want toilets and they can become champions of the movement so that was the lens with which i wanted to communicate about swachh bharat and so so we got anushka sharma as the brand ambassador so while everybody was very gung ho about amitabh bachchan and very very cool of mr bachchan he did it for free as he does with most government campaigns and every brand ambassador does it pro bono so but but then i wanted one woman ambassador who talks about this message also and so there's an ad of darwaza band campaign featuring anushka sharma where you show you see women who are you know gehrawing around a man who's going with a mug outside in the jungle and there's these wives who have chained the mugs to the toilet so the man tries to yank the mug away to go in the fields and he's not able to and then two men look at each other that both are wives have chained and they are saying please go use the toilet because we were also finding the data was showing that even once you build a toilet it is the able bodied young men who are the last to adopt the senior citizens will adopt the differently able will adopt children will do it women will do it but the young men are the problem area so i said women are not the problem men are here the problem so let's let's target men as as the the target segment which needs to change their behavior instead of saying bechari aurat ki izzat bacha lo because that messaging also means you build a toilet and then you go out in the jungle because you built it for your wife not for yourself right and open defecation is one thing which affects everyone it's not that i went out in the field and so only my health is affected because 
ultimately it's going to spread diseases which will come to everyone's house so it's a community wide effort if even one person is going out that was the message at least we said behind 100% coverage that even if one person goes out your health is affected and then there was a lot of learning around this se- sector i remember like the openness with which in that ministry we used to say the word tatti <laughs> after a while for the first time i remember this was this expert brought in who would keep saying the word tatti tatti and i was giggling behind her. i had to stand behind a colleague because i couldn't stop giggling and i thought it was unprofessional but then again no one's heard of this talk in a boardroom setting uh but it was it was a lot of fun it was a lot of learning about again you know real issues of real india and how these issues are cross cutting they affect your family health your finances because for a poor family if a person who's earning falls ill x times a year that much time of income doesn't come in plus expenses of healthcare women's agency to go out and work is limited if children are constantly falling ill in the house so all of these things are interlinked with one little cause which seems very banal at the outset kya ek toilet bana do so it was it was a great learning experience 5 years so i was there till 2020 and uh, yeah i mean we declared india odf and all the reality is obviously different i mean the national family health survey recently came out and said it's not odf but that's beside the point i think a lot of the the mission gets a lot of flack for this because we trapped ourselves into the narrative of odf india karna hai but that's not really the point the point is that nowhere in the history of mankind of human kind has there been a government program that has led to this much change in sanitation coverage of this many number of people so at the time we began 650 million people indians would go out and defecate in the open and basically 1 billion in the world so every second person defecating outside in the morning was an indian so that was the extent of the problem at that time and even if we've not solved it 100% we've solved it 70% 80% it's a it's a something to be applauded it's something to be celebrated so the narrative of 100% versus other uh, well not 100% is a is not the point which should be debated but it it is worth celebrating i mean whatever is your politics and i also have opinions on the politics of this government but this this mission has been an unqualified success in my view if you look at it that way about the number of lives it has touched and improved forever and one you know even if one opposes odl we can still support odf odl being our dear leader of course yeah, you you looked uh, oh, sort of you, you looked a little <laughs> stunned there uh, so yeah odl yeah. and odf but uh, you know it's also worth underscoring that that little point you made that you know open defecation affects everyone and a, and an illness can be of great consequence to a poor family and i don't think we city elites really understand how devastating yeah. a small illness can be you know i think economists use a term i think welfare shocks yeah. that essentially you know an illness can lead to a welfare shock in the sense that you can actually fall back into poverty yeah. and then coming out can take another generation exactly. you know a slow movement upwards can suddenly reverse so hard yeah. uh, and you know just so many people in cities honestly if they have a medical emergency even they themselves will go broke in a day yeah. right so when you think of the poorest of the poor it's just way worse it can be devastating and something like this has a great impact i'd done an episode on swachh bharat india a long time back with shruti rajgopalan mm-hmm. where the fundamental point she was making is that some of it was posturing in the sense that sure you build the toilets and you put the commodes and you do whatever but the underlying drainage system wasn't there and because the underlying drainage system wasn't there the caste system got perpetuated because you would I- I- inevitably have people from the lower caste for to then come and take the refuse away and therefore a lot of the change was cosmetic because people still kept going out i think this episode would have been in 2018 or you know, something so mm-hmm. possibly you know you were there till 2020 so maybe you guys managed to you know do something about the uh, the, the deeper underlying issues yeah so um, first of all there is no sew- sewage network in a rural area it's too sparsely populated to justify the cost of laying down sewage pipelines and it's too dynamic because new households are coming up every now and then when one family do bete alag hue do ghar ban gaye suddenly right so the it's a moving target so sewage system banana is impractical in most rural uh, parts of india so what we did have was a twin pit toilet system which is that under the toilet only under the ground there is a system and the system is that there are two pits so first all the uh, f- waste flows into one pit it fills up and the pit has a mitti ka bottom 
so the that pit fills up you kind of just call your mistri and switch the drainage to the other pit and that one pit fills up takes 5 years okay. and then the second pit filling up will take 5 years uti there mein this first pit would have uh, leached down into the ground and would have composted and in an ideal well constructed twin pit toilet that compost will become like manure which you can use in the fields so anyone can empty it and in fact we went to several places we've got uh, our minister at the time mr narendra singh tomar akshay kumar the cag of the time my boss the secretary himself all of them we, we've got these iconic people to go into a pit pick out that waste with their hands and just to showcase that it is safe and it can be handled and we even did an ad about that about that featuring akshay kumar and bhumi pednekar later after the toilet movie came out so just to highlight this that this waste is safe to handle so that's the like i said it's an ideally constructed correctly constructed twin pit which I agree. Sometimes the pit is not correctly constructed, or people will just construct a single pit. के बहुत गहरा गड्ढा बना दो जी भरे ही ना अगले 20 साल तक ना भरे वो इतना गहरा गड्ढा बना बनाते हैं तो then it leaches into the water table, the waste, and it can uh, contaminate your water. So there's uh, technical issues with it, but theoretically that model exists and was the one that we uh, at least pushed from Delhi and most states did adopt it, if not all. The second question was about caste. caste is a very real problem that cannot be disentangled from sanitation and uh, uh, it's even worse in urban areas where you see uh, manual scavengers going inside these septic tanks and not coming back right there were so many deaths of uh, uh, sanitation workers in delhi alone in the recent past so uh, obviously caste is not uh, an issue that you can ever disassociate from it having said that there were critics that um academicians who we worked with at that time and we would consult them but often found their way of doing things to be very idealistic the, the, so the purest view is first you solve caste then you solve sanitation that is the purest way of approaching it ke pehle caste system hatao और ये बोलो कि कोई भी टॉयलेट साफ करेगा उसके बाद टॉयलेट्स बनाओ सो दैट एनी वन इज एक्चुअली यू नो द वे श्रुति परसिव्ड द टॉयलेट्स टू बी क्लीन एंड मैनेज दिस वॉज नॉट एट ऑल हर पोजिशन बिकॉज यू हैव टू टैकल ऑल प्रॉब्लम साइमल्टेनियसलीशन बट शी इज राइट अबाउट कास्ट बींग डीपली एंड टैंगल विद इट बट द प्योरेस्ट व्यू ऑफ कास्ट सिस्टम को जब तक सॉल्व नहीं करेंगे तब तक इंडिया ओडीएफ नहीं हो सकता वॉज लाइक वी डोंट हैव टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स टू वेट अराउंड ना टू डू दैट सो वी वर लाइक के देखो वी हैव अ लिमिटेड फ्रेम विंडो पांच में से भी तीन साल बचे हैं एंड वी हैव टू डू दिस एटलीस्ट कंस्ट्रक्ट द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फॉर इट एंड डू एन सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ बिहेवियर चेंज कम्युनिकेशन टू चेंज पीपल्स बिहेवियर एंड एनकरेज यूज ऑफ दीज टॉयलेट्स एंड बियॉन्ड दैट आई थिंक problems like caste are going to get solved in as the as we develop as we get more educated as a society it's going to happen in in its course of time and hopefully we'll have some accelerators along the way but it was not something that was in our area of control or could have been uh, practically been impacted by swachh bharat absolutely quick question for you if david lynch was making a tv series in india today what would he call it twin pits oh he made a famous iconic series called twin peaks in 1990 sorry okay that i should uh, you know not <laughs> do any more of these in this episode itne <laughs> evolved jokes are lost on me yaar tum crack a ddl se joke i'll get it maaf kijiye i'll i'll do my best to come up with a ddl se joke by the end of this episode let's talk about your writing okay so uh, uh, you've mentioned earlier that aap third standard se aap daily diary likhti thi journaling karti thi wo sab karti thi you know your first published essay was in the fourth standard and it was about uh, fake news or advertising and lies and so on mm-hmm. so you know so tell me a little bit about your writing journey like what drew you to writing did you always want to be a writer what kind of writer did you want to be and uh, you know how fundamental was that a part of what you wanted out of yourself like did you always see yourself at least in part as a writer so um, yeah i told you beforehand about my earliest memories of writing and third standard mari ek english teacher thi she used to compulsory roz ek page diary likhni hai and i was as the class topper designated the class monitor jise baakiyon ki diary check karni hai so like yaar izzat se baat aa jati hai i used to have like a lot of i think that teacher gave me a lot of anxiety because main aadhi raat ko uth ke check karti thi maine likhi ki nahi likhi and it was like it was a problem serious problem 
but uh, anyway so that was my first f- uh, introduction to disciplined daily writing and uh, like you said fourth standard mein i got published and i was very proud ke school magazine mein there was a thing about how uh, i was i was very cute essay i came across it recently that's why i re- still remember it which is about how you know mummy says we, we should not tell a lie but then how is colgate also number one toothpaste and close up also number one toothpaste <laughs> as a child i'm seeing on tv koi to jhoot bol raha hai various guys are saying i'm number one koi to jhoot bol raha hai na to ye kya chal raha hai bado ki duniya mein so it was like it was very cute i mean i mean i used to get these chota chota encouragements i think from my environment about ha achhi angrezi hai acha likhti hai bachchi and then cut directly to college where all those magazines and all those things happened as a chief editor of an official magazine and an unofficial magazine so a uh, lot of work about you know, collecting not only writing yourself but also editing other people's work and encouraging others to write so there was a bit of element of that as well and that was uh, in my memory it was one of the most fun highlights of my college life so it there was a bit of attraction to uh, writing at that point and af- soon after i left i think that was when the blogging culture had reached us uh, which is when i set up my first blog and then i wrote probably 100 posts in 10 years it was that intermittent itna ruk ruk ke kabhi kabhi kuch idea aaya to likha or when i've like i've traveled or i've seen something sounds like my newsletter now <laughs> you are being very productive other than that right creatively i was doing nothing else i was just doing my padhai likhai job bob yahi sab to uh, there was not i mean i used to feel like hey, when when the inspiration strikes i am able to get up and write and sometimes in the middle of the night an idea will come and i'll get up and write and go back to sleep and it will be excellent at least from that lens <laughs> today i see them and cringe but at that time it used to be like ha acha likha hai but it was very very uh, uh, few and far between those writing for is and then it was never a thing ke ha mujhe writer banna hai like you had probably ke main naukri chhod ke writing karungi aisa nahi tha kabhi very like i said wo middle class work aisa kya na ki naukri to chahiye yaar salary to aani chahiye <laughs> but ha ye ek cheez hai jo mujhe which, which gives me true joy i mean I, it's just like unadulterated joy i'm getting nothing else out of this and uh, uh, but i like writing i like it when other people like my writing and when people find it funny or people say they it moved them or it taught them something that they made them think in a way that they hadn't thought before and then in parallel i was having this whole uh, uh, gender uh, 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 evolution also right like uh, coming coming to those realizations that kuch to galat hai bahut kuch galat hai sab kuch galat hai so that that was happening separately but then at some point i think the two got combined and then then womaning is what happened after that in your notes you've mentioned that we met many years ago at uh, nilanjana roy who's been a guest on the show nilanjana and her husband dd's house yeah. and i gave you some rude writing advice yeah. now i have no memory of this except that i must have said something and you later remembered it so maine kya bola tha kya hua tha ye tha so i was there as i was there as salil's plus one right like i was just the person who didn't belong i felt like as this कि मैं कहाँ आ गई हूँ ये क्या बातें चल रही हैं लोग फ्रेंच और लैटिन में बात कर रहे हैं फॉर फॉर ऑल आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज दिस इज लाइक रियली वेरी आई मीन रिफाइंड कल्चर्ड पीपल टॉकिंग अबाउट बुक्स एंड ऑथर्स दैट आई हैव नेवर हर्ड ऑफ वेरी आई फेल्ट वेरी वेरी पेडेस्ट्रियन देर विच आई वॉज ऑब्वियसली स्टिल एम बट सो आई थिंक आई हैड रेड योर बुक लॉन्ग बैक माय फ्रेंड चैंसो एंड देन आई वॉज लाइक अ लिटल कि अरे वो अमित वर्मा इज कमिंग देर एंड salil was like yeah yeah he's my friend and i was like, most impressed that my husband is friends with such uh, illustrious people and so th- then he 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 said come i'll introduce you and we came over to you and i something we got talking about government work which both of us were babus at the time so uh, we were talking about my work and all and then i said that i've read your book and i said something about oh, i also like to write i want to write and so you are the first you said so why don't you <laughs> i was like <laughs> so offended how dare he as <laughs> ekon bolta hai <laughs> why don't you that's because it was really truly the most pragmatic advice and that's to this day the advice i would give to other people who would come to me and say that you write womaning and i also want to write the very the truest and purest advice is why don't you because writing is just that right it's a verb it's your right being a writer is like not a noun it's a verb you it's a thing of doing Like I I I I did this class before yours a course in which somebody said that writer is the one profession to which 
most of the people that claim they belong to that profession don't actually practice it <laughs> right many people will say i'm a writer but they don't actually do the verb of writing and that's where the entire secret of good writing or any writing is that you have to sit park your tashreef in a chair and do it so that was i mean basically i was not doing it and you told me to do it <laughs> obviously it was it was not offensive as much as it was very very pure and i felt like yeah he's right why no, what is stopping but, me you know now that you mention it and i can see why i might have said that but it is rude uh, you know just just looking back because <laughs> no, i think it's, it's 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 something you can say from a position of privilege where i was a master of my own time ki mujhe agar routine banani hai ki har roz 3 ghante mein baith ke likhunga i can make that routine yeah. you know other people necessarily can't lives are complicated mm-hmm. you know one of the struggles that writers face especially women face when they are juggling so much is ki time kahan se banaye mind space kahan se banaye mm-hmm. you know you have so many things going on that you just don't have that and uh, Uh, taking that into account this is not something i should have said so you know today <laughs> no, today no, no. i, was, I should was, have but it was true right say if i'm aspiring to be a writer then it is the purest advice there is of course there is context and i had a whole other life i was a very high stress job at the pm at that time and all but such a such to such <laughs> yeah and in case any listeners are surprised uh, that you mentioned a book of mine and why don't i talk about it i wrote this book in 6 weeks in 2009 and i should never have published it uh, i think i embarrassed myself but unfortunately i showed it to publisher friends and there was a bidding war and it kind of it happened i got carried away in the moment not close enough to uh, sort of see the wood for the trees and i always keep saying that i will redeem myself one day which i promise you i will uh, but uh, that's not really some thing that i am particularly thrilled about so but no it was a fun book i liked it a lot I, I, even now sometimes i see a chipkali and i think of <laughs> my friends <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a chipkali in the book let's kind of talk about a uh, womaning then you mentioned that these separate things are coming together and that one is that you're thinking of all of these issues right and on the other hand you're a writer you write you like writing mm-hmm. however your track record of writing is 100 posts in 10 years <laughs> right so how is it coming together in your mind is it like one of these hawa mein thoughts ki kisi din main likhungi mm-hmm. or you know how does when does it start to fructify and become a concrete thing and w- when does that urge get so much that you know the the verb takes over from the possibility of the noun in terms of writing and writer yeah yeah so for womaning the idea came to me at a very particular moment which i have identified and remember so i was um, swachh bharat mein in our office we would do a lot of like i said travel to districts and all and a couple of us uh, had gone out to various parts of the country and we had converged back in delhi to report our findings and all and so we were all having lunch and informal conversation was happening ke kya kya kiya dekha kahan rahe kaisa raha ye wo and then um i i had said i think at that point that uh, i was stay put up in a, it was a small town and i was put up in a hotel room where uh, you know there is an auto lock in the door so it's not a kundi it's a lock that just with the you turn a knob and that's a lock basically that means it's a lock that can also be opened from outside the kundi is the only thing the latch is the only thing that is a hardware between you and a person outside who has the master key so i said i was i was a bit terrified because the hotel was n- not the most unshady ones out there and as a staff was i was a little concerned for safety and so raat ko mai i maybe i overreacted but mai raat ko table ek furniture ke darwaza ke against laga ke soi ke agar koi room mein ghusega to at least i'll wake up with the noise like that and i i thought that i was like you know i've said before that women think that these experiences are unique to us and i thought i was the only paranoid person out there doing such a thing but then there was another woman at that lunch table and who said are ye same thing happened with me also i also do this often i go to whenever i'm traveling to these chota small town mein chota hotel where safety is not a big guarantee i also do this mujhe bhi kundi pasand hai agar kundi na ho to i am also stressed the entire night i can't sleep and sometimes i put furniture sometimes i just don't sleep and things there and then ek ek karke two three women said oh me too me too and then there was this one guy who was there and he was like did you guys like plan this before and is this a prank on me because what are you all even talking about i can't relate at all to this if never this thought has never crossed my mind for me somehow that moment was a i mean obviously there's history behind it and but that is when the uh, coin dropped in my mind is the expression coin dropped or what pin dropped 
something dropped in my mind uh, listeners will get it I, 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 yeah. it doesn't matter so kuch chamka light bulb chamka basically ha kuch chamka to chamka ye ki there is this whole uh, life that women are living and we are living so close to each other we are sometimes husband and wife cohabiting and what were the father daughter brother sister living together in the same house having such starkly different life experiences or colleagues working in the same office having itna different experiences that women are seeing a whole different side of the world that men are just not seeing and even the most well intentioned men out there who are like ke okay, oh women full support feminist even those men are often just unaware of it it's by no fault of their own they've not had that experience and they're unaware so for me that was a bulb moment that i felt ke is pe likhna chahiye i should just talk to women and um, get these stories about things that women experience and it's very common between us and which men probably haven't thought of and so for me because i had thought about fe- uh, feminism and i mean i don't like to use that word because that word and now means different things to different people and many people are all actually aligned to the thought of it but do- just don't like the word because they interpret it differently but either, either way i had thought about writing about gender a lot and i used to think you know people write either about data which is not my forte i'm not a data scientist and i don't not the most knowledgeable person on that front some people like opin- write opinion pieces but opinion mein yahi ho jata na ki ye to is ladki ka opinion hai i disagree bas baat wahi khatam so that's why for me it was that ek to meri apni writing mein i feel like i'm more of a storyteller than a very concrete opinion writer and otherwise also i find that stories are very much more powerful so there was this documentary it's on netflix inside bill's brain about bill gates usme there is one of the there are these four episodes i think usme se ek episode mein bill gates and uh, melinda now melinda french gates they are together talking about an issue i think it was malaria in african kids i'd forget the exact issue but basically what they were saying was that bill gates would see data ke so many thousands of children losing their lives to malaria or diarrhea or whatever it was and he would get moved by the data but melinda would say, said that for me the numbers weren't so real until i traveled to africa and i've met one mother who had lost one child and for me that moved me so much that it ultimately led to the setup of the bill and melinda gates foundation so for me that was another chamko bulb light bulb moment because i felt like stories have so much more power than data even though objectively thousands of children dying is worse than one child but for a human being for most of us stories are what move us much more than data does and so that was the i i decided at that point it suddenly became quite clear to me the kind of writing i'll do the way i will build these stories and these arguments how i'll pick a theme about a subject that's not obvious to men but is a lived experience of a majority of women and then i'll interview women and real women's real stories i'll write and that's how i will build that argument it was not my personal opinion this is the lived experience of these many women which by the way if now you talk to the woman sitting next to you maybe she'll also concur so that i felt might move the needle at least when it came to individual opinions yeah and and the importance of storytelling is you know really it's a difference that i keep talking about uh, you know even in my writing class or even generally it's a difference between the abstract and the concrete so you know in in bill gates's case or in anybody's case large numbers are abstract you know whereas actually a particular story of a particular person is concrete and that has a far greater impact your mirror neurons line up as it were in your head and a uh, much uh, better chance of sort of empathy and uh, kind of um, uh, uh, relating and you know what you speak about the kundi and uh, you know kundi not being there i remember the first person who mentioned this to me was i'd done an episode on me too around the time me too happened with uh, supriya nair and nikita saxena and nikita of course was a caravan uh, journalist who would go around the country everywhere and she pointed this out that men just completely uh, sort of take it for granted it's not something they would even look for but uh, for every women it's a real thing but it's part of that layer that added layer of concern that women carry around with them which men simply don't see yeah. like i can go for a walk at midnight or i can enter a crowded lift without having to look around or i can you know check into a hotel without caring about whether the kundi is there yeah. but women carried these um, layers in fact when i was going through your posts i was kind of putting them in different kinds of categories and one of those categories was what only women go through yeah. you know and these are all 
things that are part of this layer you know so in, in a post where you actually wrote about this is kundi incident you also quoted someone called natasha who wrote quote every time i enter any public space i look at the escape routes i first look at what in the environment i can use as a weapon in case i'm attacked i'm mentally prepared all the time i have told this to male friends and men just don't understand it but in our heads we women are constantly plotting how we can use a metal water bottle we are carrying for self defense like shruti did reference to someone else we are mentally practicing how to use it in case we get attacked yeah. stop quote and the thing is i think if you're a man and listening to this and you think oh these are just some women to whom bad things are happened they're really not it's every woman you know that you have to learn to think about things uh, in a way that men simply don't and this percolates along other fault lines you know it it's there in caste as well you know if somebody asks me what my surname is after i say hi i'm amit i don't even think twice about it you know for someone who is uh, you know uh, not of the same caste there is that added layer of hostility and wariness that kind of that you sense from the other person so it's it's interesting just to you know uh, think of the kind of life we live in india think of all the different fault lines and all the different layers uh, that are therefore invisible to us but to get back to your narrative you know you you've thought that you want to tell the stories of women to kind of make all of these connections but you're thinking of it at that point as a book so uh, this idea was probably i carried it around for टू ईयर्स और मे बी थ्री ईयर्स बिकॉज सून आफ्टर दिस आइडिया केम टू मी प्रेगनेंट विद दिस आइडिया एंड देन प्रेगनेंट विद एन एक्चुअल चाइल्ड सो दैट दैट काइंड ऑफ टू कोवर एंड देन वी हैड आर बेबी एंड देन कोविड हैपन्ड अराउंड द सेम टाइम देन सम आई मीन दिस आइडिया वॉज कॉन्स्टेंटली विद मी आई वुड ऑफन गो बैक एंड थिंक अबाउट इट बट आई वॉज थिंकिंग अबाउट इट लाइक अ बुक and as i mean i'm uh, no imposter syndrome here genuinely i'm a very undisciplined person because i need a deadline or something to work towards otherwise i don't i don't of my own volition will not sit down to do something without an answerability or a deadline this program that way by our education system so for that reason i think i never wrote a word about it i mean i would talk to women and i would note down their stories on my phone in an app ever note pe um, i would write them sometimes on on the laptop and paste them there and then but, but i had these disparate collection of stories over several months and years of talking to women but i hadn't actually sat sit down to you know uh, start writing the book and then uh, around somewhere i think in september cohort i was in in your course and uh, so the the course was great of course but at the end of the course i think the conversation that i you and i had was for me the big well, decisive moment after the course ended i told you that you know i have this book idea and can we discuss it and then we had a zoom call and i told you the idea and i also had a lot of concerns i remember at that time about uh, writing it as a privileged woman because you know what if people say that you are uh, if i don't write about women who are suffering from many other and much more devastating challenges like poverty and caste and all of that if i don't write about them then this is a first world woman problem if i write about them then people say you are appropriating you don't know what you're writing about which i truly don't i had all of these concerns and questions in my mind and i remember that conversation with you was very clarifying for me because you said you know you write what you think about what you know about and what you feel happy confident writing and don't worry about all of this criticism i mean i'd imagine too many <laughs> layers of criticism in my mind so for me it was quite freeing to let go of that ke hoga to hoga dekhenge but for now let me just write what i feel strongly about like these things are my lived experiences so at least that i can that's where i can start and it's not like there's a hierarchy of uh, problems right because you have a problem which is a quote unquote first world problem so it's not a problem anymore like if you are not able to sleep through the night because you are worried about your safety in a place where you've paid good money to stay be and be safe then that's a legitimate real problem even if you are not starving and if even if you are you don't have any of the other multiple multitudes of problems that women other women suffer from it doesn't diminish that you are still facing a challenge that's unfair and it's it's totally because of your gender so that was freeing and then you also the biggest thing was that you said write it as a newsletter which i had never considered up till that point and then you said that you know because you're not also not the challenge i challenge of not having the self discipline to write a chapter a day or a chapter a week just put your give yourself a weekly deadline ke har hafte ek cheez 
एक पोस्ट निकालना है एंड देन आई वॉज लाइक यार वीकली करें कि फोर्ट नाइटली करें हो पाएगा कि नहीं हो पाएगा एंड देन बट देन यू सेट दैट यू नो यू विल बिफोर यू रियलाइज दैट यू हैव अ बॉडी ऑफ वर्क बिहाइंड यू एंड देन समबडी हु डिस्कवर्स यू टू ईयर्स डाउन द लाइन कैन एक्चुअली गो बैक एंड क्लिक इन टू द स्टफ यू रिटर्न अलॉन्ग द वे एंड दैट इन इट सेल्फ इज अ इज एन अचीवमेंट टू हैव दैट बॉडी ऑफ वर्क एंड देन लेटर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेक इट अ बुक सो फॉर मी दैट वॉज अ टिपिंग पॉइंट वेर आई सेट एंड आई थिंक इवन आफ्टर उसके भी दो तीन महीने बाद जाके लाइक टूडे इफ एनी वन गोज एन सीज माई फर्स्ट वेलकम पोस्ट इट बिगिन पब्लिशिंग डेट इज अक्टूबर थर्ड और समथिंग बट इट केम आउट इन डिसम्बर इट केम आउट इन डिसम्बर सो द फर्स्ट थिंग आर रिटर्न इज दैट देर इज अ टू मंथ गैप इन द डेट ऑन दिस पीस एंड द एक्चुअल पब्लिशिंग ऑफ दिस पीस बिकॉज आई put it out and then i didn't put it out there i mean i had published it very locally as a private thing that's why the publishing date is 2 months behind so it took me 2 months to kind of you know gather the courage to do it and feel like ye theek hai there's something i could pull off and so on my birthday uh, 4th december and 2020 was when i kind of went public that ki theek hai ab main likh rahi hu dekha jayega <laughs> and then i got like 100 subscribers on day 1 and i was very shocked ki yaar Damn people have actual faith in me now. I had better turn up the next Friday. At that time, I used to publish on Fridays. Now I publish Mondays. But uh, so that's where it started, and now I have a weekly deadline to work towards. So there's really no getting around it. I do have to write, which is thanks to you. I have actually built up a significant body of work. No, it's a it's a impressive body of work, and what really impresses me is that even though you took that couple of months to get down to it. वंस यू गॉट डाउन टू इट यू वो सो रेगुलर यू नो क्लॉक वर्क पे आता था कि इसका तो आना ही है वट एवर डे यू डिसाइडेड यू चेंज डैट लेटर बट इसका तो आना ही है विच वॉज इम्प्रेसिव टू मी बिकॉज इट वॉज इन जस्ट सम वन सिटिंग डाउन एंड राइटिंग देयर ओन थाट्स लॉट ऑफ वर्क वेंट इन टू इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिसर्च इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्पीकिंग टू पीपल एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट टेल मी यू लिटल बिट अबाउट योर वर्क एथिक ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड एंड हाउ यू मैनेज दिस लाइक दिस इज ऑथर कॉल मेसन करी हुड वंस कम आउट विद अ बुक कॉल डेली रिचुअल्स वेर ई स्पोक टू राइटर्स अबाउट देयर वर्क हैबिट्स एंड देयर वर्क एथिक्स एंड ऑल दैट एंड ही वॉज क्रिटिस साइज करेक्टली डेट बॉस इट्स ऑल मैन यू नो मैन के लिए तो अलग है मैन तो अपना सब कर सकते हैं यू नो दिल बी क्लॉक वर्क क्रीचर्स इन द बैकग्राउंड प्रोवाइडिंग दम द फूड एंड प्रोवाइडिंग दम एवरी थिंग एंड कैन नॉट टेकिंग केयर ऑफ ऑल डेट वॉट अबाउट वुमेन एंड देन करी टू हिस्स क्रेडिट केम आउट विद अ बुक कॉल्ड आई थिंक वुमेन आर्टिस्ट एट वर्क वट एवर अल अल कैन यू पुट डैट अप सो आई एम क्यूरियस अबाउट हाउ you then manage to get all the writing done given that at the same time there is baby there is house there is family there is you know uh, everything else is kind of also happening how, how do you then find that mind space find the discipline so what were the methods that you kind of what were those early weeks like when you were kind of finding a groove jisme you can write and you can bring it out on time yeah so like i said i had these disparate stories collected in uh, uh, on a note taking app which which were the first body that i tapped into okay theek hai let's look at three or four and figure out what is the most compelling one to me right now and my first post was about maternity discrimination because i was literally a new mother at that point and i had j- just been talking to your you know when you become mother somebody some kind woman will add you to a moms group and that's where you'll discuss all your problems like oh breastfeeding bachche ko ye ho gaya rash ho gaya kya karna hai iske liye bukhar ho gaya ab kya karna hai the kid is eating not eating sleep sleeping not sleeping all your early uh, new mother concerns which there's always something going terribly wrong in your life that is making you question your worth as a human being so that uh, tapping into that group and community at that time can be a huge source of comfort and support i mean i don't know how moms did it before this technology was available uh, so that that became uh, 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 the, my starting point because i was we would talk there also about joining back work and how many moms would feel that you know i'm not getting the same position the same kind of projects are not coming my way or my organization has said ke some people were let go also some women af- after becoming a mother that you can't keep up with those deadlines and all that like people would decide on your behalf even if you are ready to put in the work to meet the deadlines and do the stressful work which should not be imposed on people but even if you volunteer to do it people will decide on your behalf that you no longer can so bye so india mein there is no law against maternity discrimination that was the first piece i wrote and that had only stories of two women and i kind of tried uh, the way of uh, if you read that post is pehle iski story fir dusre ki fir pehle ki fir dusre ki fir pehle ki fir dusre so they go in parallel and then later 
I talk about how their experiences were different yet similar and blah 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 the laws in US law in India. Then uh, uh, the second one was I think about body shaming which another issue very close to heart very personally felt and then the moment i i that one i didn't have many backup of many stories but i just asked a couple of friends and we, you talk to the first five women you'll have five stories about body shaming it's that universal among women so it was so shuru mein it was my group of friends and my direct um, circle but uh, soon as as womaning grew and as it became a little more popular among people more subscribers more readers more uh, on these moms groups women are talking about it then i started getting also stories from women i didn't originally know my process was and this is the book that you've mentioned i've read the book the man's uh, habit the male uh, artist's habit is हम उठेंगे सुबह फिर एक नाश्ता फिर एक कॉफी फिर एक स्ट्रोल बाय द लेक फिर शाम को दो घंटा लिखेंगे फिर उसके बाद ड्रिंक्स एट द लोकल पब फिर ये फिर वो मतलब फिर वॉक हाइकिंग ऑन द माउंटेन एंड ये सबसे इंस्पिरेशन और बाद में आप उनको गूगल करो दे है चौदह बच्चे हैं उसके कौन पाल रहे हो चौदह बच्चे राइट सो नो वन इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट इन द सक्सेसफुल हैबिट्स ऑफ दिस सक्सेसफुल मैन so there are and and then when you actually read up there are some of these men were beasts they were monsters the kind of things they did to their wives to their uh, partners the kind of privileges they had like unko bhai isi type ka khana itne baje chahiye aur unke samne khana present ho raha hai aur bacche pal rahi hai wo sath mein matlab she is she is managing the household and you'll say no no support stuff because बच्चों को माँ का प्यार मिलना चाहिए दिल ऑल बीस्टली थिंग्स दीज मैन हैव डन एंड वी वी सेलिब्रेट सो मेनी ऑफ देम टुडे एंड यू गो बैक एंड यू रीड अबाउट देम यू रेड चौदह बच्चों वाला कौन था लेकिन सो दिस वॉज लियो टॉल्स्टॉय हु आई स्टार्टेड हु आई डिस्कवर्ड एक्सीडेंटली ऑन द इंटरनेट आई वॉज राइटिंग अ पीस ऑन ड्रेस फीडिंग एंड द बुक हैड कम आउट रिसेंटली अबाउट हिज सम वन हैड फाउंड एन अकाउंट ऑफ हिज वाइफ सोफिया टॉल्स्टॉय एंड हर डायरी और समथिंग हैड बीन मेड पब्लिक एंड इन दैट आई रेड अबाउट हाउ ही हैड दीज थर्टीन फोर्टीन किड्स एंड ही यूज टू फोर्स हर टू ब्रेस्ट फीड ऑल द चिल्ड्रेन एंड एट वन टाइम शी वॉज सफरिंग फ्रॉम सम postpartum issue because of which she was not able to and then unke wahan purane zamane mein aisa hota tha na ki gaon mein bahut sari aurte hoti hain and they they'll breastfeed each other's children also because they're all at the same age and it was a accepted done thing so i think at that time there was a कुछ ड्राइवर की बीवी या कोई सम डोमेस्टिक हेल्प दे हैड हु ऑल्सो हैड अ बेबी द सेम एज एंड सो सोफी एट ऑल्सो आई वॉन्टेड टू आस्क दैट रिक्वेस्ट दैट वुमन टू ब्रेस्ट फीड द बेबी एंड लियोट ऑल्सो आई सेड नो यू विल नॉट डू इट एंड यू हैव टू डू इट योर सेल्फ एंड देन अल्टीमेटली आई थिंक दैट लेडी एंडेड अप फीडिंग देयर चाइल्ड एंड ही रोट अ वेरी क्रूअल प्ले अबाउट हिज वाइफ मॉकिंग हर एंड कॉल्ड हिज सन एज द outcast or orphan or something was raised by somebody else like there was very lot of toxicity there is i just want to make one point about tolstoy that he was one of the great virtue signalers of his, of his time bahut spiritual baatein karta tha gyan baatta tha gandhi also was impressed by him and one thing that i consistently say today in light of all the uh, woke virtue signaling that goes on on twitter also is that those who signal the most virtue possess the least right and i think tolstoy is a classic example of that but sorry my pet rant out of the way Yeah no even even Einstein I recently read about him and I had written about him in that impossible you know, and I'm going to go back and delete that man's name because now I'm upset Kya kiya usne Uski biwi ne uski research mein bahut help kari thi uski apparently in all of this relativity shit that we are we consider him a god for he basically did not quote her give her credit in the paper they wrote together which to which research she had contributed a lot and uh, there was I read an article which was comparing him and Pierre Curie who madam curry and her husband they did this research together and then when he was nominated for a nobel he said that my wife will also get it she is been an equal partner in this research and that's why we know mary curie's name right like and and growing up for me as a child that was the single one female scientist i could have named and to this day i don't know many people can name a second one by the way on twitter i saw this delightful tweet which also is a great example of mansplaining which you've written about where this woman tweeted about how she once said that she was a great granddaughter of uh, marie curie hmm. and the man with her said no no you're pronouncing it wrong it's mariah carey <laughs> 
I can't be typical. Eh? <laughs> But uh, we we digressed a lot. I'm sorry. We yeah. were talking about uh, uh, developing habits. You were talking about male writers' habits, and yeah. therefore your own. Right. So now coming to my own, there was it was yeah. I had a small new boy, baby. There was a pandemic, and my husband was being forced by the government to go to office, thus exposing us and giving me nightmares and lot of stress. तो उस सबके बीच में इट वॉज एंड आई हैड अ जॉब आई यूज टू वर्क विद अ वर्ल्ड बैंक एट द टाइम लकीली माई बॉस वॉज इन द यू एस सो आई यूज टू वर्क एट नाइट तो आई आई हैड एक्चुअली इंजीनियर इट दैट वे कि एट लीस्ट फॉर द डे आई एम फ्री फॉर केयर गिविंग एंड एट नाइट आई एल डू अ फ्यू आवर्स ऑफ द वर्क एंड देन आफ्टर दैट वीकेंड पे या कभी बैठ के लाइक डू दीज क्विक कॉल्स एंड बाय द वे मेनी वेमेन आई एम इंटरव्यूंग आर ऑल्सो मदर्स सो दे आर जस्ट एज बिजी एज आई एम सो इट वॉज ऑलवेज अ ह्यूज शेड्यूलिंग चैलेंज सो एक्चुअली no not a very small percentage but um a, a limited percentage of the stories i have got uh, written about have actually been phone conversations that i have even had with them and milna to khair possible nahi tha during the pandemic but even conversations have been very few most of them have been either chats or i have asked them to send me voice notes with i send them questions and later they send voice notes as answers because i can't even expect a mother to type out an answer and send me so women are busy on both sides of uh, the that that relationship the person who's interviewing and the interviewer so um, that was how i would pull together these stories i would decide on a theme for the week and uh, publicly put out a call for stories that were harder to find like when i wrote about domestic violence and all there's not a lot of women who will come out on a whatsapp group with 200 other women and say hi i was abused so there i would put out a call on twitter or something so that people can privately reach out to me but uh, some of these like imposter syndrome the kundi thing these things women are quite comfortable discussing in the open and 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 you know nobody really like you said men take them for granted right like men don't even listen to these stories so women are actually when you are approaching it with good faith and they trust you they are quite open and and i feel like women's conversations are far richer than men's conversations men will usually gather and even with their father and brother and best friend they'll talk about sports and politics and like banal stuff which, which has no consequence really to your life immediate but men often have very i find uh, surface conversations which is a pity because women's conversations are really rich and really i mean they open up and they trust and they share quite freely I want to double click on this because it's something I'm genuinely curious about in the sense that many people have told me that this year especially uh, my episodes with women are what they have found the most memorable in you know whether it's Shreyana or Minalji or Nilanjana or Urvashi or uh, Mukulika and so on and so forth uh, whereas the episodes with men are all great you know they're engaging in good uh, good faith they're you know um, uh, sharing a lot of insights but not that same level and i kind of feel that there is something there that in many of these episodes where i've just sat and spoken to a, a woman for 5 hours there is you know these people have left the filter just spoken with such on raw honesty and and gone really deep and all of that and i'm trying to figure out why this is because uh, what you say about conversations is also of course quite true most of the time you know men are kind of are talking about sports and whatever and all of that like you pointed out the conversations can can stay shallow and i'm just thinking aloud here but i'd love to sort of uh, ask you to sort of elaborate not just on the what of it but also the why of it why do you think that happens do you think that one thing that constrains that kind of deep conversation between men is sort of this fear of intimacy uh, you know that macho thing that you know you will never show your emotion you will never show your vulnerability and i think part of any honest conversation between two people is when you let that guard down and you're willing to show your vulnerability and you're willing to show when you're moved by something or when you don't know something or you're feeling lost and confused and you're willing to express that and men don't do that enough so i'm just thinking aloud that maybe that's one possible reason but if you had to look at the why of it what, what would you sort of yeah so it's a bit on both sides and like i always say you know gender issues are not a men versus women issue they are actually all of us are affected by them you're rightly saying that um i think men are conditioned from an early age to you know hide their emotions boys don't cry and those things um so they are they're taught that it is weakness to show vulnerability it is weakness to show uh, and to accept your flaws or to discuss your failings and so they are there there is this burden unnecessary burden in the modern age which is put on men of men are no longer sole breadwinners in most 
families in this strata at least and yet they have this burden of i have to be the stoic supporter and carry this burden all by myself they don't have to really we can all be human beings with each other at this point at least in families where there's otherwise financially secure security is there both are equal partners in terms of who's bringing in the door and things like that even in in even in no relationships where the wife is a stay at home wife or mother even in those relationships i'm saying that there is equal vulnerability that can be shown by both partners it's not necessary anymore but we are still somehow teaching our boys those those uh, problematic values and holding forcing them to hold up themselves to this unreal standard so that's definitely a problem that affects men and then i think on the women side there is a lot of feeling of not being heard enough in your own marriages in your own homes by your own family so that that also leads to women opening up more easily when they are given the chance because we are taught we are silenced right from an early age like i said you know like achhi ladkiyan zor se nahi hasti achhi ladkiyan zyada nahi bolti so these things are taught to us from a very early stage and so we have bottled up a lot and there is there is obviously much more uh, um disadvantage and discrimination that we are facing and we have nowhere to <laughs> voice it at least not in our immediate relationships in most cases so that's another reason why women kind of open up quite freely and and with with each other and that has not new even you know i mean even in i think my grandmom's generation i have known aunts and all having this delicious conversation which you would just want to be a fly on the wall and drink it all up ki acha ye bhi hota tha family mein hame ye pata hi nahi tha like stuff like that and men are talking about ol old and and th- sorry what was it odl and all those things so there th- th- that's what it's 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 that uh, difference has been there forever of women's conversation being more rich and it's a it's a issue i think on both sides So tell me about how you sort of arrived at your voice for the newsletter because one of the things i really like about it and i think i mentioned this at the start when you asked for my feedback is one of course is a personal tone which re- makes the uh, the reader relate to what you're talking about but also you've managed to find just a right balance of lightness and uh, seriousness uh, uh, within that and part of how you do this is also by using memes creatively you see if you written a book you won't have been able to use gifs in it and all that yeah and there is a danger of overdoing that but in your case it's just a right light touch you put it there but you put it there in such a way that it kind of makes you smile but it doesn't trivialize the subject and then you're kind of going on with it so how did you sort of arrive at this voice what was your thinking behind it like how intentional was it ki mujhe ye karna hai isliye So one thing was that humor has always been a part of my life it's when I'm, I'm growing up my dad was a very funny guy he used to be laughing a lot my brother is probably the funniest person i know so uh, there was always humor uh, as a coping mechanism as a defense mechanism har tarah se there is a lot of humor in in the family in my personality मतलब प्रॉब्ली नॉट द मोस्ट वर्ल्ड क्लास जोक्स बट बट इट इज कैसे ये फिर इस ह्यूमर में भी इम्पोस्टर सिंड्रोम आई नो इट्स टेरेबल सो मच एंड लर्निंग नीडेड एनी वे so humor has always been a big part of my life so for me that was also important i like it when when people say that you know your writing made me laugh or even chuckle or even smile and these are uh, like we've discussed these are difficult topics sometimes heavy topics uh, and i also want my audience to keep wanting to come back and you know i've 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 myself read so many uh, uh, writings about gender which make you feel depressed and make you feel sad and hopeless about life and you don't want to go back there there's there's there are serious issues and people have tackled them in serious voices and as a person with with a with a taste that prefers lightness and prefers entertainment for me i have not been able to watch a certain movie for example if it's very serious and very very uh, uh, stark in your face horrible realities of life dekho kitna dard to wo mere se nahi hota as a consumer i am not able to consume that and i find my find it that it disturbs my mental balance sanity and everything so i didn't want to inflict that on my readers even though i'm talking about difficult subjects so that that was a definite choice there that it has to be funny but again with the right balance of somehow in a way that doesn't trivialize it 
and then bollywood like i said i'm a fan it's been a part of uh, a constant backdrop to my life growing up so uh, that that is what came naturally to me and you know every everyone says that uh, i think you also said that in your writing course that don't look for the thing that you'll be the first person to write you know that oh duniya mein kisi ne is bare mein aaj tak likha i'll be the one who'll introduce this to humanity as i wait karo you will never find a chapter any subject to write about because everything has been touched upon by someone or the other but you are the only you in the world so your experiences your lived experiences your personality is what you bring to it so for me it was also that that it a conscious choice that i should write in a way that i talk to a friend i should write in the way that i na- normally would interact with people that's bringing my personality to it and uh, um, so so this was the most entertaining way that i could come up with and it it does evolve with time sometimes there are very serious topics which which i just cannot at all um, introduce any humor in like i've written about domestic violence miscarriages abortions these are not subjects in which you can bring in bollywood gifs but uh, but for the most part other subjects which are a part of everyday life there is a lot of satire sarcasm gifs memes and people have appreciated it a lot like my readers when they write back to me they say that you know i love the way you highlight these things and i want to and it makes me want to keep coming back for more and that's basically mission accomplished right that a person did not feel turned off by the gruesome realities of life and wants to actually read more about it and sort of like the wo kadvi dawai ke sath ek chamach chini that's what this is yeah no absolutely and uh, i just love the way you you know start so many posts just by saying hello ji you know mm-hmm. which is sort of uh, so immediately one hears your voice and then you know it just kind of flows naturally and there's a lot of humor in it also maybe at some point as we talk about the individual subjects i'll quote some of it now before we get to talking about some of the subjects you've tackled and i actually very deliberately want to go subject by subject and talk about a whole bunch of them because i think that Uh, many of them will be eye opening for many people or something that uh, all of them merit um, being spoken about and you know um, i i figured that to you uh, they might seem hey the you know normal and the stuff of everyday life yeah. and what's a big deal about it but i just feel it all bears talking about because what they have in common is that it is both something that is in front of us and yet we do not see it so for that reason alone but before we go there one sort of uh, final meta question in terms of how has the response uh, to womaning in india been from people what, uh, how has the response been from women and i would imagine there are two kinds of responses from men so you know tell me a little bit about these responses and um, you know how they've come your way what they've meant to you okay so i think we we discussed this uh yesterday when we were talking about what we'll talk about and i said that there is a whole unseen part of womaning that we should talk about which is what is not published out there what happens after i put out a piece and it's always like my favorite time is right after i've put a piece out because that's when um the the responses start coming in and somebody somebody will write a long email back to me somebody will send me a whatsapp message somebody will write retweet on twitter with a comment of their own and um often sometimes it's even happened that you know i've put out a piece with five stories and then the most dark story has come back as feedback to me that oh you know this happened to me too and by the way here's what happened and i was like my god this is the piece story which should have been the centerpiece of what i wrote and so i i love the feedback i get because it's often very personal it's not just that thumbs up acha likha it's not just that it's it's very very personal it's that you know this happened to me in my life my mother in law said this my father said that my boss said this in my colleague did that and people especially women will connect with real examples from their life and uh, you mentioned uh, men have two types of responses actually men have one type of response and women have two that was a surprise for me as well so men will the one response i get is appreciation from men because the rest of the men will ignore it it's very easy to ignore things right when you are living in a privileged life like we spoke about caste now i early, i used to really pride myself for a long part of my life that i don't even know what caste i belong to such a matter of pride dekho main kitni uncasteist hu but then later i realized that it's a privilege that is available only to upper caste people that or forward caste people that 
you don't know what caste you are if you are from a backward caste you will be made aware of your caste by the world right so just the fact that you don't know what caste you are defines shows what caste you are and it's a privilege and there's so much happening around me at all times which has to do with caste which i don't even see because my privilege has made my life a smooth highway why should i think about the uber khaba rasta on the side right and that's how i also think about what it must be like for men so even like i said the most well meaning men their life is so comfortable with all these privilege that they don't even know they have that there what is the incentive why should they worry about other people living a more difficult life of course yes one incentive is that these other people are your own wife your own mother daughter hamari mataen aur behne but uh, but other than that uh, if you just think about it as a the comfort of privilege it it happens to all of us and we are all guilty of it all of us who have who are privileged on one axis or the other so men will either ignore or because they are too privileged and why should they care about a woman writer or the ones who read are genuinely they send me things like you know this is an education i look forward to it every week every week you make me aware of something that i never thought about and they've been super supportive uh, there's a friend who is a ceo running his own firm now and he read the post i wrote about lack of uh, women uh, friendly infrastructure in workplaces and he said i am installing sanitary pad vending machines in my office toilet as soon as i finished reading this post i was like i am doing this right now so you know i've had such tangible impact from my readers and male readers have been nothing but kind because those who are unkind will not read women on the other hand have had a polar opposite response so one is uh, of course a vast majority of women who support it who love it who say that you know it felt like you were speaking my words this is what i always wanted to say it was like reading my own inner voice and i'm so happy you gave voice to this particular thing because this really bothered me and like i said lot of personal stories and very rich love that i get from them and then there are women who are offended like violently offended by it i have had uh, women shout at me on the phone दैट तुम कर क्या रहे हो तुम क्या लिखना चाहते हो क्या कर रही हो तुम यू आर करप्टिंग द माइंड ऑफ पीपल एंड आई हैड वेमेन लाइक शाउट एट मी एंड आई हैड विसरल वायलेंट रिस्पॉन्सेज टू वुमनिंग एंड आई ऑलवेज वंडर्ड दैट यू नो यू गोइंग एन इवन आई थॉट लाइक यू सेट जस्ट नाउ दैट मेन माइट हेट इट बट मोस्ट वेमेन विल लाइक इट बट देन वेन आई थॉट अबाउट इट डीपर आई थॉट यू नो दीज आर ऑफन वेमेन हु हैव लिव्ड फॉर ईयर्स एंड डेकेड्स in that um in in that restricted lifestyle and in that prison of gender roles ke main aurat hu mera kaam hai diwali ke din khade ho ke sabke liye pakode dalna or whatever the so, uh, x y z gender role has been a part of their identity for so many decades and they've lived it for so many decades that now if you question it it makes them feel like i lived my life wrong or i could have lived it better or you know this this piece of writing is highlighting something that has gone terribly wrong with my life and i don't want to pull on that thread so that's why women often have a very visceral response so my strongest harshest critics have been women not men that that's very strange so like how do they get in touch with you like when you mentioned that someone shouted at you on the phone yeah matlab ye interaction shuru kahan se hoti hai do, do they kind of cold call you or just connect with you out of the blue just to tell you that they hated it so much no the so so the cold hatred comes from via email or something sometimes um, angry mails will come but uh, ye phone call wala shouting happened because i was actually talking to a lady and about some other story and then she said she was uh, she was in her late 50s or 60s early 60s and she said that you know one issue that nobody talks about is uh, late uh, age care and how women are made responsible for care giving for their in-laws but not their parents so at a very senior age when a person is bedridden has to be cleaned has to be bathed you have to do like very very intimate care for that person at that age it will not be the son who will be asked to do that it will be the daughter in law even though if you think about it our parents have cleaned our poop when we were kids we should be the ones doing it for them when we grow up but no the men will not be asked to do it their wives will be asked to do it and conversely the wives are not often allowed to do it for their own parents because wahan ki bahu karegi wo kaam right so this was a subject i hadn't thought of because stage of life i have <laughs> not reached uh, that stage of life where your par- your care giving for your parents but uh, i was like oh wow this is insightful i have never thought of this but um, i don't have enough friends in that age group either who 
are at that stage of life so can you introduce me to some people who some more women who will tell me more stories about it and i'll build a piece around it so then she gave me numbers of some women and she said so and so is doing for her in law so and so uh, has her own mother is in an old age home but she's doing it for her father in law something like that so she gave me a couple of numbers and one of the numbers i called and that lady thought that somehow there was a miscommunication she thought i am calling to write a very positive story about what a great daughter in law she is but when i asked her i said do you not feel कि आपको अपनी मदर को केयर गिविंग करने का भी हक है या शुड योर हस्बैंड बी द वन कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टू वर्ड्स केयर गिविंग फॉर योर इन लॉज एट लीस्ट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग इफ नॉट डूइंग इट हिमसेल्फ देर इज नो शेम इन केयरिंग फॉर योर पेरेंट्स इन लॉ बट वाई ओनली वन जेंडर सो देन आई थिंक द लाइन ऑफ क्वेश्चनिंग वॉज समथिंग आई अज्यूम शी वॉज एक्सपेक्टिंग बिकॉज देर वॉज एन इंटरलोक्यूटर बिटवीन अस हुट टोल्ड मी दैट दिस पर्सन हैज द सेम इज एट द सेम स्टेज ऑफ लाइफ बट आई सपोज एज अ मिसकम्युनिकेशन सो शी डिड नॉट एट ऑल अग्री विद द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दैट आई वॉज कमिंग टू इट विन सो शी वॉज लाइक यू हैव अ अजेंडा अगेंस्ट वुमेन एंड अगेंस्ट कल्चर एंड सोसाइटी एंड तो खूब डांटा मेरे को फोन पर उन्होंने तो मैंने बोला सॉरी मैम आपको मैं कुछ मिसकम्युनिकेशन हुआ है इट्स ओके आई एम सॉरी आई हर्ट योर फीलिंग्स एल आई थिंक वील ड्रॉप इट हेयर देन आई कट द कॉल एंड देन शी सेंड मी व्हाट्सएप पे बहुत गाली गाली और बहुत कुछ एज लाइक कि यार आई मीन सी दैट्स वॉट आई एम सॉकिंग अबाउट यू डोंट देर आर थ्रेड्स दैट पीपल डोंट वॉन्ट यू टू पुल एट इन देर लाइफ इट्स लाइक द Uh, boss who got upset with me because i quit the service because he is in the service right he felt like it is a criticism it's a statement i'm making on his life choices yeah i remember once i had written this column about how it is immoral to have children right partly yeah, meant yeah. to be provocative but uh, the argument of course is uh, flawless the argument basically being that you should not do something to people without their consent and it is wrong to cause people pain or to kill them and basically when you are having kids you are guaranteeing that they will feel pain and they will die and there is no way of taking their consent and therefore it's wrong so that was my provocative argument and i've never got trolled by anyone like i've been trolled by the right i've been trolled by the left i've been trolled by shahrukh khan fans i've been trolled on religious grounds yeah. no one has told me like parents suddenly came out and trolled me yeah uh, and i was just thinking that hey i you know why are you taking it so personally you know yeah. you know theek hai you know it's people make choices yeah. and uh, which is also by the way something that you've kind of uh, written about uh, elsewhere and we'll uh, uh, kind of come to that so like i was sort of looking at all your posts and they seem to be fitting in a bunch of broad categories like you know women having to conform to stereotypes women living in a world designed for men violence in women you know what only women go through uh, women hobbling themselves and so on and so forth you mentioned that the way that you prefer to think about them is what women go through in offices what women go through in public spaces what women go through at home so you know which of these categories should be sort of start uh, talking about and addressing yeah and the fourth is your own image self image your own self image yeah, and the, your interior we life. also like imposter syndrome is the best example right the way we think about ourselves is also colored by gender yeah yeah yeah, yeah. let's start with workplace let's start with workplace you you have a great post which asks a question can women even do uh, jobs and uh, you know so tell me a little bit about the stereotypes that kind of apply here about the kind of jobs that women can do or can't do yeah. and uh, and and once they do have a job what they are expected to you know what is their role uh, t- t- what their role typically becomes within offices yeah so um, what kind of jobs women have we have the same kind of jobs that men do right but there is a well documented phenomena called the brilliance bias which is that when i ask you to think of 10 brilliant people you will probably name nine men and most people will name 10 men because we think that brilliance is a very male trait and for reasons that we've discussed before like nobody knows the the name of einstein's wife she was as brilliant as he was but brilliance bias hai we think that einstein is the history has also taught us that einstein was there the history is paved by great big men right so therefore there is a assumption when a man does a job that he is competent to do that job fair or unfair 
and um, there is but but when a woman is in the same position and has come to it through the same channel by the way having overcome many hurdles which are unseen she is constantly expected to prove her competence to do that job so this happens especially in stem where brilliance bias is the most in science technology engineering mathematics where it's a male dominated field and over and over women are asked ke can you do this are you able to do this i have spoken to women who are senior uh, uh, data scientists in big companies google and all and, and who who had youngsters come up to them and explain what is http young men will come and say like aapko to pata nahi hoga main bata deta hu <laughs> like that so it's 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 not even it's across hierarchy like it's not even that you will respect a person because they're more senior to you because she's a woman you will assume that she doesn't know what she's doing or uh, she's here because of some other reasons not because of her competence so that's a pain point that women have in many different aspects of their jobs uh, reiterated that it's assumed that i don't know how to do my job and this plays out in many ways so one very interesting thing uh, that a woman told me which i'm yet to write about is failure the permission to fail men have the permission to fail over and over again and will be given many more chances to fail than a woman if as a woman you fail once immediately you will be labeled ke because iska bachcha isliye ye fail hui because iski shaadi hone wali hai isliye ye fail hui because she is single isliye ye fail hui koi bhi cheez ho jayegi and somehow it will be uh, that failure will become your will be associated with you for life so women don't have that much scope to fail uh, women also don't have access to mentors at work for this reason because either male mentors are creepy themselves or there is an assumption that there's something creepy going on between a male mentor and female mentee even if it's completely harmless between them people will perceive it in a very different way than that relationship between two men what you spoke about what kind of jobs they end up doing so that's a post i wrote about are you the office mom so uh, this has happened to me it has happened to many women that lunch ka time hai to are mahima ko do na menu she will order women are better at this aur uh, acha so and so uh, ka wo hai uh, fa- fa- kuch organize karna hai get together ya yeah, outing chalo uh, mahima aap karo na ladies are better at this creative stuff aap log creative hote ho so it will be wrapped up in a compliment but it is ultimately that this is not a job good enough for us to do so you be the office mom and um, so women are often taking notes at meetings uh, women will be the one running a ppt down 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 button press karne ka kaam maine bhi bahut kiya <laughs> to pmo mein ja ke bhi kiya <laughs> prime minister ke samne bhi piche baith ke down button press kiya hai to like ye, this is often the task for which women are chosen ke we make good secretaries according to and you can be at any level of seniority or professional uh, achievement you these tasks will come to women another is uh, being heard in meetings so another thing that has also personally happened to me and i've written a post about it that pe- people and not just men people suffer from selective deafness so the chair of a meeting whether it is a man or a woman will give more uh, uh, weightage and attention to a man speaking than the, he or she does to a woman speaking so it's happened to me that i've been talking and somebody will interrupt me suddenly and talk over me and the ro- entire room's attention shifts to that person very seamlessly as if i and uh, makes me question was i even talking did i imagine that i was talking people have repeated what i have said sometimes were waiting more with a little creativity and they are given credit for the idea that i had proposed i had a colleague to whom i actually had a conversation with he was a nice guy but he used to interrupt me a lot and talk over me so because he was a nice guy i thought let me try having a rational conversation so outside the meeting room once i told him that listen you know you do this and he was like no i don't do this what are you doing very full denial and then next time i was talking in a meeting and he did this and then i just looked at him and i gave him a smile and the horror that descended on his face because then he realized that oh my god i was actually doing this to her and people are doing it unconsciously like by now we are conditioned to tune out a female sound meter ke jo female pitch hai us pe kuch bakwas hi baat chal rahi hai male pitch pe important baat chal rahi hai this is programmed in us we are conditioned to accept this both men and women so it's all these ways in which it plays out these biases about women's incompetence Yeah I'm I'm going to quote you a little bit where in you know in one of your posts you've spoken about uh you know uh how men are so much more 
assertive and how women are not even allowed to be assertive uh, in the sense that you write quote men negotiate their roles all the time such men are called driven and focused and go getters but i personally experience what happens when a woman tries the same you are either too meek or too aggressive i don't know any woman who has managed to hit that mythical sweet spot between the two stop quote and later on in your uh, post about selective deafness in meetings uh, you know you given uh, you gave the moral of the story as quote a woman who is quiet is incompetent a woman who speaks up is a fearsome terror there is no middle ground available yeah. stop quote and uh, you also uh, quoted uh, someone uh, called, uh, called pallavi who is giving her suggestion for how to deal with this and her suggestion is that whenever you have a suggestion frame it as a question so she says quote i started phrasing my opinions as questions to get heard i would intentionally sound stupid to make my point yeah. for example if i found a big gap in their balance sheet or profit and loss statement instead of saying that is wrong i would say why do we put it that way and in the process of answering my stupid question they would realize their mistake and figure out what they needed to do to correct it 6 months of this led to them making enormous changes putting me in charge of reviews and making sure i was part of every boardroom meeting stop quote and at least she got her due in terms of you know her critical thinking being recognized and being part of every boardroom meeting but in general uh, you know we spoken about that added layer which c- comes in when women are experiencing the world yeah. but is there also an added layer which women have to use when they are deciding how to interact with the world for example if i am saying something to uh, anybody in a meeting or with a friend or whatever matlab man mein jo aata hai main bol dunga i won't have to think about how will this go down yeah. how will i be pers- perceived will i be perceived as too forward or too demanding or whatever mm-hmm. i don't need to think like that mai bas bol deta hu is that a layer also that women always have with them ki you have to actually think about how your words will be perceived not just what you are saying 100% 200% i mean i think i spend more time thinking about how i'll be perceived than the content of what i have to say i'm usually quite clear on what my opinion is on things but the packaging is where most of my energy goes and that's true of most women like you gave the example of pallavi yeah i mean it's a success story in one way but it, to me it's also extremely unfortunate that somebody has to package their intelligent points as stupid questions in order to be because so much them. energy goes in the shit when yeah. you know whether other she could be doing something more productive for her yeah yeah no i mean i i used to compare I, at one point uh, again when this ooh penny dropped that is the expression <laughs> so when this penny dropped for me was a moment when i suddenly realized that me and i had a male colleague we were used to work at the same level and i realized the kind of emails we write are so different like So suppose you are my colleague and you have to say a meeting is postponed you will write dear so and so this meeting is postponed to 5:30 pm best amit that's the kind of email that my colleague used to write i would write dear sir due to some unfortunate and unforeseen circumstances and technical issues we are facing i apologize that this meeting has been postponed it is now be going to be scheduled at this time i will keep you updated if there's a change i apologize once again for the inconvenience warm regards i always use warm because you have to just regards also rude warm <laughs> regards bhai ma So that's how I write emails and it's such a waste of my time and effort and energy and creative writing for such a simple message and I would see his messages and I'd be like yaar aisa email mai likh dun to I'll become famous within one week ke this person writes rude emails and this again has been shown social experiments have been done there have been people I think there was an experiment where women wrote some emails as a man or a man wrote emails as a woman and they were perceived very differently and they were shocked by how um a, a person who's perceived to be a woman people take offense much quicker and will try to talk down to them explain simple things to them like they are dumb and when you when you perceive it's a man suddenly the respect goes up so these are all well documented phenomena that we all experience and it's a huge waste of our time effort energy but i have to do it in order to uh, be seen as someone worthy of being listened to by people Yeah and and the phenomenon you've pointed out in meetings that women are always getting interrupted it's like you said nothing at all you you'll say x and then some guy will say x and he'll get the tallies for it yeah. and i've noticed this even in panel discussions like the next time you're on youtube when you're watching some panel discussion and there's a male moderator just keep an eye on who he's interrupting and how much oh yeah and some people will of course interrupt everybody but in general 
uh, women get just interrupted so much more. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I have that lens, so I do see that. First of all, most panels are manals because there'll be only men. And when there is one lone woman, she'll definitely get the least air time on the panel, irrespective of how senior or how much of an expert she is in that subject matter. The least air time on the panel will go to the woman because everyone is always talking over her and interrupting her. Tell me also about physical spaces because to me, one of the best metaphors for how we live in a world designed by men for men is air conditioning. And you've also written a post about it. I'd written about it three or four years ago, I think, when Me Too happened. You know how air conditioning was designed in the 1950s and 60s when all offices were occupied mostly by men. And so it kept the male body temperature into account and that too, assuming that men are wearing suits, so 21 degrees was like the default. Now, the truth is that it's too cold for women. Women feel cold at uh, 21. Uh, You know, they need something warmer. And yet the default is that, uh, uh, you know, every office today will be too cold for women because it's set at that quote unquote male temperature. And therefore, one thing that you point out is very common for women to have is they'll, they'll have something called an office sweater. Yes. Ki broyer kologe, office sweater, official, kuch na kuch hoga, mm-hmm. Because they know that there's no way out. They've got to kind of deal with that. And you've also pointed out that this is also true when it comes to having women's toilets. And not just to say in Bihar, where they, you know, uh, where you point out this particular place where there were seven women in an office of 300, but even in Kerala, where there were 100 women out of a staff of 300. Mm -hmm. And even there, uh, there's one lady's toilet as compared to eight or 10 uh, ladies' toilets. And you've also pointed out this, uh, uh, another example, which another of the people who spoke to you gave, that she was in this place where, you know, there were enough women, but there were only two toilets on the floor. It was an office in a five-star hotel and there were both gents' toilets. So she spoke to her boss and her boss said, hai, it's fair enough, ek ko ladies kar dete. And one, people spread a rumor that she was uh, having an affair with the boss because why else would he agree to this? And two, these guys would slink in after office hours and they would pee all over the women's toilet because they were just so angry. Yeah, And so these are really two separate questions. And one is that just in terms of workplaces, do you see a growing awareness or are women just saying that this is not a fight worth fighting? We'll just satisfy. We'll, you know, even in your uh, post on pregnancy, you wrote about uh, you know, to punish a woman for being pregnant, she was actually put on a floor where toilet hai nahi. Usko mm. niche jana parega because they want to make life uncomfortable for her because she leaves. Mm. So in workplaces, do you see the general attitude of the women being that hai, jugar kar lenge, we'll manage, you know, uh, and you carry that layer where whenever you enter a place, you're quickly eyeing out where is the nearest toilet when you need it. And that's one question. And the second one is, what is with this male anger? You know, that story, I found it so disturbing that people are going after office hours and they're peeing all over the women's toilet because they're upset that women have a toilet. I know, right? It's like monkeys flinging feces at each other. Kindly <laughs> tell angry. me about this. What is this monkeys flinging? Monkeys, when they're angry, they, they shit in their hands and flee and, and they, they'll fling feces at each other when they're angry. Why do you think that is? That is a primal instinct which these men are also following. <laughs> okay. Let's no, pee all a... over the toilet that we don't like. Hmm. Yeah. So, A, how do women cope? And B, why are men so angry? Like, you know, which is why I thought when I asked you that question earlier about the reactions to womaning, I thought that men say two kinds of angry. Bhi hoga. Now, as you're pointing out, that angry kind probably doesn't read or perhaps even can't read. You know, but in general, there is this anger. So, yeah, 100%. So, um, first part is about women. How do they cope? I think most women suffer in silence. That is the uh, majority reaction. Very few m- women are uh, like me who will make a nuisance of themselves and and the lady in my story who went and told at least had the guts to go and talk to the boss about it so first of all most senior professionals are male glass ceiling so upar se koi soch hi nahi in issues ke bare mein because they are men they are incapable of thinking about these things because who has the time to apna profit loss ye sab cheeze sochna hai market share sochna hai sabke beech mein who's going to sit and think about are is my do my employees have enough women toilets and 
what are the facilities in these toilets no no one has time to think about it uh, so mostly the bosses are men and so they don't have even it's a complete blind spot for them and most women who are working at these lower level positions don't have the voice or the agency or the courage to talk about it you know the word toilet is not something that women will use very freely around men anyway because of all the cultural filters that we have like i am the only person here probably who's talking this much about toilet you use the word tatti on my show which i, I know, think right? is a first thank it's you for it it's a first that. right yeah so that's what so that, i mean this is this is very shocking for most people uh, so culture society mein ye baatein nahi hoti and therefore culture society mein women are not able to voice these uh, demands or expectations and women are also in our own way uh, conditioned to accept this as the lot of life not question it hai to hai jana hai upar to jana hai टॉयलेट के लिए दूर जाना है तो जाना है पूरी बिल्डिंग में सौ औरतें हैं पर टॉयलेट्स वन इज टू टेन का रेशो है तो ठीक है करेंगे सब उसी में एडजस्ट लाइन लगा के दिस इज हाउ वीमेन आई थिंक फॉर द वास्ट मेजोरिटी ऑफ वीमेन कोप लाइक दिस बिकॉज ऑफन दे आर वर्किंग एट अ जूनियर लेवल कम्पेयर टू मैन एंड कल्चरली दे हैव बिन ट्रेन टू बी क्वाइट सो मोस्ट वीमेन सफर इन साइलेंस वाई इज देर एंगर इन मैन आई थिंक वुमनिंग वुड ऑल्सो मेक मोर मैन एंग्री इफ इट हैड अ टेंजिबल इम्पैक्ट ऑन देयर लाइफ राइट so i don't think uh, a newsletter passively sitting on the internet is really making any tangible difference to their life but if it did then they would be angry too i i know a, a friend of mine who um, who's been a active supporter and she's many of these stories like all the names are changed by the way the names you're taking are not the real names of the women so uh, uh, you've already spoken one or two of her stories so uh, she has been an active supporter and she reads it regularly and she shows it to her husband also sometimes that ye meri kahani hai kabhi kabhi when it's a professional story personal nahi batati hai but uh, so recently she was telling me that she was having a fight with her husband about some gender roles in the house that she was constantly care giving for both children and she had a trip a opportunity coming up and for foreign something travel and he said no you're not going who's going to take care of the kids you know and they they had like a serious fight about it and uh, at one point he said ke ye sab tum ye womaning padh ke seekh rahi ho na so for me it was a matter of great pride that it is being that it is a man is seeing this as something that empowered a woman enough to question the inhuman conditions he is enforcing on his wife but also that is the only place where it had as soon as it started having real impact on his real life that's when he got upset with it and violently upset with it anything that actually will take away some of your male privilege will hurt you that is a point where and and again people seeing this as a zero sum game right like here it is a zero sum game there are only two toilets to agar ek toilet ladies ban gaya to mera ek toilet kam ho gaya as a man to i am angry ke unko kyu de diya aurton ko utha ke mera toilet to therefore seeing not seeing it as a larger thing where women have been suffering for so many years i am the one who was occupying their rightful toilet and now it's only going back to the person who it truly belong to that's not how they'll see it they'll see it as i have for last 5 years been peeing in this toilet suddenly who are you to tell me i can't anymore so let me fling some feces at you <laughs> yeah i i love that line unko kyu de diya mera toilet utha ke hmm. which is uh, quote of the episode what you also kind of point out is how uh and this is again something men will kind of miss or just take for granted how there's a boys club at a, in every office and it stops women from kind of getting ahead like there was a 2020 harvard study you've cited uh, which says quote over a four year period male employees assigned a male manager were promoted faster than their female counterparts with no observable di- difference in performance women in turn were promoted at the same rate whether assigned to a male manager or female manager male employees benefited from the higher rates of social interactions with their male managers stop quote and this might mean you know after work you're going out for a drink with your uh, male colleagues which women sometimes can't do because hey they got to get back home there's food to cook the, all, all that other stuff is happening or they may not even want to yeah. you know it can just manifest in working late in office where the women will be like theek hai 6 baj gaye main ghar ja rahi hu mm. but the men will stay till 9 10 o'clock yeah. and you know i think one of the people you spoke to commented on the actually the same amount of work is getting done men are just stretching it out it's like parkinson's law right work yeah. expands to fill the time available you know so i remember mere ek purane office mein pool table hua karta tha to hum kaam karte the late puri raat pool khelte the but it's like you know and that obviously leads to a bonding among all the people who are there and all that shit is happening so how does one look at this because then what 
happens here in a sense is that all the men have the potential to form this closely knit community of people who are doing all of these things together mm -hmm. and all the women individually are kind of outside of this yeah right how does that pervert workplaces and w how are there ways out of it because these are all individual choices yeah. you know i can well you know if you ask a guy he'll say that listen i'll go out drinking with whoever i choose right mm -hmm. you know mai kya karu no one is stopping her from coming yeah. so these are all individual choices and yet collectively there's a massive problem for everybody so uh, you know what are what are sort of your thoughts yeah so you've summarized the problem perfectly that it is a close knit boys club and men um, given that incentives are aligned to it that by staying late at office or going out for drinks after work i am getting that exclusive access to my boss and i am able to be party to big decisions being taken where after hours when women have all gone home so why shouldn't i capitalize on that so i again this is you know we talked about how earlier you have a problem with government system but not the people in that system so same here i have a problem with the system not the men and women in it because like you said these are individual choices that they are making based on their life conditions and uh, we can't say ke toilets tab banenge jab ka system khatam ho jayega so we can't say ke pehle gender discrimination khatam karo tab boy, hum boys club ke bare mein kuch karenge so we can't say that let the women first become equal partners to their husband and let their husbands take care of their children so the women can come here and have a drink with us as colleagues that's not going to happen anytime soon so i think the simpler solution and that's why i started with workplaces because it has a little more simpler solutions that simpler problems to solve is is this is on the boss basically if you are the if you are taking uh, important decisions about the about uh, strategies and and uh, professional decisions are being made outside the office hours or the office space on a sutta break or over drinks later or over the pool table if professional decisions are being taken in these settings then that is a toxic workplace for a woman to be in because you are telling you are creating a system where an employee has no choice but to stay after hours and that could even be a man it could be a man who says i do want to go back home to my kids or even to watch tv after hours and i don't want to sit here up beyond 6 pm or beyond working hours so you have created an incentive system where people are forced to make these choices so men and women they are all reacting to the best of their own uh respective limitations and circumstances but the simple solution to this is that the that bosses need to reflect on this and and see that are we really giving an undue advantage to a colleague who's able to um uh, go uh, to stay longer or hang out after hours and there is up to a certain limit it is team building beyond which it is a boys club so you know things like meet on a meeting after hours ki jagah why not meet on a is de dedicate an afternoon and invite families let people bring their kids and their spouses it's a much more wholesome environment where women can also participate and you can do team building in a more healthier environment more equitable environment so there are small steps like this many of which i've mentioned in the post also but it's right now at least at the workplace these uh, biases are relatively easier sorted out but it needs that amount of reflection from the CEOs organizations bosses yeah and and the key point is that it's actually in the self interest of the bosses and the ceos to take this into account like uh, i keep referring to this uh, study which i discovered through philip tetlock's book super forecasting where he points out that when a group is making a decision the most important factor in the quality of the decision is not the education or the intelligence of the people involved it is a diversity mm -hmm. the more diverse a group you get you will get better decisions yeah. which when you think about it is so obvious that it even seems banal that obviously you have different viewpoints colliding you're more likely to reach a good decision so it is therefore in the interest of uh, bosses to build diverse workplaces and i think there was a study in the us uh, a while back a few years ago which also showed that uh, companies which discriminate do worse in the market yeah. so purely from uh, from a position of self interest you want a diverse workplace and in this particular context that means uh involving the women as deeply in decision making as a men are involved and a boys club really gets in the way of that because then you're kind of shutting the women out yeah. but uh, you know how you get to those solutions becomes something you know is complicated as as you've pointed out
Another point that you mentioned in the context of offices is the different ways in which we treat maternity and paternity. Yeah. Ki theek hai, maternity ke liye it's understood that uh, even if it's fought, but it's understood that women need to go, they need to spend time with their kids and all of that. But paternity leave, even when it is there on the rolls, me, uh, you know, men are frowned upon if uh, they actually take it. I think you quoted someone who mentioned that people in his office when he took paternity leave, um, they told him, quote, you will understand at the time of appraisal that you shouldn't have taken it. Yeah. Stop quote. The expectation being ki theek hai, Sunday को बच्चा हुआ है लेकिन वेनेसडे को आप ऑफिस आ जाओ लोग कंग्रेचुलेशन बोलेंगे और फिर आप मीटिंग पे लग जाओ क्योंकि घर पे कोई है जो संभाल रहा है राइट संभाल रही है आई एम सॉरी माय दिस इज नॉट इट्स अ बंगाली थिंग इट्स अ बंगाली थिंग या आई ब्लेम माय हाफ बंगाली थिंग फॉर दिस एंड यू नो सो या टेल मी अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट दिस बिकॉज़ यू नो देयर आर मेनी मेन हु नाउ टेक फादरहुड सीरियसली Uh, hopefully <laughs> and who uh, who want to participate uh, you know uh, like one of the men you interviewed who said i wanted to be with my child that is reason enough you know but uh, you know how are attitudes towards this evolving and if it does hurt careers if your bosses are going to feel that hey this guy is not committed enough he, you know why is he going back home wife to hai so does it then create a disincentive uh, towards Uh, that kind of caring parenthood if your office environment is kind of like this and does one see does one see a drift towards change and this is perhaps a separate question so you can take it after this mm-hmm. but in the office context does one see a drift towards change uh, uh, you know in, in a longer term thing even if it's slow you know is there change happening yeah so um, before i talk about the professional side of what men face at the workplace i want to also talk, underscore the importance of paternity leave on the personal front so yes india is has a very progressive maternity leave policy 6 months compulsory leave which is um, um, by global standards one of the best so we we've, we've done well on that front at least we are giving women the time to recuperate after childbirth and get into a I'll, i'll actually interject and point out that as pragati editor at commission a bunch of pieces on this devika kher suman joshi a bunch of different people have written pieces and uh, the maternity law that we uh, have in india has actually hurt women more than helped them as a lot of well intentioned laws do in the sense that women's employment has certainly gone down because yeah. of it and this is something we predicted be- before it happened because you're changing the incentives yeah. so the intentions were great the outcomes have been bad and i still feel that while it's a problem you absolutely have to address a, a law is such a blunt weapon yeah. and can backfire so spectacularly hmm. as seems to have happened in this case but i'm sorry uh, carry on yeah no so uh, the the solution i want to propose also addresses that problem um and i agree with you that the law has been very blunt but also i mean it's it's if we think of it as a baby steps evolution so first thing at least give women time to recuperate and uh, uh, at least 6 months of breastfeeding for the infant is good and so on and so forth so for all these reasons good theek hai apne time diya auraton ko ghar baith ke to bond with the babies but i also think that that is exactly where it is lies the genesis of uh, gender roles in a marriage and in a and therefore later in a household and I, I, honestly if you had to tell me that mahima you can change one thing in the world i would say change this give all men equal and compulsory paternity leave so first of all compulsory makes it uh, in not no longer voluntary like right now there is ha it is suggested itna le lo thoda sa zyada kam and then the boss will give dhamki of appraisal and then make you come to office anyway or sometimes the man anyway doesn't want to go so he will he will use the boss as an excuse the reason why i think one one thing i would change in the world is compulsory paternity leave my bigger reason is personal not professional which is that uh, i feel that up to a marriage no without children it is relatively still uh, possible to maintain an equal marriage in the relatively equal relationship where both partners have their own personal space professional space have their own uh, uh, identities their own and then pursuing their things in life growing together love blah blah the critical point at which beyond which gender roles take over and and in my opinion 99.99% of marriages in india are unequal and i'm just leaving 0.01% for so that people don't get angry at me because frankly, not all marriages hashtag, hashtag not all marriages ha 
तो इसीलिए बट अदरवाइज इट्स इट्स आई हैव नेवर मेट एनी कपल विच हैज एन इक्वल मैरिज इंक्लूडिंग माई ओन एंड दैट हैपन्स द क्रिटिकल पॉइंट इज वैन यू हैव योर फर्स्ट बेबी बिकॉज वेन द आफ्टर हैविंग अ बेबी इज अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव एक्सपीरियंस फॉर द primary caregiver i'm not saying mother i'm saying primary caregiver whoever is bonding with a baby in their infancy their brain goes through biological chemical changes they become much more um, uh, aware of all the um, you know primal risks to the baby safety we are all animalistic pr- programming bol rahi hu main yahan pe which is that when you're caring for an infant you're always on the lookout for what all can hurt them which is how in my house you'll find no sharp edges anywhere like fully baby proofed and i walk into a room and now my brain automatically goes to all the sharp edges where a child can get hurt even if there's no child in the room so that's that's the kind of reprogramming that your brain goes through in those early months and there's a bonding with the child and then there's an awareness of all the mental load that goes with the child which is ke diaper khatam hone wale hain bachcha bada ho gaya hai naye kapde khareedne hain there's all of these small small things which add up and over time in the mother's mind because mothers are the primary caregivers in 100% of indian marriages in the mother's mind all of this reprogramming has happened and the father is not around when this is happening because there is no compulsory paternity leave and if it is um, um, it's government gives 15 days which it which is i think the best right now because private sector mein to i have heard of men who were doing emailing from the hospital also so even monday to oh, sunday ko baby or wednesday ko office bhi nahi hai it's literally on the day they are working so uh, it's 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 much worse in private sector and but also there in every sector so making it uh, compulsory forces the man to be there even if it is i'm not saying that all men need to be forced to be around their kid but many men will think of it as yes fatherhood is important to me but also at the same time their primary identity in their mind is that i am general manager so and so i am senior associate so and so i am vice president so and so that is to my mind most men have their primary identity as that whereas for me as a woman i also had that primary identity until 3 years back and then my brain got reprogrammed and today my primary identity is that i am a mother if you ask me who are you first thing i will think of is that so that that identity shift does not happen in men because they are not around in those initial crucial months and i think if they were around for that period of for that period then even the most hardened of men would actually come to see life from the from the perspective of a caregiver which is how women see it and it would equalize so much it would solve so many problems and uh, coming to what you said about how policy has unintentionally disadvantaged women if you made it compulsory for men also then that disadvantage and mismatch goes right now the company has no added advantage in hiring a man over a woman because 6 mahina dono ko hi dena padega agar bachcha hua to there is another aspect that uh, once i wrote this post uh, hr uh, head of one of the biggest startups in india actually discovered it after i wrote this because he had written a book about it and then he wrote to me and we did a call and he said that i want to talk to you about this and drill down and his thing was that uh, indian government has forced it on companies and it is it is unviable for many companies to uh, give you full salary for 6 months and in many other countries the government subsidizes it or you have between a couple you have one year of leave to chahe 6 mahina tum 6 mahina mein chahe aage piche chahe 3 9 we can divide it but the government will subsidize our firms for taking it so there are many models of making it more doable and practical and viable but at the end of the day i feel very strongly that compulsory and equal paternity leave for men and it has to be the lever i feel very strongly about the social problem you're describing obviously but i i feel equally strongly that uh, a, co- a coercive so the coercive hand of the state will not solve it it will make it worse hmm. like f- f- like first of all the reason the maternity law backfired so spectacularly is for many firms is simply they're not viable if you're a five person firm and you're hiring a sixth person yeah. you know uh, it is not rational to hire someone who could then just go off on a paid leave for six months you can't afford it your company could go down if something like that happens now it is unfortunate but it is rational and uh, i think uh, Team Lee's had once forecast at the time this law came out that it would lead to a loss of between eight to eleven lakh jobs for women. So forgive me if I get the figure mm-hmm. wrong, but I'll link to those pieces by mm-hmm. uh, Devika and Suman uh, in the show notes. And the problem that would then happen if you may, you're saying that make it uh, make a compulsory paternity leave for men as well, uh, which would solve the problem. It actually wouldn't. 
because then it would create a bias for hiring unmarried men uh, mm-hmm. with whom this danger wouldn't be there like honestly any uh, you know uh, uh, there are a lot of social problems which can only be solved uh through voluntary means through social action you bring the coercive hand of the state in it leads to all kinds of perverse outcomes uh as has happened with the maternity leave act which has really harmed women you know you might think intention is great you're guaranteeing something that every woman should be entitled to but the point is she's not getting that job in the first place you know so you have to look at outcome and not intentions which in my view is uh, you know the most common mistake people make about public policy no fair point uh, um only one uh, response is that why would there be a bias for single men because single men can also get married and have a baby just as a single woman no, can pro- get married no it's probabilistic thinking a single man is less likely to be your father say within a short term period if he's single first he has to get married then he'll have kids but that's true of a single woman also right or hmm single woman also first has to get married and then have kids yeah i would Usko imagine there would be more of a bias against a newly married woman than against a single woman ha huh. which is true even today but which i'm saying is, that between a single today. man and a single woman there would be not much difference yeah but i'm saying why do you want to and let me also tell but you also yeah i agree with you that coercive hmm. hand of the state is not the answer no, and I'll, i'll also no i'll tell you what the answer would be in my view yeah. the answer would be is uh, what i would like to see like i always believe that the best regulation is competition hmm. it, it doesn't come from the coercive hand of the true. state so what i would love to see is companies competing yeah where companies can reach out and say we want the best talent if you're a woman we'll give you 6 months maternity leave some nice bol do let somebody else say we'll give you 8 months let somebody say ki paternity leave 6 months we'll give you let them compete on that front but before they compete on that front what is important is that those things 6 months paternity leave etc etc become attractive enough for society at large for it to be viable for companies to compete on that front and for that you need a change in social attitudes uh which happens at a glacial pace uh which society might even go backward sometimes but the point is a coercive hand of the state won't get this so that is just my sort of uh, uh, little uh no i don't know about that because I, i i i was about to say what you said about competition because there are all these gender rankings these days you know i mean and many companies will proudly put it on their website bada sa banner ke ranked number 1 in so and so gender ranking great workplace for women so that is already happening to some extent but it is in all of these you know tier 1 tier 2 polished companies where white color ka office or ac andar but what about the women who are working say in a public sector bank or in a uh, machine yeah, i, I a agree with factory. you but i'm saying that the coercive hand of the state is will make their lives worse it's not even a, a, a partial solution it is not a solution at all it literally makes a problem worse and i don't just mean in this context of maternity leave or whatever in literally anything where the where the state passes regulation with a good intention you really need to look at the outcomes i mean india has for example been hobbled so long by bad labor laws which are meant to protect labor but have exactly the opposite impact uh, and and we've suffered so deeply for that you know and so on and so forth but that's a minor point i mean i uh, you know solutions are a different matter but i totally agree with you on the extent of the problem and uh, if men were forced to look after their kids for the first 6 months mm. uh, you know one would hope that at least some of the blindness and the unseen nature of what it involves would go away yeah so i mean uh, there is no perfect answer right now on how it should be done because like you're saying the self voluntary thing will happen like it's like saying caste system jab jayega tab toilet banayenge so it's also that that pay, uh, uh, difference is there like for me personally i just became a mother 3 years back and if this law was not there maybe like the us i would have been forced to uh, um, come with my surgery ka stitches still unhealed and come into work and sit at a desk crying because i am still undergoing postpartum depression and my baby is one week old baby is being handled by someone else. so that real impact meri life mein <laughs> it has made my life tangibly better even though i agree with you that in the long run it has hurt women professionally yeah i mean that's unseen right all the women yeah. who didn't have a job to begin with because they never got hired because they insane, because they perverted the incentive uh i totally agree with you on the desirability of it but can it be enforced by the state is a uh, yeah that's what dif- so the way we do it is different but i think my point and that i've made in the piece also is i'm not taking a stand yeah. on how it should be done but this is something that will solve a huge yeah. amount yeah. of gender yeah. issues not just at the workplace but also in our private lives 
yeah i i i couldn't uh, agree more so let's let's now go to the other domain where women are kind of also stuck and there's there's no getting away from it which is the domain of the home yeah. right and this is also where stereotypes about what roles are can be particularly pernicious and um, you'd written a great post which also became incredibly viral i think it's one of your most popular posts called the raja beta syndrome yeah. so tell me about raja beta what is raja beta तो राजा बेटा सिंड्रोम वॉज वन ऑफ दोज पोस्ट विच आई रोड थिंकिंग कि ये तो बहुत ऑब्वियस है लाइक यू सेड यू नो ये तो सबको पता है इसमें क्या ही है एज लिटरली इट वॉज लाइक अ स्लो व्यूर वीक एट वुमन लाइक ये कहानियाँ तो सबको पता है चलो ये लिख देते हैं इस बार एंड 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 सम हाउ इट 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 जस्ट कॉट ऑन and and to this day i get screenshots from people that you know i'm on so and so whatsapp group and randomly someone's posted your raja beta piece there and i'll be like are ye abhi tak ghoom raha hai but it has it took a life of its own so raja beta syndrome is essentially that in uh, the indian fa- average indian family we will treat our uh, boys as royalty right from the day they are born and even before they are born we are doing gender selection of children infants and fetuses but uh, even the the and 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 during childhood obviously um, uh, partial treatment to the son but the the interesting bit is that even after they grow into adults we are continue to treat our sons like rajas and princes actually rajkumar so uh, and 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 then it's a very common in the hindi belt at least for thing for uh, uh, parents especially mothers to say ye mera raja beta hai and that's how you show love Laja beta, laja. <laughs> so, so <laughs> that's that's how many North Indian parents and mothers, especially, will show love to the child. And ठीक है for जब तक वो बेटा छोटा सा बेटा है ठीक है अब बनाओ राजा बेटा and there is obviously no रानी बेटी but फिर भी अब बनाओ आप ठीक है it's a it's a child ultimately and it's getting love. It's sad that the other child is not getting as much love but children all children deserve receive and deserve love. So ठीक है up to that point it's fine but the funny thing is when you grow up and you are a 40 year old man and 60 year old man you are still the raja beta of the house that's where it gets funny so uh, this this piece is a compilation of many stories from women about how uh, many of them are in quote unquote equal marriages where the man is also doing the dishes the man is also helping in the kitchen and couple especially before children like i said it is possible to have some semblance of equality or equity and uh, चल रही है लाइफ वैसी बट सडनली सास ससुर आगे रहना शुरू होंगे एंड एंड वीमेन हैव बी सेड दैट यू वी विजिबली सी अ डिफरेंस इन आर हजबेंड्स दैट दे जस्ट टर्न इन टू सम अदर क्रीचर्स एंड दे टर्न इन टू दिस क्रीचर कॉल्ड राजा बेटा विच इज के पानी का ग्लास उठा करके किचन में नहीं रखना है सो देर इज अ स्टोरी देयर अबाउट हाउ देर इज दिस कपल सेटल्ड इन लंडन एंड शी इज द वाइफ इज वर्किंग एट हर डेस्क एंड शी टेल्स द हजबेंड के कैन यू जस्ट रीफिल माई ग्लास ऑफ वाटर एंड ही डज इट एंड द मदर इन लॉ हु इज विजिटिंग दैम इज हॉरिफाइड एंड नेक्स्ट टाइम शी इज कीपिंग एन आई ऑन दैट ग्लास के कब इसका पानी थोड़ा कम हो एंड रन एंड पिक्स ऑफ दैट ग्लास एंड गोज एक्ट टू द किचन टू रीफिल इट के कहीं मेरे राजा बेटा को उंगली ना उठानी पड़ जाए शुड नॉट हैव टू लिफ्ट अ फिंगर एंड सो सिमिलरली के बर्तन करते हुए अच्छा नहीं लगता बेटा करता हुआ मैं कर दूंगी सो मदर्स इन लॉ आर मोस्ट गिल्टी ऑफ दिस के डोंट डिस्टर्ब हिम आई विल डू दिस दिस अ स्टोरी ऑफ अ मदर हु इज ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग मदर जस्ट गॉन बैक टू वर्क सो लाइफ इज एज स्ट्रेसफुल एज इट कैन बी एंड शी सेज आई कम बैक होम एंड माई मदर इन लॉ इज इन ऑलरेडी इन द किचन द हजबेंड इज रीच बिफोर बट ही इज वॉचिंग टी वी एंड मदर इन लॉ इज ऑलरेडी गॉट अ लिस्ट ऑफ चोर्स रेडी फॉर मी when i have still have to feed the baby i still have come back after long commute from work this fellow sitting at home working from home and watching tv and uh, if i if i try to involve him also in the chores she'll come and physically body block me that nahi nahi usko disturb mat karo wo aaram kar raha hai physically body block me <laughs> <laughs> basically yeah that that happens so i mean so that's the, those were the stories that i got from many women and i put them together and i used just from the movie mughal e azam and uh, and how you know dilip kumar ke around sab log dance chal raha hai pyar kiya to darna kiya sab log usko aake wo narkali usko gulab deti hai aur rajmata is looking at him with those ha- heart shaped eyes and so that's that's pretty much how it plays out in most uh, indian households and it really struck a chord like i said for me it was a very obvious almost banal thing that i wrote but then when i wrote put it out women were like this yahi yahi to hai sachai yahi hai asliyat and so to this day it's being circulated i keep getting messages of people who just discovered it and loved it 
in fact one of your gifs there uh, has this caption of rajmata ji looking really upset and i love the caption uh, which is rajmata when raja beta accidentally does a chore <laughs> and you've also sort of pointed out something that i found really amusing that a couple of the women were i think talking about how normally my husband helps out yeah. but when his parents come yeah. he will try to hide that he's helping out yeah. you know which is a very interesting kind of preference falsification because preference falsification is when you feel one way mm. but the general norm is something else so you don't show it hmm. right and normally the way preference falsification plays out is that you feel something uh, regressive yeah. right like but because you're not supposed to say these things in a polite society yeah. you don't say it yeah. you know unless a switch is flicked or something and here is like the other way around hmm. that the guy actually feels something progressive he feels he should help his wife hmm. but he's scared to kind of act out on it in front of his mother which which or, or his parents or whatever which yeah. is Right so, so preference falsification is about hiding shameful feelings. Yeah. And so that's the point I'm trying to make that wanting to be an equal husband to your wife is a shameful feeling to this day. Another sort of stereotype which hobbles women at home hmm. is the pressure to make babies. Hmm. Right? Like um, uh, you have a, a post about this as well about how so many women are just looked as at as childbearing vessels. Yeah. That if you haven't had a child, it's a problem. Uh, you know, random uncles you meet once in eight years will be saying, "When is the good news, beta?" Yeah. and uh, so on and so forth. At some point, uh, you know, uh, one of your, uh, I think, uh, was it you? Yeah, writing about yourself or one of your guests, where good things happen at this gathering and everybody's congratulating you and all, and then this auntie lady type. calls you to the side mm. uh, and instead of congratulating you about how well your career is going she says ye sab to hota rahega tum ye batao ki bacche karne ka kya plan hai ha, that was me that was you yeah. yeah so tell me a little bit about how these pressures play out because like one of the themes i've been exploring in past episodes mm. is uh, this uh, distinction between thick and thin desires mm. where uh, thick desires are desires which are kind of intrinsic to you but thin desires are mimetic desires so there are mimetic desires in the sense that you want something because somebody else wants it or it seems like something mm-hmm. that uh, is you start desiring it not for rational reasons of your own but because it seems something like that so i could want a mercedes c class and that's a thin desire because yeah. it's not intrinsic or i think the most common thin desire would be people wanting to get married and have kids right right and they may not intrinsically crave the companionship or any of the things that are beautiful about marriage or they may not crave parenthood or they may not even want to be parents but it's just a way that life unfolds and therefore you're supposed to do it yeah. and is this a sort of chakra view that women are then trapped in that once you enter the flow of things it's incredibly hard to get out so even if you're in a uh, you know relatively modern marriage where you and your partner can decide ki theek hai nahi karna hai but despite that those pressures are sort of there it's it's just this constant din in your head yeah no so those are definitely there and they are in, uh, expressed much more strongly or in enforced uh uh much more strongly on women than on men so yeah there is a thing timeline about you have to be married by this age and again that timeline is much more flexible for men than for women not just for biological reasons but also social reasons so a 40 year old man is still obviously hamara single raja beta but uh, but uh, 30 year old single woman is just uh, the worst thing that has happened to her parents ever so that's that's i've also been on the receiving side of it because by punjabi standards i married late and so my single status was like a societal issue being discussed of a net large social gatherings and so i mean again credit to my parents that they didn't let a lot of that pressure transfer to me and uh, i also very consciously was living as across the halfway across the country to avoid that but it is it is real these this is it was not a big desire for me in my uh, life at that point of time but it was just something that you thin desire is something that you want because you're supposed to want it yeah. right essentially so it was just that oh, you should want to get married because you should want to get married there is no better reason for it and uh, um, and in that uh, rush for these thin desires we also ignore the quality aspect of it that it should be a good marriage is not something that's on the agenda <laughs> it has to be a marriage <laughs> that is all that we want right from women shaadi kar lo bas kisi se kar lo so and and over time even our standards of the kind of guy will keep falling because tumhara shelf life khatam ho raha hai so it's 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 actually getting worse as you are aging because your prospects will be 
much thinner and many points in my life i've been told that i will not be able to find a husband while i was single for various reasons uh, so so yeah this is this this pressure is real on women and the pressure similarly to have kids is very real and and, and i've i think i've given an example of a woman who was in an abusive marriage also who was being forced ke bachcha kar lo so that's another very classic indian thing ke you are in already in a toxic relationship which which needs to end which deserves to end which should be ended and instead uh, the solution that society chipkaws on it is bachcha kar lo and bachcha is not going to solve a bad marriage it's going to make things worse because bachcha is a huge amount of responsibility and you should not bring a child into a marriage that is already already disturbed in any way i mean i i th- personally feel there should be an entrance exam before having kids <laughs> and i think aap to coercive hand of state har cheez mein har cheez mein dal do mere hisab se to ek upsc ka exam iske liye bhi rakho ki certificate jab tak nahi milega bachche nahi kar sakte i mean the kind of uh, screwed up situations in which i have seen kids being brought into is criminal so i don't agree with you that having kids is immoral but it is immoral to have kids in such situations when you are not ready which i think exactly. is actually actually the i i love this poem by philip larkin so i'm just going to read it out here it's called this be the worse yeah. they fuck you up your mom and dad they may not mean to but they do yeah. they fill you with the faults they had and add some extra just for you but they were fucked up in their turn by fools in old style hats and coats who half the time were soppy stern and half at one another's throats man hands on misery to man it deepens like a coastal shelf get out as early as you can and don't have any kids yourself stop quote and I, i i love these lines also just as poetry man hands on misery to man it deepens like a coastal shelf what a lovely line um <laughs> uh, let's sort of talk about uh you know another aspect that i think is unseen to most people uh, and perhaps often women may not also think about it in these terms which is mental load which is a invisible labor of managing a household yeah. now i'll quote these lovely lines because you know you might be modest about this but a lot of your writing really sparkles and um, uh, these lines are from the end of your post on this where you write quote men this Can I tell you a secret? If you think that the romance in your life has dwindled after a few years of marriage, it might be because your wife is now basically a grocery list trapped in the body of a woman. Try taking some of the mental load off her brain, and behold, as she begins to turn human again. Uh, stop quote. And then you point out that your husband just installed a grocery app on his phone, and you love him more than ever. Mm-hmm. But uh, elaborate on this a bit. A grocery list. trapped in the body of a woman yeah. you know elaborate on this because i you know someone like me when i'm working on something during the day i have the luxury of locking myself in my room hmm. and thinking of nothing but whatever it is that i'm working on women can never do that yeah. right mostly uh, tell me a little bit about why yeah i think i've heard in one of your episodes you criticizing people who criticize cal newport the deep work thing and people people like me basically who say that deep work our privileges available only to men no i say that myself but i think criticizing cal newport for it is not fair because newport actually for those who have read the book he talks about four models of work mm-hmm. and that deep work thing where you lock yourself up for a long period of time is one of those four models of work mm-hmm. there are other f- models of work which uh, uh, you know the the way walter isaacson for example does it switching uh, on and off is what women are basically doing all the time yeah. so i don't think so i think people attack a straw man version of the book yeah. otherwise as i said earlier i agree that uh, you know um, uh, that women have it much harder and even some men have it much harder that you cannot uh, you may not always have the luck and the privilege to set a side large chunks of time but yeah. that's not what newport is saying newport is laying out a, a bouquet of options but sorry carry on yeah so i mean i i find most of male self help and productivity hacks and tips to be very uh, have to have that carry that blind spot with them that they're designed by men and for men and it's not things that women can ever conceivably do because again of the gender roles that we have and the uh, an extra amount of responsibility that is thrust on women um so so yeah how what it means to be a walking grocery list so i am a walking grocery list and uh, the the uh, another analogy that my husband and i often use is tabs mere dimag mein kitni tabs open hai like on a browser at any point of time i'm like i have got like 
ढाई सौ टैब्स ओपन इन माई माइंड इट्स इक्वेलेंट ऑफ हाउ मच स्ट्रेस इट इज वेन यू हैव ढाई सौ टैब्स ओपन ऑन योर ब्राउजर दैट्स हाउ मेनी थिंग्स आई एम थिंकिंग ऑफ एट एनी गिवन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई थिंक दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन विद यू इज द प्रॉब्ली द लॉन्गेस्ट ब्रेक दैट आई हैव टेकन अवे फ्रॉम चाइल्ड केयर इन प्रॉब्ली फॉर एवर सिंस आई हैड अ किड सो आई मीन इवन नाउ देर आर थिंग्स दैट आई एम थिंकिंग ऑफ विच आर हैपनिंग बिहाइंड आई मीन वॉट्स हैपनिंग विद अ बेबी स्कूल से किसी ने पिकअप किया कि नहीं खाना खाया होगा कि नहीं वो फेस पर रैश हो रही थी उस पर किसी ने क्रीम लगाई कि नहीं वो जो आ, स्कूल से एक नोट आया था उसके लिए उस दिन एथनिक कपड़े पहना के भेजने वो धुलाए कुर्ता कि नहीं धुलाए एंड प्रेस होके आ गया होगा क्या और वो प्रेस वाली ने इतने दिन से फ़ोन नहीं करा उसको बुलाना है और एक बात करनी थी उसका वो अकाउंट सेटल करना है एंड दिस इज़ हाउ माई ब्रेन गोज एंड आई जस्ट गो ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन एंड दिस इज़ हाउ मैनी मोस्ट वेमेन विल थिंक सो समटाइम्स आई मीन आई I am looking like my system is going to crash, and I I have to tell Salil that listen, too many tabs, <laughs> not yeah. not able to function anymore. And then he'll say, okay, let's sit down and we'll write it down or something. But but the fact of the matter is, these tabs are not open in his mind. I mean, as much uh, eager and and genuine uh, uh, partner that he wants to be, these tabs are not are only there in my mind. And and then there are many. Uh, this is again well documented phenomena and men have many uh, rationals excuses explanations for it ke oh ye to you have higher standards and that's why you have these tabs like most of the things you are thinking of don't actually need to be done but then when they're not done is when you realize the the fallout of it so so much work that you are doing is uh, preemptive and it is again therefore unseen you know because those women who never had those jobs you don't know about them so similarly all those accidents that didn't happen because i baby proofed the house are things that we don't know about at all because how many times he bumped his head on the edge of a baby proof table is not something that we are keeping count of so these are uh, things that mental load that that is only there on women because physical load to a lot of extent the more evolved of partners are able to share so like even in my house or laundry or ye sab uh, things that the chores that we are still doing uh, uh, that we don't have uh, help for chores are equally distributed between us even the time that we spend with our child is now that i'm also um, after covid doing full time work he's uh, is is relatively um, fair division uh, not equal but equitable but this is one place where there is no semblance of equality is like 99% is only 1% there and so so and it's all sorts of labor you know it's also about tumhari mummy ka birthday aane wala hai mujhe yaad hai unko ek gift khareed ke amazon se wahan bhejna hai so you know these things also it's also emotional labor it's also that uh, so and so helped us at that time now we should go there about to have a baby we should go help them with this thing all of these burdens managing relationships keeping the household running even when you do have staff the staff wants to come bhabhi se baat kar नहीं है बिकॉज आई हैव दिस इशू मुझे उस दिन छुट्टी चाहिए नाउ यू हैव टू प्लान योर हाउस अराउंड दैट थिंग्स राशन खत्म हो रहा है किचन में यू हैव टू डू दिस एंड सो दिस इज वॉट आई हैव रिटर्न अबाउट इन द पीस ऑल्सो एंड दिस इज द आई थिंक द सेकेंड मोस्ट पॉपुलर पीस आफ्टर राजा बेटा बिकॉज अगेन इट्स ट्रक अ कॉर्ड विद सो मेनी वेमेन लाइक वेमेन रोड टू मी आफ्टर दिस दैट माई हजबेंड इज वी पी फाइनेंस इन वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट फर्म्स इन इंडिया एंड येट ही इज नॉट एबल टू मैनेज घर में आटा खत्म हो रहा है इज नॉट एबल टू कीप इट स्टॉक्ट सो एम आई सपोज टू बिलीव दैट ही इज इनकॉम्पिटेंट एंड इज नॉट एबल टू डू दिस ऑब्वियसली इज एबल टू डू दिस ही इज इंटेलिजेंट इनफ टू डू इट इट्स जस्ट अ मैटर ऑफ कर रही है ना वो वाई शुड आई वाई शुड आई स्टेप अप एंड सो ओवर टाइम देन वन पर्सन गेट स्टक विद दैट रोल एंड देन दैट पर्सन ऑल्सो गेट स्टक इन देयर माइंड अबाउट द वेट इज टू बी डन सो यू नो लाइक योर पॉडकास्ट हाउ यू एडिट इट हाउ यू डिजाइन इट समथिंग यूव बिन डूइंग फॉर सो लॉन्ग दैट नाउ Uh, it might not even be easy for you to delegate some key aspect of it or if i come and do it for you you might not like it the way i've done it and so that also happens so it then even when men try to help sometimes women will push back and it happens to me also i sometimes i'll say you are doing it all wrong let me do it myself or tumne galat tarah ka chawal order kar diya <laughs> so now i will do it i have to do everything myself and then we'll have a discussion about it then i'll realize that you know i'm right now gate keeping something that i don't really have to and i need to consciously let go of this because i've been doing it for so long and i've become set in the way that i do it and therefore the man feels ke not worth the trouble let her handle it but that in the long run breeds this resentment and this gap the chasm between us of how many tabs are open in whose mind 
Well, and that, that metaphor of tabs open is really quite, um, um, uh, you know, hits home because you know what happens when Chrome crashes and everything just <laughs> sort of freezes right there. You've got another great post called Fabulous Lives of Indian Housewives, yeah. which I'm sure is also uh, extremely popular, where uh, you quote someone called uh, Anu. Uh, who says something that speaks exactly to what you were just saying, where she says, quote, It angers me that for ages, men have been chilling. And by chilling, I mean having a normal, intellectually stimulating adult day at work and also coming home to their wives, expecting to be pampered. All the while, the really hard physical and mental labor was done by the wife staying back at home. I come to my office and feel incredibly grateful to have a place to poop in peace. I have nothing but respect for stay-at-home mothers now. Stop quote. And this also underscores how, you know, some people might think of it as a dichotomy between women who have chosen to work and who go to office and all of that and stay-at-home mothers. Mm. As if stay-at-home mothers are not doing anything. And people will think of stay-at-home mothers and they'll say, they'll be like, okay, the house is going to be eating or eating. Like, but, but otherwise, it's chill, hi hai, you know. Mm. Uh, but it's not like that at all. It is an incredibly arduous amount of work. And worst of all, it is the kind of work where you can't really focus on anything and get deep work done as it were, mm. you know. Uh, in fact, if you read Newport's book, you'll find that he has nothing but sympathy for this. He describes this kind of situation mm. where people are constantly forced to be in a state of shallow work. Yeah. And really being in a state of shallow concentration is something that is good only for managers who are scheduling meeting after meeting after meeting. But to get any meaningful work done, you need to figure out a way to get uh, deep work. So, uh, you, you know, so often progressive people will almost, in a sense, even women, kind of look down on housewives and housewifery, as it were, mm. and will think, oh, okay, if you're a modern woman, you have to work. Mm. But the point is, work is work. Life is tough, you know, with something. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this and about how mindsets around this uh, revolve. Yeah, so, I mean, like you said, it's not only that a, a woman working at home. First of all, I love this line uh, from the book Invisible Women, which says that working woman is a tautology. It means that it's unnecessary to add the word working because every woman is working. So, it's only that some women are being paid for that work and some are not. So, there's literally just no woman who's not working. Even a stay-at-home mother is a working mother. And that for me was a very powerful statement and it, it really makes sense because especially now I have seen, uh, been at home for two years for the pandemic before that on my maternity leave and I've realized how hard it is. And I completely agree with Anu there that, you know, now that I go go to a, go to a workplace, it's, it's really recreation for me. It is relaxation. Like as a mother who is at home, you genuinely don't have time to poop in peace. Because there's always the door is open, the child will, because you are worried, the child will go and put their finger in an electric socket or something. So often children are inside the bathroom when you are pooping. <laughs> you don't get time to comb your hair. You barely get time to take a shower. Sometimes you don't remember if you brushed your teeth this morning or not. So that's the amount of stress that work is. And it is a work which comes with no perks, no uh, compensation and no uh, breaks. Right. Like if I have a very, very stressful work also, there is a weekend to look forward to. There is an evening where I clock out something to look forward to. But as a mother, a stay at home mother, there is no break. There will never be a day when you get relaxation unless your partner is kind enough to take them out of the house for a few hours. But other than that, it's a 24-7 job. So it's much more stressful. And I mean, uh, I've quoted Anu here because Anu and I used to work together when we were both single and living in Bombay. We worked together in the same company. And uh, we were taking a walk somewhere around our office one day. And um, we saw a woman at a window. And so I began this piece with that. And Anu was like, I will be a woman in one day. This is my aspiration. That woman will be a face mask and sit in the house and drink tea. And she will see a woman in the house. This is a woman going to the office. So that was the, I mean, that was a running joke between us. That our life aspiration is that we will be a woman in the house and drink tea and face mask. Lagana. But now, I mean, now that we are both mothers, we realize how blind that uh, image of a stay-at-home mother is and that that's how unfair it is and how far away from reality that perception is. That's actually the hardest job there is. And you've pointed out that one of the things that really irritates you is when 
people idolize or romanticize the sacrifices that women make oh, yes. you know I, i think you reproduced that com- uh, that advertisement in your post or it was a fake news wala meme that a woman with an oxygen cylinder on or whatever covid ka mask was on is also cooking meal for the family and all that and you'll have these classic means of super woman with eight hands doing everything at once mm. and your point is that you know in a sense you're trying to glorify the woman who does everything but your point is ki no don't romanticize that it's terrible yeah. you know uh, the the man who took the picture should really be doing all the work right so uh, tell me a little bit about this because this seems to me to be particularly dangerous because the moment you romanticize it you make it a thin desire for many women ki mujhe bhi banna hai super woman main bhi karungi mm-hmm. and you make it something that men also then expect from their wives yeah. right so tell me a little bit about this No, exactly and that wasn't fake news that was a real photograph of his mother that a man had put up and oh, his okay. mother yeah I, i thought it was actually uh, i thought baad mein nikla tha ki wo acha maybe i'm i'm maybe i'm confusing it with some other okay maine aisa kuch nahi padha baad mein kyunki i was also googling that image later to write this piece mm-hmm. maybe again i also might maybe have missed I'm it but maybe i'm mixing it up with some other picture but huh. yeah so this the, was uh, at least as far as the world knew it at the time and the discourse around it was it was a real picture of a mother who is a uh, aged senior lady who's on a oxygen concentrator during covid second wave where people are dying and oxygen are going low and wo concentrator laga ke she's standing in the kitchen making round rotis for her son and this useless son who's presumably healthy and not hooked up to a cylinder is standing in the kitchen and instead of taking over from his mother is taking her photo and uploads it on social media saying ki ye hoti hai ma ye hoti hai sachi ma and that's what that's what drew so much flack and and i'm glad we live in a time where it draws flack and and people are forced to reconsider these things but that's the trope of mother india and you know i mean i i used to i still joke that you know mothers day should be called happy martyrs day because we just love turning our mothers into martyrs ki उन्होंने हमारे लिए इतना कुछ किया उन्होंने हमारे लिए सब कुछ छोड़ दिया एंड इवन टुडे ऑन वेमेंस डे एंड ऑल यू सी लिंक इन पे दीज प्रोफेशनली अकम्पलिश्ड मैन आर पुटिंग अ पोस्ट ऑफ आई वॉन्ट टू टेक दिस डे टू थैंक माई वाइफ शी गेव अप हर करियर एंड रेज दर चाइल्ड एंड आई वेंट आउट एंड शी वॉन्टेड टू वर्क बट शी कूड वर्क बिकॉज शी सपोर्टेड माई करियर लाइक शेम ऑन यू दिस इज नॉट समथिंग टू बी प्राउड ऑफ यू यू किल्ड योर वाइफ ड्रीम्स एंड देन यू आर नाउ शोइंग इट ऑफ एंड तुम्हारा एक सोशल मीडिया पोस्ट लिखने से हो गया हो गया क्या उसका कॉम्पनसेशन तू तो प्राउड है अपनी वाइफ का why don't you ask her if she is proud of you exactly yeah. yeah let's let's hear the other side also so i mean that's that's my problem with it and i think in the beginning also i used the word celebrated and i said no we sh- celebrate is the wrong word we should say acknowledged because women doing everything is not something to be celebrated it's something for us to be ashamed of as a society that we are forcing our women to do cooking cleaning ghar ka saman bahar ka fir office bhi jao wo bhi sambhalo aur uske baad wahan pe boys club se bhi uh, <laughs> maar khao idhar ghar mein patik ke liye bhi rotiyan gol banao to i mean if we are truly really putting this much burden on women that every mothers day you see or every women's day you see that woman with eight hands ek hath mein tawa ek hath mein bachcha ek hath mein laptop ek hath mein press ironing to wo 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 image jo hai that's that's a matter of shame and i feel that's what the women also who uh, who i interviewed for this piece were were echoing like one of them said that uh, someone put up in her office put up a thing outside her door superwoman because she was a working mother of two and blah 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 so she was like ye hatao i don't want to be a superwoman let me be just a woman i want to be human it's a privilege it's a my right to be left alone to be human and you are not giving me that right you are forcing the superwoman down my throat not just the person who's put up the board society family everyone and by put it, raising me holding me to these high standards you are getting away with murder you are getting away with not care giving for your children taking care of your house and and pulling your weight at either the workplace or at home and so don't don't make us super we are quite happy being human and let us just be human that's basically what the entire movement is about let women be human अभी तो सलमान खान आ जाएगा आपका न्यूज लेटर की स्पॉन्सरशिप करने बिकॉज बीइंग ह्यूमन के साथ तो जाता ही है आई एम हैप्पी टू वेयर टी शर्ट कोई लार्जर क्वेश्चन इन द सेम पोस्ट अबाउट फैबुलस लाइव ऑफ इंडियन हाउस वाइज यू कोट सम कॉल मीता हु इज सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम हर हजबेंड एंड यू कोट हर इज सेंग कोट आई हैव नेवर स्लेप बेटर इन माई लाइफ 
right elsewhere you talk about uh, how divorces are going up and i think 12 years or 13 years ago i'd got a bit of flack when i wrote a column saying that rising divorce rates in india is something we should celebrate it yeah. means that more and more women are being empowered to get out of toxic marriages yeah. right you've also written posts called, like there's one post called the great indian dhakosla you've uh, written a very powerful post on domestic violence as well and this leads me to this larger sort of question about the institution of marriage itself mm -hmm. i think that the way the institution of marriage is conceived that conception is toxic mm -hmm. right because uh, men and women are kind of fixed in their roles in a way that you have uh, you know outlined here how men are the raja betas and the women are fixed and trapped and imprisoned mm -hmm. in uh, models of lives which completely destroy them like mm -hmm. um, uh you know their lives are just taken away from them uh, by uh, these roles that they're force fitted into and i'm just thinking that and my point is not at all that people should not get married i've already said people shouldn't have kids my point is not at all that people don't get married marriage can marriage can be beautiful when you marry someone who's your friend you've got companionship if you choose to have a family together there's lots that beautiful about it but the conception of marriage as it uh, is today seems to me to be toxic and one sidedly toxic hmm. i think it also in a small way harms men by trapping them in these stereotypes which can hurt them also but it is almost completely one sidedly toxic it it destroys women's lives right so do you think in a thought experiment as society keeps changing over decades and perhaps centuries that uh, this institution will appear unnecessary that it is it can become possible for men and women to associate with each other to have the kind of relationships they want to have with each other by mutual consent with agreed upon roles and demarcations uh, without uh, this actual institution and all the negativity that it carries yeah so um, i wrote this post in uh, february of this year which i celebrated as valentines month and four weeks i wrote four posts about dating um and different stages of life different modes of dating uh, one of them was about dating in your 40s 50s and 60s and that is the one that 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 i love the most um i think the biggest scam in society today is that women are young women and girls are conditioned to see marriage as an achievement or a trophy and so you'll have these tropes and based on reality that the woman is chasing the man for propose kab karega mera boyfriend mere ko and the man is like commitment phobic and running away from it i've had that experience myself i'm <laughs> plenty of commitment phobic men but uh, uh, it's it's now in hindsight i'm like what is wrong with us for chasing this institution which is so disadvantages to us like you said unidirectionally toxic right so i mean it makes uh, and and there's a lot of research there about it about how married women have a shorter life span than unmarried women married men have a longer life span than unmarried men so it's obvious who the institution of marriage is benefiting more um, in terms of happiness longevity health all all uh, dimensions it's obvious that marriage is better for men than it is for women and so the trope should be that men should be chasing women around the street ke please mere se shaadi kar lo whereas they do <laughs> they do that's also a problem <laughs> hota hai <laughs> nahi that's a whole other problem but i'm saying between consensual relationships uh, uh, one common trope is that aurat ko shaadi karni aur aadmi ko nahi karni hai at at least in the young age that's why i love that post about dating in your 40s 50s 60s because so one very interesting and uh, my favorite one of my favorite insights that i got interviewing women who are dating at that age was that ke by this age most of us have had one marriage at least right so the men are also divorced or widowed women are also divorced or widowed only few are single at that age so after having had one experience of marriage all the women have figured out ki bhaiya this is not a trap i want to fall into mujhe nahi fir se kisi ki mummy banna like that's what indian men are looking for in their wives is mummy to mujhe nahi banna apne partner ki mummy so she said that at this stage of life and the reverse has happened for the men because they have realized how comfortable and luxurious their life was when they had this person doing invisible care giving work for their family and them uh, and somewhere in the background magically chai ke cups are being produced and food is appearing on the table and you don't have to worry about kitchen mein chawal khatam because somebody else is thinking about it all the time so men have figured out the comforts of marriage and women have figured out the traps of it and so at that age she told me that it's ulta like i every man i date 
is looking to set so quote unquote settle down and wants to immediately get married and women are like sorry casual wow <laughs> so it's amazing i loved it that at least now slowly uh, even after having had a bad experience at least at some stage and age you are we are all becoming conscious of this and the right gender is chasing that institution and the right one is running away from it finally That's a great insight and I hope some of these older women can act as a cool aunt for their younger nieces and so on and tell them ki bachcho just chill koi jaldi nahi hai Exactly <laughs> Let's let's you know talk about like like we spoken in the context of offices and air conditioners and toilets how the world is sort of designed by men for men and uh, so on and so forth and another instance of this is the health of women like at one point you you talk about how women are often blindsided by uh, biology you know you talk about the problems of menstruation but i was struck by this quote here where you write quote according to the guardian in the uk and this is the guardian's words in the uk less than 2.5% of publicly funded research is dedicated solely to reproductive health despite the fact that one in 3 women suffers from a reproductive or gynecolo- gynecological sorry my pronunciations are bad health problem there, there is five times more research into erectile dysfunction which affects 19% of men than into premenstrual syndrome which affects 90% of men stop yeah. quote right and you've also pointed out about how uh, you know there'll be so much more research into say type 2 diabetes yeah. because so you know men also have it as opposed to something like pcos yeah. right so sort of tell me a little bit about this therefore and also sp- specifically about how uh, menstruation isn't taken seriously enough especially by men who just you know who'll brush it off and say oh it's that time of the month again or she's pmsing again or whatever but for women it is such a huge a uh, issue that impacts their life in such a big way yeah so i had this uh, friend a fl- uh, flatmate i used to live with when i first moved to bombay and she used to have very very painful periods like uh, i was fortunate enough that periods for everyone there there, there is discomfort but it was not like crippling for her it was she had to take two months two days off a month and that was basically the extent of on leave we got so every month her on leave would go for this because she would literally be bound on the bed and i would often come home to see her crying and once or twice she told me and we used to live on the 11th floor and she told me i want to throw myself off out of this window to just to end this misery and i was i was i would be genuinely very scared for her and her safety her health and i have so many times we've discussed we should see a doctor and no doctor was able to say anything ha hai bhai hai period pain hai je lo jao that's basically the the response she would get some would say ki bachcha kar lo that will solve it huh. today she has a kid and it hasn't solved it so <laughs> by the way so um, and much later in life i came across uh, a post about uh, i think it's called endometriosis which is that um, uh, menstruation cycle is the endometrial wall, sh- wall shedding itself and um, that w- uh, process of that shedding is sometimes exceptionally painful and it's like a pain that Uh, most people will not be able to tolerate i mean it's it's very high grade pain and um, people are me women are not only going through it but they are coming to work doing working alongside men do, do performing equally well sometimes better than them if, while bearing that pain um, and and there is nothing that the medical science is doing to address it so endometriosis is one of the many conditions like you said polycystic ovarian syndrome endometriosis um, most types of cancers that uh, affect only women all of this is like very very exceptionally poorly funded so even when the covid vaccine came out i went for the vaccine and they asked me are you still feeding your baby and i wasn't at the time so i could get the vaccine but if you were feeding your child just the jury is out we don't know le sakte ho ke nahi le sakte hame pata nahi pregnant aurte to nahi le sakti hain aur lactating women bhi nahi hum 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 suggest nahi karenge why because you have not done any research on it chalo covid vaccine was made in a very crunch situation but Um, almost all i'm um, almost like completely all of medical science is tuned towards the needs of men even when it is recreational needs like erectile dysfunction not to diminish what kind of condition that must be but 
again it's just about numbers like right? i have written there 90% right? versus 90% correct so 90% like almost every woman you'll talk to has a story about pms which is painful which is debilitating and men i don't know how many men will even admit to it but <laughs> that's not a very common condition so uh, there is this definite big gap in just medical funding the second thing that is Uh, um um that 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 i want to talk about and i've written a couple of pieces about it is also the medical response the response of the medical community to women women's pain and women's needs so i've written a piece um, about uh, how how they uh, the men are seen as you know brave and uh, putting up a brave face where women are women are hysterical so brave men and hysterical women that's the name of the piece that when a man says oh mujhe dard ho raha hai to कितना ब्रेव है ये आदमी सह रहा है दर्द एंड वेन वुमन से आप मुझे दर्द हो रहा है तो देन लाइक हिस्टेरिकल है ऐसी शी इज जस्ट हैज अ लो पेन थ्रेश होल्ड वेर एज द फैक्ट इज दैट वुमेन विल गो थ्रू पेन विच इज ऑफन मच वर्स देन एनी थिंग मैन विल एवर एक्सपीरियंस सो लाइक द पेन ऑफ डिलीवरी फॉर इंस्टेंस इज वर्स दैन द पेन ऑफ लूजिंग अ लिम्ब सो इफ आई चॉप्ड ऑफ अ पर्सन आर्म it would hurt them less than it hurts to deliver a baby एंड ऑलमोस्ट एवरी वुमन डज इट इन हर लाइफ Well, at least everyone who's having a vaginal birth will do it, and so there, there, this, this, there is not enough pain relief for women. In fact, I've written a piece on obstetric violence, which is just horrifying stuff that is done to women who are during labor. Uh, uh, my friend, who's a doctor, she told me that districts, me to hospital, me, wo steel ke bed pe char aur toko ek saath lita dete the ke lag jao charo. They'll just strip off their clothes and in that indignified position, they'll say ke chalo start pushing. And uh, my friend, she said I was doing an episiotomy. to me which is a <laughs> scary thing that is done during labor and she said ki i was giving her anesthesia because it's a cut you have to put in the vagina and she said before cutting i was giving her an anesthesia injection and the nurse came and said ma'am is pe injection kyu waste kar rahe ho isko already ta dard ho raha hone to thoda aur and i have spoken to women who have been uh, have a friend of mine she was a nurse practitioner and she said that uh, i have seen women being slapped during labor कि चिल्ला क्यों रही है थप्पड़ मारा समबडी सी समबडी वो स्लट शेम ड्यूरिंग हर लेबर कि अच्छा सेक्स करते टाइम तो बड़ा मज़ा आ रहा था अब पता चल रहा है कितना दर्द होता है सो यू नो थिंग्स लाइक दिस इट्स इट्स इन ह्यूमन इट्स अनइमेजिनेबल दैट दिस इज द वे वी आर ट्रीटिंग वेमेन फॉर हमारी माताएँ बहनें जिनको हम इतना इज्जत देते हैं अपनी स्पीचेज में वो जब माता बन रही होती है उस समय वी ट्रीट हर लाइक लाइक women there is there are stories now and in india it is not as well documented i have read papers about it in the us where it, there is for better documentation of it of a doctor uh, who tied a woman's legs together so she couldn't deliver a baby so he could go take his lunch break ke i want to have a quick lunch just so she doesn't deliver while i'm away tie her legs together so i mean it's it's just it's criminal inhuman animals would not behave like this is i mean i don't want to insult animals by calling this animalistic behavior so it's that's the kind of care giving that we give to women and i was i myself had a, a very very difficult birth because of the uh, because my caregiver my my doctor saw me as a baby carrying vessel like i've written so it was ke ha tumko ye ye dard ho raha hai ye problem hai ha to ye to hoga hi na bachcha paida karna hai to ye sab nahi se jhelo ki kya jao jhelo and so i mean the standing joke between many moms is that if men were supposed to give birth or have periods we would have five star lounges all over the place ki jao wahan ja ke 5 din check in kar lo aur aaram se period karke aa jana <laughs> like that those are the facilities we would provide if men were going through these things but because it is women going through them we are treated as uh, just i mean as as women like i said ke matlab kuch fark hi nahi pad raha hai tumhari your your suffering is the is meaningless to us and in fact it's well deserved because you are a woman and this is your lot and not just these contexts other contexts like in that post brave man and hysterical woman you quote uh, someone called shefali mm. talking about how what happened to her after an operation mm. where she says quote it was a complicated surgery and i suffered from extreme headaches during recovery when i told my neurologist to give me something for the pain she addressed my parents instead of me tell your daughter she has to bear children what is this pain in comparison mm. we later discovered that my brain had actual swelling post surgery which, which caused the severe headaches i kept begging for painkillers but my own doctor the made light of the pain stop quote and i was struck that that neurologist is a she you yeah. know still there is this sort of uh, the, this way of thinking that women's yeah. pain doesn't matter and it's uh, uh, you know uh, so on and so forth and and 
I absolutely loved this uh, quote in your earlier post on uh, menstruation as well. You've quoted Melissa McKeown, you know, and people keep joking about PMS, for example, and how mm. women behave and all that. And there's this lovely quote by Melissa McKeown. I'll read out quote: "Let's put this shit to bed right now. Women don't lose their minds when they have period-related irrit- irritability. It doesn't lower their ability to reason. It lowers their patience, and hence." tolerance for bullshit if an issue comes up a lot during that time of the month that doesn't mean she only cares about it once a month it means she's bothered by it all the time and lacks the capacity once a month to shove it down and bury it beneath six gulps of willful silence stop quote yeah and uh, so sort of expressive there let's let's talk about safety for example you know and uh, you know earlier i had uh, uh, you know quoted uh, natasha who you spoke to in your post uh, about should we lock up all the women where she spoke about the paranoia or what men would call paranoia that every time she enters a public space she's looking she's making sure where is the exit route uh, where can i escape what do i have to defend myself with and at one point um, um, uh, you write quote no matter who the fault lies with it is a woman's freedom that gets curtailed and that has conditioned us to be wary to the point of paranoia yeah. stop quote and kavita krishnan wrote a great book called fearless freedom about this she was on my show as well and here's the thing and i'm going to circle back to something that you mentioned about your engineering college in kurukshetra mm. right that um वुमेन वर्न सपोज टू गो आउट कि फोर थर्टी क्लासेस खत्म है तो फाइव थर्टी तक आपको हॉस्टल में रहना है यू नो यू मैनेज टू फैशन आउट ऑफ थिन एयर एंड आंट इन करनाल बट अदरवाइज डेट जनरली वे यू आर स्टक एंड आई वॉज चैटिंग विथ एलिस एवंस ये एंड आई डोंट नो एंड शी इज ऑफकोर्स रिसर्चर ऑन जेंडर एंड आई डोंट नो वेदर दिस एपिसोड विल कम बिफोर डैट और दी ऑर्डर विल बी बट शी पॉइंटेड टू वॉट she calls a honor income trade off hmm. right where uh, she is looking into the question of why don't more women work in the subcontinent that question gets complicated elsewhere in the world if your economic opportunities go up for women and the incentives go in that direction then more women can work but over here there is an honor uh, income trade off yeah. in the sense that it is not only the income there is a drive towards female seclusion mm-hmm. that families believe that their honor can get sullied if the woman goes out because she could get abducted or raped or have an affair or whatever and to protect their honor they uh, they have this drive towards female seclusion and Alice was pointing to this study by two fine economists whom uh, I also bumped into uh, recently at a conference with Dia Mahamre and uh, Soumya Dhan- Dhanraj uh, and Alice told me about this so this is second hand I haven't read that study myself yet because the recording just happened yesterday but the study apparently talks about this factory which employs women but which kind of herds them to the factory in 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 a very protective sort of environment there are strict timings and then it deposits them back safely at home and in a sense this is supposed to be a feature not a bug because in the families of those women can feel safe yeah. ki theek hai kuch nahi hoga so the urge to female seclusion therefore doesn't become such a big factor and in that honor income trade off the honor is less of a worry because the factory is you know um, uh, taking the women in such a cloistered way in and out of the factory and therefore the income part plays more of a part in the women actually work mm-hmm. now i was thinking you know this came to mind when you spoke of the hostel in uh kurukshetra therefore being able to tell the parents of young girls that your girls are safe here yeah. so on the one hand i agree with you that the rule is deeply misogynistic mm-hmm. that the men can lie around drinking in campus all night but the women have to be there by 5:30 mm-hmm. obviously misogynistic but the problem that it is solving for is also a misogynistic problem the honor income trade off for which many parents may say ki meri beti college nahi jayegi mm-hmm. but then if you tell her ki theek hai aapki beti ko jaane do wo safe hai aise rules hai usko theek se rakhenge and then they might agree mm-hmm. and the larger point which i am therefore coming at is that i think sometimes what happens is we see a problem and we want a utopian solution where everything just disappears mm-hmm. so the ideal world that i want to live in is where uh, uh, the rule of law is enforced mm-hmm. where college authorities police they all do their job women are safe and men and women at any point of night can go out and do whatever the hell they want yeah. but there would be an argument that you are not going to get there overnight yeah. that there are compromises and trade offs that you make 
on the way there. So in isolation, something like this that seems uh, misogynistic is actually making the other deeper problem, the honor income trade off, which has women cooped up at home. It's actually uh, helping in at least making baby steps towards progress. So how do we think about this? Because a lot of what we see in our society is regressive. Mm -hmm. But is it also something we should do that we should look at the trend across time and see if things are getting better? So I'm, I'm kind of thinking aloud because this thought was sparked off by what you mentioned earlier there and my conversation with Alice yesterday. But I, th I think you get the drift. And the drift and, and the broad question is how should we think about progress? No, I utopianly final stage of progress is that everyone is free to do whatever they want. Correct. Right? You want to work, you work. You don't want to work, you sit at home. And applies to both men and women. Um, as long as financially things are taken care of. So that's the end stage, of course. But I, I see uh, the honor income trade-off. And it reminded me of a story while you were talking about how this... Um, uh, building me somebody you know guard was spreading a rumor ke yahan pe is is flat mein ye maa beti aayi hai aur ye maa apni beti se dhanda karati hai and uh, this man the guard bolta hai main raat ko dekhta hu and then then people like somebody question for the kaise pata kya dekha and then he was like ke raat ke time na yahan pe gaadi aati hai usme kuch log baithe hote hain wo maa aati hai apni beti ko gaadi mein chadha deti hai aur gaadi chali jati hai सुबह गाड़ी आती है बट लड़की को उतार देती है और लड़की घर चली जाती है एंड देन लेटर दे फाउंड शी इज वर्किंग एट अ कॉल सेंटर विच हैज ओवर नाइट वर्क एंड पिकअप करने गाड़ी आई और सुबह ड्रॉप कर गई बट अगेन लाइक यू सेइंग है ना द माइंड सेट इज के के फैमिली ऑनर इज बीइंग सैल्यूट बिकॉज़ द गर्ल इज गोइंग आउट टू वर्क एट नाइट एंड द अदर पॉइंट about public safety that i have made in that piece that you are referring to is also not so much about uh, the end stage of streets are safe for everybody it's also about while the streets are unsafe who are we holding responsible for the mishaps that are uh, going down the crimes that are going down are we holding the perpetrators of those crime responsible or the victims so if a woman is getting assaulted on the street are we asking her इतने बजे क्या कर रही थी एस ये स्कर्ट की लेंथ कितनी थी क्या काम करने गई थी पढ़ाई करने गई थी कि किसी फ्रेंड से मिलने गई थी पढ़ाई करना इज ऑनरेबल फ्रेंड से मिलना इज नॉट पिक्चर देखने गई थी देन यू डिजर्व इट टोटली यू नो इफ यू वर ड्रंक देन यू आर आस्किंग फॉर इट सो दैट दैट्स बेसिकली द क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैव रेज इन दैट पीस एंड एंड इट्स इट्स इट द बुक दैट आई रेफर टू विच वी कैन ऑल्सो लिंक इज कॉल्ड वाई लॉयटर विच इज अ होल मूवमेंट नॉट अबाउट लेट्स मेक स्ट्रीट सेफर फॉर वेमेन एज मच एज इवन बिफोर दैट लेट्स एट लीस्ट एक्सेप्ट दैट ऑन आर अनसेफ स्ट्रीट वेमेन आर इट्स अनसेफ फॉर वेमेन बट द सोल्यूशन इज नॉट टू लॉक अप द वेमेन इट इज टू do something about that safety question and if something happens give women the right to make these quote unquote mistakes you say that itte baje wahan jana was a mistake because you got assaulted when you went there first of all she didn't make the mistake he committed a crime so let's get that clear first because the headlines will always say woman raped in noida at night it will never say man raped woman at no in noida at night that's never the headline so let's first turn the narrative around and hold the perpetrator responsible for the lack of safety and the crime and second let's allow women the right to make these quote and quote mistakes theek hai jao raat ko jao jahan jana hai jao jo pehenna hai pehno your adults you are making choices keeping your own safety and your other parameters in mind so let's at least give women the right to do that if a man gets mugged at night but wa chori ho gaya kisi ne bhusa maar diya तो हम तो नहीं कहते ना कि योर इट्स योर फॉल्ट यू शुड हैव नॉट यू वेयरिंग व्हाट आर यू वेयरिंग या बट वे में इतने रुपए थे क्यों नो वन आस्क दीज क्वेश्चन टू अ मैन बट दिल से कि दैट एरिया इज अनसेफ वहाँ के लड़कों ने ये कर दिया अटैक कर दिया हमारे इज्जतदार समाज के मेंबर्स को देन देन विल बी अपसेट विद द परपेट्रेटर्स सो वाई इज इट दैट वी आर अपसेट विद द विक्टिम वेन इट्स अ क्राइम अगेंस्ट अ वुमन Yeah, you'd made a, a great post on this called the burden of language, hmm. and and the quote that I like to uh, give to uh, illustrate how language matters so much is uh, by Jackson Katz, 
um, and uh, what Katz had said was, "quote We talk about how many women were raped last year, not about how many men raped women. Yeah. We talk about how many girls in a school district were harassed last year, not about how many boys harassed girls. We talk about how many teenage girls got pregnant in the state of Vermont last year, rather than how many men and teenage boys got girls pregnant. So you can see how the effect of this passive voice has a political effect. It shifts a focus off men and boys and onto girls and women. Even the term." violence against women is problematic it's a passive construction there's no active agent in the sentence it's a bad thing that happens to women it's a bad things that happens to women but when you look at that term violence against women nobody is doing it to them it just happens men aren't even a part of it mm. stop quote and in the episode that i did with shrana bhattacharya uh, the loneliness of the indian woman she pointed out about how women will often say something like मेरी शादी हो रही है दे वॉन्ट से मैं शादी कर रही हूँ यू नो एंड द फर्स्ट सेंटेंस लैक्स एजेंसी मेरी शादी हो रही है एंड द सेकेंड सेंटेंस मैं शादी कर रही हूँ इज अ लिटल बेटर एंड इट 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 जस्ट अ वे इन विच लैंग्वेज मैटर्स बाई द जैक्सन कैट्स कोर्ट वॉज पॉइंटेड आउट टू मी बाई वन ऑफ योर फेलो राइटिंग कोर्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स रीटा मिश्रा एंड Yeah, so I I completely agree. No, in in just going back to the progress question, and again, I'm thinking aloud. Like you've written another great post about how when uh, when a man says something like, "Oh, I allow my wife to work," hmm. right? And obviously, that's such a patriarchal asshole way of saying that it's like you know that she's your property and you have to allow her to work. Yeah. But the other way of thinking about it is at least a woman is working. right you take baby steps you take one step at a time that perhaps that sure his uh, the, the his tone his approach that i'm allowing her to work is a problem but it is a much bigger problem when she was actually literally not being allowed to work and perhaps you have to take baby steps to kind of go ahead yeah but then where do we stop the his the, the her parents also did her did her a favor by allowing her to be born no so then kitna niche girayenge bar ko so it's about i mean uh, ideally as we evolve as a society the bar should be should be going higher yeah lower, absolutely no, 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 absolutely what i'm saying is that there are gradations to this i mean so let me turn that question about progress around and hmm. say that what is your sense of how much progress women have then made you know what your newsletter does so well is that it tells you right on so many margins things really suck things are really bad uh, and uh, we are in full agreement about all of that has there been progress is there progress is there a trend line that you can see uh, to this i mean just looking at me too for example mm. at one level i was pretty optimistic that things will change perhaps too optimistic because i thought this at least changes the incentives for men even if men don't start behaving better deeply from inside yeah. at least it changes their incentives mm. now i don't know how much of that is really true mm. mj akbar is still getting invited to um, uh, li- literature festivals mm. tarun tejpal is still a social gadfly on the circuits and of course you have a great post about mr tejpal also mm. uh, you know so uh, what is your sense of the progress that has happened and the progress that is happening because the older feminists have spoken to uh, on this show in the past from kavita krishnan to manjima bhattacharya and so on will say that there has been progress it is slow but let's appreciate that there has been progress and things will not suddenly change overnight yeah. right so what what's what's your sense as uh, you know um, a younger feminist and then maybe a generation down though i know you don't use that word of course mm. no i mean by, by the way it's no personal aversion to the word i totally identify as a feminist but i'm just saying that dif- it word means different things to different people and therefore it's i avoid using it saying, yeah. yeah yeah if if the same word has different meanings to different people then it loses its utility in conveying meaning which is the purpose of words so sadly that has happened to this word so easily i avoid it personally i have no aversion to it i think i'm optimistic about the future um i have uh, at least two uh, young readers who have written to me one was 12 and one is 13 and uh, uh, the 13 year old wrote to me after the tarun tejpal post incidentally and i was horrified because at that point i had no idea that i had an audience teenage audience out there and the tarun tejpal post is 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 stark i mean it it talks in graphic detail about the cr- crime that happened against the woman and exactly what transpired that night because it is important to uh, interpret the, those facts are important to interpret the judgment because at every point there is a crime happening against the woman and at every point the judgment is uh, putting the blame on the woman for all the crimes happening against her 
so i had written that post and it was quite uh, um uh, out there in explicit in the language and in the exact nature of the crime that happened and then i was horrified that a 13 year old read it and was feeling personally responsible for should i be censoring these things um but then the the message she sent me was was i mean it was so moving she said that uh ma'am i read your post and i, I it was so enlightening for me there is rape culture and women are being raped and victimized and then our legal system is not able to give justice and it was just i mean at 13 i, I had none of these ideas i could not use this these words this language not that i felt uh, not empowered enough to use them but that language was not in my mind at all i would not was not thinking about these issues i would certainly not have been able to articulate them as well as she did and so that um then the other 12 year old reader i'm talking about is uh, the daughter of one of our uh, batchmates in the clear writing cohort and he told me that she every uh, monday she waits for the post and she sits and refreshes aaya ki nahi aaya ki nahi aaya so then i was like yaar usko subscribe kara do usko bahut jayega main box mein and then he said that she sits and waits for that post and then she reads it and then uh, saturday ko she makes us sit down ke mummy papa baitho ab hum is hafte ki wo morning post ke bare mein baat karenge ke hum aap ke mahima aunty ne kya likha hai aur kya wo hamare ghar mein ho raha hai and what can we do better this is amazing right and and then i mean i wrote that post about the subtle sexism we are teaching our children and in that post she sent me personally apne through her dad she sent me photos of her textbooks which bothered her and it is amazing to me that wo fourth standard mein thi aur uski textbook mein you look at doctor scientist engineer judge all are men nurse secretary uh, teacher these are women hai and she was she saw this and in fourth standard she was upset by this enough to tell her dad that why why are women shown only in these roles and not in those roles i can i not become a doctor when i grow up can i not become a judge when i grow up and i am upset that these are the messages coming to women and uh, who is the author of this book i will write a letter to them that in fourth standard it blew my mind that this happened to any individual in this country and therefore that makes me optimistic about the future i know these are uh, uh, ha so i know this is anecdotal evidence and these are not like stark figures across the country kind of patterns but i mean i i am i am i am amazed that even one such child exists in this country and i'm sure it's not just one child and therefore the discourse is what gives me hope the fact that there was a me too movement i know it did not lead to the perfect kind of results that we wanted from it uh, or might have hoped for but the fact that those conversations are happening the fact that uh, we recognize there's a glass ceiling the fact that on linkedin you see diversity hires for coders and women can only apply for this position i like it i love all of that that there is i know that in our panchayati raj system we have a, a woman sarpanch reservation and it leads to sarpanch patis who are controlling things from behind the woman and she is cutting aloo sabzi at home whereas he is signing all the papers for all the decisions to be taken in the panchayat office ye hota hai but even then the fact that we are having these conversations and young women of tomorrow are able to articulate these thoughts are able to analyze these things or are even incensed or offended by the fact that this stuff is happening around us gives me a lot of hope and the second thing was what i said earlier about there should be an entrance exam for having kids because you often say uh, that uh, change happens one funeral at a time but i think change also happens one birth at a time however immoral you might think it is and i think that if if we are all able to have raised the change makers of tomorrow then we've done good jobs as parents and so so upbringing is a huge that's why i feel like us kelly there should be an entrance exam because you should not bring up another person who's going to perpetuate the same crap that we've been yaar ye to samjho yaar ki agar entrance exam hua kaun karega state karega who is running the state the entrance exam will be selecting for sanskari parents quote unquote not for progressive parents privatize kara do yaar sarkari khade private karo that's my line you're stealing my line theek hai yeah this is very inspiring and i i, I would not dismiss that young girl who reads you as anecdotal evidence anecdotes are people too yeah. and uh, and that panchayat thing actually illustrates exactly what i mean that you know that even if the sarpanch pati is kind of doing everything and uh, she's cutting this thing i think we have sort of enough data and i think kartik mulli dharan was talking about it in his episode with me if i remember that has actually helped 
Hmm. That has actually helped it move the bar a little bit. It will not take you to a utopian perfect solution, yeah. but it is better than nothing. It's moved the bar a little bit, and that's what is uh, important. I've just taken a lot of your time, and I know being a responsible parent, you'll be <laughs> wishing to rush back home. Uh, so, just three final questions. Uh, the digressions may occur. Uh, third last question: You once told a Bollywood superstar that his movies are misogynistic. Kindly elaborate. <laughs> Oh man I have to really filter who what all names I take here So let's think about a fictitious sector that I worked in <laughs> Anyone who has heard this podcast knows Swach what I'm talking Swachh Bharat about. obviously yeah Please don't please don't put words in my mouth Okay no words in Mr. your mouth Mr. Verma Okay So there is a <laughs> there is a fictitious sector that I worked in There was a very popular Bollywood movie which was made around this sector <laughs> okay right it Got was it. the biggest hit of that year yeah. and it was a movie made to raise awareness about the sector that i work in uh so we were called in to give technical consultation on this movie that you know just check ke technology theek hai ke nahi and all of that that we show uh, in the movie before so i was on the panel of people going to mumbai and to this stars home or studio to review the movie and uh, before i went only one of the seniors at my workplace who knew my uh, perversions took me aside and warned me mahima none of your gender things there okay none of your gender things only technical nothing gender okay and i was like yes sir <laughs> yours obediently so we went there uh, this star is also known for uh, his discipline so he wakes up at 4 am and works out and everything right so uh, we also had to get up at 4 am <laughs> to meet him because by 5 am he's done with his workout and we have to go reach his studio by 5 so 5 am we reach there and then they show us the movie and we are sitting in the same room Um, and he's we're sitting in a U shape and he's sitting across from me right in front of the screen and uh, so the movie plays and the first half it's like a semi edited version it is called rushes ke abhi full editing nahi hui hai kahin kahin sound is off kuch kuch parts nikal diye jayenge and all that but broadly you can see like 90% movie is there so uh, he shows it to us and first half is over by the time of the first half nothing technical has happened so far in this fictitious sector that relates to us so really there's no feedback for us to give but at the time of uh, interval pause liya and he looks uh, he say, looks around he says that what did you all think of it any initial thoughts and then because i'm sitting right across from him he looks at me and says uh, let's start with the lady now if you see the first half of this film it's basically the love story in the first half the uh, boy is quoting the girl and when i say quoting what i mean is that she is a uh, student he is a cycle repair wala uh, probably 20 years elder to her even in the fictitious world of the film and uh, is uh, chasing her around with his mobile phone taking pictures of her and videos of her without her consent at one point he prints out a photo of her on a large hoarding for his cycle shop ka ad and that's supposed to show his love for her एक शी टेक्स अ ट्रेन फ्रॉम वन स्मॉल टाउन टू अनदर टू गो स्टडी टू हर कॉलेज वो ट्रेन में रोज सुबह उसके पीछे चढ़ता है और शाम को साइकिल पे उसका पीछा करता हुआ घर तक उसे मैक्स क्रीपी मैक्स क्रीपी राइट नाउ नाउ वुमन इंग लेडीज इन दिस रूम एंड हैज बीन आस्ट टू गिव फीडबैक एंड सो फार नथिंग टेक्निकल इज हैपन ओनली दिस मच इज हैपन सो एंड देन एंड आई एम ऑल दिस टाइम आई एम थिंकिंग डैम मुझसे कोई पूछे ना बस डोंट आस्क मी वॉट आई थिंक अबाउट दिस डोंट आस्क मी बिकॉज आई कैन नॉट होल्ड बैक दिस इज एग्जैक्टली वॉट इज रॉन्ग विद आर फिल्म यू नो एग्जैक्टली दैट दैट द वुमन हैज नो एजेंसी वॉट यू आर शोइंग इज एसेंशियली सेक्शुअल हेरसमेंट एंड बिकॉज इट्स यू आर ब्यूटिफुल लवेबल लवड मोस्ट लवड स्टार ऑफ इंडिया इज डूइंग इट एंड ही इज अ सिक्स फुट टॉल फेयर स्किन ब्यूटिफुल मैन सो इट लुक्स लाइक लव टू अस बट इफ द सेम थिंग वॉज बींग डन बाई एन एक्चुअल साइकिल वाला टू योर डॉटर यू वुड बी इंसेंस एंड यू वुड वॉन्ट हिम इन जेल टूडे राइट सो बट बिकॉज इट इज दिस पैकेजिंग सो वी आर कॉलिंग इट लव एंड आई वॉज लाइक मुझसे कोई पूछे ना बस बिकॉज आई कैन फील द सीनियर सिटिंग नेक्स्ट टू मी टोल मी नन ऑफ योर जेंडर थिंग एंड एंड आई लाइक ये मेरी नौकरी आज जाएगी एंड एट दैट मोमेंट सुपर स्टार लुक्स एट मी एंड सेज स्लेट स्टार्ट विद द लेडी सो आई एम लाइक दैट या ग्रेट फिल्म मिस्टर सो एंड सो 
माय ओनली स्मॉल पीव विद इट इज वाई कॉन्ट वी शो अ मैन एंड अ वुमन फॉलोइंग इन लव इन अ हिंदी मूवी विदाउट द मैन स्टॉकिंग द वुमन एंड दैट लाइन आई सेड एंड आई लाइक हो गया मेरा अब मैं चुप <laughs> अब मुझे <laughs> अब मेरी नौकरी जा रही है बट ठीक है हाउ मेनी टाइम्स डू यू गेट टू फेस द बिग कंट्रीज बिगेस्ट स्टार एंड टेल एम एग्जैक्टली वॉट इज रॉन्ग इन मोस्ट ऑफ दॉट जस्ट आर कंट्रीज बिगेस्ट स्टार बट आर्ग्यूएबली कैनेडा इज बिगेस्ट स्टार ऑल्सो बट कंटिन्यू कंटिन्यू नो कमेंट्स सो या सो देन so to my surprise this man is horrified that i said this he is not even horrified he is surprised that i said this he is taken completely aback and i thought that you know he has a wife who's a very famous feminist by the way she's writing columns after columns about women's empowerment agency everything and like isko pata hai ye jaan ke kar rahe they are i mean stars they might seem shallow or whatever to us i'm sure they're extremely intelligent people they've you don't get that rich and popular and successful without having a serious amount of intelligence so i thought ki isko pata hai and he's going to tell me that you know karna padta hai or whatever or whatever rationalization is there in his mind it will be something reasonable but then he shocked that i said this and he gets offended and he says stalking aap isko stalking kehti hain so i was like ha matlab without her consent you are taking her photographs so he is like kyu aapki koi photo khinchta aapko acha nahi lagta hai is like not without my consent sorry no so he is like hum jaate shooting karne sab hamari photo khinchte hain and i was just like my god he said this into silence that this man really thinks that a public figure's photo being taken in a public setting is the same as a, a man stalking a woman without her consent like this through the streets of mathura or wherever they are so it was like yaar yeah, i was just i was silent after that because like i have done enough damage to my career at this point <laughs> let's start putting a cv on linkedin on jo naukri jane wali because i can sense the guy sitting next to me is looking daggers at me and then we went around the room and our star is very upset and mu phula hua ekdam and uh, he is pouting and everybody else is trying to overcompensate for the damage i have done nahi like, nahi nah, sir kitni achhi movie what a great movie this is amazing is going to be the blockbuster and a couple of them even went a step ahead to counter what i had said that that you know what i disagree with what she is saying because प्यार ऐसे ही होता है असली इंडिया में ऐसे ही होता है इनको ये दिल्ली मुंबई की लड़कियों को लगता होगा बट <laughs> असली इंडिया में ऐसे होता है मैंने अपनी बीवी को मैं ऐसे ही उनका कॉलेज के बाद पीछा करता था हमारा प्यार भी ऐसे ही हुआ था लाइक टू दिस एक्सटेंट एज जनरली थिंकिंग दैट सम ऑफ देम आर फादर्स ऑफ डॉटर्स एंड और कुछ नहीं तो माताओं बहनों बेटियों के लिए सोच लो लाइक इफ वुड यू लाइक इट इफ यूर लोकल साइकिल रिपेयर शॉप गाइज चेजिंग योर डॉटर अक्रॉस द स्ट्रीट टेकिंग योर फोटो और एनी बडी यू नो आई नो आई नो आई एम ब्रिंगिंग अननेसेसरी class angle to it i know but yeah. i'm just saying that that's the setting that is shown in the movie yeah, or you know even the poshest guy in comes in a mercedes c class and takes a photo of your child without her consent you you would be incensed but because it is the handsome tall man in the room the powerful alpha male in the room you are all agreeing with him and then i was like ke chalo <laughs> my in my mind i'm already thinking of the next job <laughs> and i have to do but luckily in the room there was this senior lady and uh, uh, she was at a joint secretary level at that time and now probably going to become a secretary soon and she said that um, we might disagree with what uh, mahima said but that is the way that the women of the future think and i think we should respect that so that's all she said she was very she's like a, the most, one of the most gro- graceful women i know and that kind of shut everybody up somehow because a woman with some authority had said it and uh, obviously the <laughs> our hero was upset all through didn't eat breakfast <laughs> but <laughs> eat breakfast kafi kafi mujhe wahan pe hate mila but didn't lose my job because of that thankfully आपने क्या कर दिया इसके नॉक ऑफ इफेक्ट्स भी होते हैं ना यू वुड हैव 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 होम एंड 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 फॉट विद हिज वाइफ वाइफ वुड वुड सेड 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 दिस दिस राइट राइट दे 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 वुड 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 गॉड नो सो अरे इसके बाद अखबार में भी don't do your gender thing okay so my second last question and this is like one of the pointers that you sent me in that brief list of things that you wanted to talk about so i'll go back to that and this pointer says how amit verma causes strife in my marriage maine kya kiya 
kindly <laughs> elaborate i was telling sorry last night i'm going to talk about this and he was like kya kyu kya zarurat hai <laughs> and this is where it comes that conversations with women are far richer i can promise you can call sorry lear for 10 episodes this will not come up for time telling you right now so last two uh, two weeks back i released the first episode of my podcast which we were discussing before this the technicalities of my by mic and everything so i released the first episode and a lot of people like heard it and uh, immediately on that group a comment came on our group where uh, these uh, writing students are there that one of them said that i have just had a baby a month back and that episode that my podcast episode is about breastfeeding and how there is this unreasonable pressure on women that pehle din se you have to be mother dairy and then then you have to do exactly for this many days or isse kam kiya to you are an unworthy mother isse zyada kiya to what is this creepiness why are you still feeding a child who is of x age so uh, i called on my uh, podcast these two women one of them she and i were both, both not able to breastfeed beyond a point and the other one is still breastfeeding her 2 and 1/2 year old so we were all talking about the that again you know there's no middle ground there is no one is eating the sweet spot of everyone's approval when it comes to these things and so one of the women on our group uh, said that i just had a baby and in the last one month since i've had a baby i felt like a monster who is not able to do something that come seems to come so easily to all other women and thank you for finally talking about this and it's the first time in a month that i've smiled and i found that so heartwarming i felt again you know mission accomplished really feeling ke bas isi ke liye kar rahe the if it is serving this purpose it's i've done my job so sham ko salil comes home and i'm like hey, did you like it how did it was it is like no i'm still listening to scene and the unseen <laughs> i'm like maine aaj podcast nikala hai pehla episode hai you are listening to i understand the rest of the world i am putting it out on a monday i can't compete with season the unseen but tum to sun lo and he's like nahi uh, nahi nah, amit guess this time she is from my school and i was like she is in the podcast i'm like your wife is in this podcast can you prioritize please and and then on the flip side also it happens that sometimes he'll recommend a book to me like uh, like rukmini's book he would i would be watching crap on netflix and he would come and put shove that book under my nose ke ye padho this you are womaning you need to read this and then i was like yahan pad lenge i am too tired right now <laughs> we we mental load sara off karke main tabs thodi der hibernation mein dal ke i am right now wedging so don't come into my wedge time and yeah i know your books your taste is very intellectual and all so but then i listened to uh, your episode with rukmini and i was like ye book to padhni padegi yeah this is a great book yeah. <laughs> i know right so <laughs> so then he gets very upset ke maine kaha tha to kuch nahi aur <laughs> amit ne kaha to padhni hai wow <laughs> so, there's a lot of strife that you cause <laughs> I'm so sorry अब मैं क्या करूँ मैं पॉडकास्ट रोक दू फिर रोक भी दिया आपके कारण तो और स्ट्राइफ होगा ना नहीं 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 मत रोक हम लड़ लेंगे हम लोग सॉर्ट आउट कर लेंगे दैट्स सो स्वीट ऑफ यू गाइस एंड आई एम वेरी ऑनर्ड एंड हंबल बट प्लीज डोंट स्ट्राइफ ऑन माय बिहाफ इफ आई मे टर्न इट इनटू अ वर्ब फाइनल क्वेश्चन सो यू नो फॉर माय लिसनर्स what uh, would you like to recommend that they read और दे लिसन टू और दे वॉच और दे यू नो एनी आर्ट्स दैट गिव यू ग्रेट जॉय सो there's a lovely book called how to be successful without hurting men's feelings <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a wonderful book is a collection of couple of comics by sarah cooper and uh, i mean i i have i think a couple of clips of this book have gone viral online about uh, you know how a woman says something and the man ignores then she puts a mustache on her face and says the same thing and then they're like what a great idea <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a hilarious book and it's talking about everything that we discussed about women not being uh, taken seriously at work then invisible women which i have uh, already uh, quoted from uh, in this in this uh, episode so far by caroline priado perez yes um there is a book called untamed by glen and doyle uh, so glen and doyle is a has, has published books in the past as well but this book has come out after uh, a big changes in her life so she was earlier a drug addict and then she got married she had a baby and immediately the day she found out she was pregnant she quit drugs and before that it was like beyond control it was damaging her life seriously and then then she had i think now she has two or three kids um after a while she also figured out that her marriage was no longer working and then she fell in love with another woman and is now married to her and 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 all through this journey uh, she also was very very religious very strong christian ethic and i think in some ways she still is but uh, 
it comes from a very modern take on that religion and uh, uh, i i loved it as reading it as a as a woman and as a mother especially like i love this uh, couple of uh, excerpts from it which i would take photos of and share on these moms groups that i am on one of which was about how um, she said that i was raising my i think she has two daughters and one son and she said i was raising my daughters to be strong women and uh, you know i walking down the street i was i would point to a random woman and say what do you think she is maybe she's a ceo maybe she is a engineer maybe she's a doctor and you know to just to make them think of women as not in those traditional domestic roles but also as beyond that and people who can accomplish anything but then she thought that one day her son, son said something very regressive and she said that i realized that i don't need to just build strong women for the future but also men who are ready for that future for those women so i i realized that as a mother i had been failing my son on that account and so then she said that now when i walk down the street with my son i point to men and say what do you think he is maybe he's a very loving father maybe he makes great pasta for dinner you know things like that which is again not the traditional roles that you would see men in but to make him think of other men like that so he also starts seeing himself as though as those as valid roles that he could grow into so that's a book i wanted to recommend there is another book called shrill by lindy west um so uh, the reason i read this book it's a very angry book and a very funny book too but uh, so the, the reason i read this book was somebody quoted a line to it which spoke to me which was that feminism is about realizing that everything you love hates you back <laughs> that's the perfect summary of my relationship with bollywood right <laughs> like i love bollywood i can still to this day sit and watch any old 90s regressive movie i will find all the regressive shit in it but i'll still enjoy it because i'm programmed to love it now and i know it hates me as a woman right like uh, i'm still waiting for the ddlj joke by the way <laughs> agle episode mein bata denge abhi ab <laughs> koi baat nahi bade bade shehron mein si choti choti baatein hoti rehti hain <laughs> okay aur uh, another thing that i wanted to recommend was uh, Oh yeah, another book is uh, Steel Like an Artist then there's another called Show Your Work and third one called Keep Going all three are by Austin Kleon which are basically books that anyone who wants to write and wants to be any kind of creator or artist should just keep on their table at all times they're very very small books thin short books very easily accessible kisi bhi din kuch bhi uthake koi bhi page pad lo and it'll inspire you in some way so it's 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 it, these are three beautiful books that i i keep very accessible at hand um i also wanted to recommend a couple of uh, stand up comedians because i i follow stand up comedy like anything i've also dabbled in it quite unsuccessfully but a bit um one is hana gatsby uh one is tig notaro no uh, and among men there's james a caster and uh, indian side pe there's a guy called karunesh talwar uh, all four of them excellent and amazing for different reasons which we can discuss another time but if you haven't heard of them please look them up and if you enjoy stand up comedy this is they to me sound like the voice of the future we didn't even talk about your stand up comedy are you doing are you going to try again <laughs> i don't know maybe maybe not at one point you wanted to right you did some gigs i did some gigs yes yes and um, so i in fact uh, one of them was uh, in cp in central park and it was uh, um, i was told by the organizers there that there, there was an audience of 5000 people which i don't think was there at one time i think they just did a total count over the evening but there are a series of artists and for me that memory is i great because whatever i did i'm sure i will cringe at it today and by the way open challenge to all your listeners ke koi dhoond ke dikhao wo video <laughs> of a video is somewhere in one corner of the internet i know how to find it but it's very hard to find because the people i did it for were kind enough to not give me any credits <laughs> so there is you can't find it by my name probably anyway so that that thing i did and as i was getting off stage uh, uh, miss the late miss kamila kamla bhasin was there she was one of the organizers of that event and she came up to me and congratulated me and shook my hand i was like surreal <laughs> because it was probably the third or fourth performance i was doing and i was like hey, please what are you even saying kamla ji like you are the og and she was like nahi nahi hum to kuch nahi hai aap artist hain aap logo ghi hain kal ki awaaz and it was just is i touching and it was very surreal maybe i'll get back to it some day don't know right now yeah yeah i would love to see that but in the meantime i must keep doing what you're doing more power to womaning and anything else you do and thank you so much for giving me so much of your time today thank you thank you for having me 
If you enjoyed listening to this episode, head on over to the show notes, enter rabbit holes at will. You can follow Mahima's newsletter, Womaning at India, at womaning.substack.com. You can follow Mahima on Twitter at Mahima Vashisht. You can follow me on Twitter at Amit Varma, A M I T B A R M A. You can browse past episodes of The Scene and the Unseen at sceneunseen.in. Thank you for listening. Did you enjoy this episode of The Scene and the Unseen? If so, would you like to support the production of the show? You can go over to sceneunseen.in slash support and contribute any amount you like to keep this podcast alive and kicking. Thank you.